Hey, it's another absolutely gorgeous day in England. We're at Royal St George's, a place that, like the Claret Jug, has a long tale to tell. Welcome to the final round of the 149th Open here on the coast of Kent. It is another cracking day and temperature looks as though it'll be 21 to 25 degrees. 8 to 15 mile an hour winds out there. You can see the flag's not quite up yet. 7,189 yards is the course yardage. It is a par 70 and it is looking as pretty as a picture. Po possibly the greenest <laughs> open venue we've seen uh, when we were expecting brown, at least. There's the state of play overnight. Louis Oosthuizen on top by one over. Colin Morikawa, Jordan Spieth, who had a bit of a nightmare towards the end of his Saturday play. He's three shots back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Royal St George's for the fourth day's play of the 149th Open. This is game number one. On the tee from the USA, Kevin Kistner. The voice of David Lancaster telling us off this morning. Kistner with rounds of uh, 70, 69, and just a, a little unfortunate 78 yesterday. Finds himself in a one ball leading us off on Sunday. <laughs> Just a couple of moments ago, down on the left-hand side, Ali Whitaker in the commentary box alongside me this morning to uh, tee us off on Sunday. Sam Torrance, Don Belay and Frank Novolo. Morning to you all. What are your... Uh, what are your picks for, for later on today. I'm going to start there because why don't we? Let's build the anticipation for the final groups that come out later on. Good morning, uh, Alison. Yes, I'm uh, Morikawa. Morikawa from you, Dom? Oh, you know what? I put I, you on the spot. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I just love to see Louis. Louis deserves it, but I, I have a feeling Morikawa might actually pip him. And the voice of reason down the end. There has to be one amongst uh, no, the three of you, Frank Novolo. I, I, I've got to agree with Dom. I think if there's justice in this game, you know, it's such just a gorgeous day. It would be 11 years between major championships for Louis should it go on, go on. But I, I, I've never seen a Sunday morning like this in England. That that the sort of blue haze just driving in around around Deal. Um, I, I mean, if, if, I might have been mistaken, but I actually thought I saw a blue pigeon, which I've never ever seen before. It was quite remarkable. Yeah, it's, it's a fair point, and it's uh, a place in England down in the south where the seagulls are the size of small dogs as well, and we're seeing it at its best at the moment. They are the White Cliffs of Dover, just south of here. And it's one of the world's treasures. It's the town of Sandwich who've played host to us this week. The pubs. The little laneways, uh, it is quintessential England. And we're very happy to be back, really, for the 149th edition. We missed it last year. So just to remind you of uh, how things stand at the start of the day, Louis Oosthuizen is uh, he's trying to win the Claret Jug for the second time, exactly 11 years to the day after that runaway win at St Andrews. Colin Morikawa trying to stop him. He's had a couple of changes in the bag coming into this week that seem to have settled in nicely. Marcel Seam, what a storyline that's going to be. He is entertaining. The man with the man bun. He won on the challenge tour last week to get his spot here. He was tired Monday through Wednesday. No doubt the celebrations were large. Danny Willett there. He's at minus four. Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka as well. They're all inside the uh, the top 25 at the moment. Two-time winner there from France, Antoine Rosner. He's at minus two. He's had a good eight months. Victor Hovland and Tommy Fleetwood alongside him. Rory McIlroy did well to make the weekend. Things were looking a little sketchy there on Friday afternoon. He's at one under par. Matthias Schmidt there, the amateur. 
a two-time European amateur champion from uh, Germany. He's there at even par alongside Lee Westwood, Justin Thomas, Sergio Garcia. These guys are the best in the business. And the scoring has been impressive. Richard Bland's just uh, adding to his resume. A couple over par here, but he'll be happy to yet again make a major Sunday and weekend. So let's get you back down to one. And Kevin Kisner, 146 left in with his second. Yeah, not the position he wants to be in, Kevin Kisner. World-class player. Wanted to be teeing off later than this, but you just got to enjoy the walk. It's one of the great walks, especially coming down 18. It is the greatest walk in golf with all the grandstands just surrounding you and creating that massive amphitheater. It's always interesting to see how the greens react on a Sunday. And that was a fairly soft bounce. And it's a pretty friendly pin position. He got to experience the, the final group back in 2018, Kisner when Molinari went on to win at Carnoustie. There is Padraig Harrington off in just under 45 minutes. And he'll also look forward to that walk down 18 because one of the special things as we look at DeChambeau there getting ready for his round is that walk down 18 for a past champion. Um, the Open Championship does it so well. Finally, we got people back. And you'll hear if there's two players together, one is an Open champion and one is not. That sort of reverence they have for someone that has already lifted the Claret Jug. over an hour of preparation left for DeChambeau. He's no slouch in his preparations, we know that. This is a birdie park chance for an opening three for Kevin Kisner. First birdie of the day. Couldn't have come any quicker. Such a good pack. I actually fancied him this week. Such a straight hitter. Paramount round here. It wasn't to be. It was a couple of years back that he said he'd, he'd never win a major because he wasn't long enough off the tee. And then, uh, of course, he played his way right into it. Just three years ago. John Rahm just lurking there. The Spaniard at minus seven. He's five back, though. He'll need to do some early work here at Royal St George's. mentioned this earlier this week Ben Curtis the previous well not the previous winner the winner in 2003 here he went to Kent State University Corey Connors graduated from Kent State University I don't know if you believe in coincidences but uh, he's lurking <laughs> and he's a good player Corey Connors prolific ball striker two recent additions here that was uh, 2003 when Ben Curtis uh, won when he was ranked 396 in the world going into the week. And then Darren Clark in 2011. I mean, he came in, what is a 42 year old, I think it was. One of the wettest opens in history. That's part of the open. It's part of the experience is uh, looking forward to the golf of the week and looking back on the history of this brilliant event. And on the tee in the second group, teeing off first is Pum Saksansen from Thailand. Very quiet, unassuming young man. And they've not been playing much golf. Only played one tournament in the last almost eight months because of the shutdown and the lockdown in Thailand. And of course, the Asian tour hasn't had an event in 16 months. It's a remarkable achievement to come all the way over here and make the cut in this championship. He was, uh, he was studying it online. He looked it up and uh, went out and practiced a lot of low shots as well when he got back. He's been prepping for this event specifically. Got out Google Maps. Let's get them underway. This is game number two. On the tee from Thailand, Poom Saksansin.
on the tee from England, Richard Mansell. Great roar there for the Englishman. He forgot his socks again. Hardly a breath of wind. It's just absolutely beautiful out there. What a day to play this golf course. All the rage. Now oh, there's uh, his anchor points. Can be stunned by Eric Van Ryan. That's up and away for, uh, for Mansell. Both of them got here in very different ways. Pooms at Sanson through the Singapore Open at the start of 2020. Uh, Richard Mansell, a 26 year old, he got here by placing third at the, uh, the final qualifier at Hollandwell. Plenty of ways to make your way to the Open. Kisner after the perfect start on the second. Look like left. And today on the right edge, 15 on five right, that's a beautiful tee shot. Frank, you've seen a lot of the, the previous editions here. How do you think it's playing, you know, as, as slightly more moisture on the greens, it's, it's lusher? compared to the burnt out years? Yeah, I think it's a good question, Alison. Uh, the changes have been made, uh, you know, Superintendent uh, is new since 2011. They put a lot more sand on the on the fairways to try and get them to be a little further. They've made those fairways a little wider, which is fairer. But I think this year, to really sort of follow up on your question, it was more about the change of the golf course in the course of four days. Um, if you go back to Thursday, it'd be interesting just to have a shot. I've never seen this golf course that green and then to see what it is today. I think they would like today, in retrospect, on Thursday, we would have had a diff maybe a different, even a different leaderboard. But uh, that's why the people at the top, Ustaz and Morikawa, Spieth, you know, Corey Connors, they've been the ones to adapt the most. You look at Bryson DeChambeau, he was gonna come with a plan, just completely overpower this golf course. The bounce, the uh, undulating fairways, do not allow that. Um, boys have been talking about it the last couple of days. Really, this is fairway first. So I think the course has stood up well, I really do. It's almost as though he's still just trying to work out his equations, that brain of his. And I'm not sure that you can do that on Lynx Golf. Not the perfect tee shot, Kisner. Probably just start it right up the tower there. Try and hold it off, drift it a little bit right, get it as close as possible without going right. A yard right of that flag today. Sam, it's going to drift all the way down that hill. Be an interesting hole to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, quite a few tough bins today. I was trying to protect the course. It was a talking point in a lot of the press conferences last night. John Rahm said they were the hardest pins he's ever seen. I feel like that's just kind of a little bit par for this course, though, the nature of these greens, Dom. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you just got to be patient. Playing, you can't be firing at pins all the time, or you know, hardly any of the time. You just got to play to the fat of the green. And you know, I hope you hold a couple of 15, 20 footers, but uh, you got to wait for it, wait for, wait for the time to attack the golf course. And certainly, if you're in the rough, you really have to play to the fat of the green. Now, boom, second shot on the opening hole. Really got to thank YouTube for some of these golf swings. Remember the Sukri Onchums of the world <coughs> in the Far East, the way in which they would used to swing the club. I mean, these young guys now, it doesn't matter where they come from all over the world. They go online, they look at the best swings in the world, they try and imitate them. I mean, that's why we're getting so many good players from uh, areas that really you wouldn't think would develop golf that quickly. Sukri Onchum. I haven't heard that name in a while, Frank. He won the par three tournament at the Masters. Little Sukri. He was about five foot one they had a fabulous picture of him and george archer <laughs> george archer's like nearly seven foot just diminutive young man Sukri on chum 
played with him many times. Lovely man, a good player. Yeah, he had a long, he had a John Daly-esque swing, yeah. didn't he? Remember? Yeah, it is a full one, mate. It's not going to run. It's 122 flight in the day. Perfect yeah. tee shot from Ansel perfect here. Dial in, mate. It's perfect number, this. Perfect numbers called by the caddy. That's always a good. That's his trademark. Known for his, uh, his driving. Really good ball striker. Good opening, iron shot. Just settled in, to make as many birdies as they can. And look at it, it's just a day for birdies, isn't it? Ricky Fowler, there's a, a couple of young kids out here yesterday decked out in their, their full orange and tribute. Looks a little different than he used to back in uh, in 2011 when he made his debut here. Finished in the top five. Orange is, of course, the colours of Oklahoma State University, which is where Ricky Fowler went to college. And so many other players too. Golfers, great golfers, came out of. Oklahoma State, not going to be back-to-back -back birdies for Kisner. So a little bit of work left to do for par for Kisner at the second hole after picking up one at the first. Plenty to look forward to this afternoon. First tea time today is at uh, 8 a.m. The final group will go out at 2.35. Frank, is that a practice drill? Or is, that, is that what it's going to try today, I wonder? Well, I remember he went back to the short putter a couple of years ago. He said, OK, I'm going to go back to the way in which I started. <coughs> that lasted a couple of months. It was the long putter again. He's tried the belly putter. Everything. I think that's shorter than the one he had yesterday. It's definitely a different grip from the one he was using yesterday. He wasn't cross-handed like that. It was split hands like a regular long putter. He's, <coughs> Excuse me. He's got just gone down the grip about a foot from the putts he hit 10 seconds ago. Now he's back up. He's trying everything here. That's the one. Stick with that now, Adam. So playing alongside Ricky Fowler today is uh, Sam Burns. A round of uh, 76 yesterday, which moved him down the opposite end of the leaderboard than he'd like. Got his first win. I was there at... Um, Allison actually in just outside of Tampa, Valero, Texas Open, and then very nearly won again at the Byron Nelson. Um, he's a very good talent. I think a lot of people refer to his athleticism, but he's just flat out good. Yeah, world well, number 34 now. It's been a, a quick rise up the rankings. He's making his uh, first appearance here at the Open in 2021. This is game number three. On the tee from the USA, Sam Burns. On the tee from the USA, Ricky Fowler.
tied for second back in 2014, his best appearance in the Open Championship. a top 10 at least in the majors type right at the PGA Championship that is down the left dropped to 101 in the world Ricky Fowler which astounds me such a great player such a talent just shows you how difficult this great game is and players like that can't get in the top 100 I don't think uh you know, 10 years ago when we were here, if you'd said that he wouldn't have a major to his name, you know, a decade later, people would have believed you. Six cents and his birdie part on the way at the first. <laughs> Just must must be such a big thrill for, for Poon. Yeah, I mean, I remember I was there when he qualified at the 2020 Singapore Open and uh, the RNA present them with the flags saying that they're that they've qualified and they're going to play that was obviously going to be for last year but uh, it was cancelled but he was so excited back then i remember talking to him kisner elected to use the putter from a long way off the third green do you know if they gave the same spots away this year at the singapore open did they give more there was spots? no singapore open there wasn't so they no. took the same exemption exempt players from that 2021 they played here. Now Mansell at the first. No relation to Nigel Mansell. Does the British Grand Prix later on today. Nigel, good keen golfer in his own right. He's actually a very good golfer yeah. too. Does he still own, was it Woodbury Park? The tee markers are crash helmets, little crash helmets. Not sure. Par at the first for Richard and Louis Oosthuizen. All of those players, they've got a long wait. Oosthuizen has said, though, he's going to be watching the leaderboards and he's going to be coming out strong, playing to win aggressively. Frank, how do you like the, uh, the chances of uh, Corey Connors and Scotty Scheffler fall back? Um, uh, probably a little higher on Corey Connors, to be honest. Uh, the, the reason why Tita Green is a little bit better uh, Scotty Scheffler hits the ball enormously high, but he's been in contention a, a lot over the last 12 to 18 months and has actually struggled a little bit on Sunday. Um, two years ago, he was the best on the Corn Ferry Tour, which is the equivalent of the Challenge Tour in Europe. Um, and we expected, you know, almost like a meteoric rise, but he's just sort of, for some reason, there's a brick wall. Uh, Connors, um, I just think, is a, you know, a little step ahead. What's Harris, Eng Harris English got there? Checking the brakes. So if you want to get connected with us, we'd love to hear from you on social media. And theopen.com is uh, open radio. There's all sorts of feature group coverage as well. Such a big week. So at the open or hashtag the open. Well, coming out of the first cut, I'd just like to see how this ball reacts when it hits the green. If it hits the green, of course. I hope it hits the green. 157 yards, probably a 9-9, maybe a wedge. And you see the difference coming out, even just the light rough. Not going to get that check on the second bounce. So out following uh, Ricky Fowler and Sam Burns is a, a woman that cut her teeth in this part of the world. Uh, a major champion herself, Karen Stupples. Uh, must be good to be back in your childhood backyard. It really is. Brings back so many memories. Some, I mean, most of them fabulous. But then looking at this lie that Sam Burns had here, brings back some nasty memories as well. <laughs> What are conditions like out there at the moment, Karen? I can't, I mean, it is just perfect. There's only just the very hintest of breeze. I mean, just a whisper of it. I mean, lovely temperatures. The ground has a little bit of dew to it. So there's a little softness right now. The, the rough is a little bit wet. But other than that, this is just perfect. If you can't score now, you can't score any time. They're the kind of mornings that you dream of. 
Poom. His nickname is Poom Assassin, because when he gets the lead, <laughs> he's pretty deadly. He doesn't relinquish it. Three wins on the Asian tour. He's taken down some big names to do it as well. Yeah, he was head to head with Henrik Stenson at the Indonesian Masters. Oh, hello. <laughs> The There's a few dog legs out there. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh that's gorgeous. I hope not get lost. I dare say there might be from one of the houses at the back, maybe a little crick in the gate. Let's go back to two with uh, Richard Mansell. Good swing, isn't it? Very powerful. One of the guys that plays under the, the modern, modest golf umbrella, owned by Niall Horan, a member of uh, One Direction, who is a keen golf fan. He's been out here all week. He's taken more than his fair, of share, fair share of selfies. This part here for Sam Burns. So obviously the, the length of this one is a bit of an issue, but you have so many undulations between him and the hole to give that a good wrap. <laughs> Green speeds today. Same as they have been yesterday. Now they are a little bit firmer. In terms of the four days of, uh, of scoring, Karen, which day do you think uh, produced the, the best opportunities? I like the, the second day was pretty good. Um, I mean, late on the first day was not bad either. Yesterday, whole locations were, were pretty testy. I think we've got some testy ones today, though. Yeah, of the players who made the cut, the scoring average yesterday was two and a half shots higher than it was on Friday. Definitely a tough day yesterday now. Sack Sands in. Just a little left of the pin, ideally. about 40 yards back of his playing partner. Off the tee, didn't matter though. Straight down the pipe at the second. Ricky just trying to clean up here. A little bit of movement to the left. Oof. First took a, a couple of victims. Early on in the day yesterday, it ranked as the fourth hardest hole in the opening round. I can't believe I hardly hit it that first part. I mean, it caught a good bit of the hole and still went three feet away. Well, Yu Shin Lin, he's found some company. He was out in a one ball on his own yesterday, but he's playing alongside Brendan Steele today. This is game number four. On the tee from the USA, Brendan Steele. Good round of 68 on day two. Four over par yesterday. This man's got one of the strongest grips you'll ever see in the game. I mean, his right hand is underneath the grip, basically. He fans the club open. But he's got three wins on tour. And he's happy to be here. He was laid into the field after the withdrawal of Watson and Matsuyama. On the tee from China, Yushin Lin. will not be long before he joins the professional ranks. 
but Stella Curry, still so young, but you referenced it yesterday, won his first ever Asia Pacific Amateur Championship at the age of 17. Eagled the last hole to do it as well. Down in Wellington, in your part of the world, Frank. Elvis to his mates. Well, he's lucky Elvis today. What a lie he's got there with that tee shot. Is he a good singer? Is that why they are a dancer? Don't know why they call him Elvis. I don't think he knows, actually. It just caught on. Second shot for Richard Mansell. Up at two. chances for birdies it feels good the sense of anticipation the sense of trepidation you could say even for a lot of those players on the first page of the leaderboard it's the open and the pressure is building as the minutes go by here on Sunday they're just all trying to Stay calm, sleep in as much as uh, as they can. That's what Oosthuizen said in his presser last night. Well, on the second tee, Sam Burns. Seen some good drives down too. Kisner and Mansell were a long way down. Just sneaks into the rough, Sam Burns. The green birdie putt for Pum Six Anson. No, straight right off the bat. Shame. It's perfect putting surfaces. Two par par start. Could have been a little better. It was the perfect leave. They're all streaming in. All 32,000 of them today, if you want to be a part of the 150th Open, we're headed back to St Andrews next year. The ticket ballot's now open. And you can go to theopen.com to register and try and snag yourself one. That'll be something. That's an I remember when moment. Feller at two. Got to try and hit a fairway now, especially after that short miss. Back at the first. I always love the way he rotates through the ball, Ricky Fowler. Yeah, but he's been changing teachers. Uh, he seems to be searching. He's been working with John Tillery for nearly two years now, just trying to change that position at the top of the swing. It's like got a bit of the two-way miss up ahead. Well, birdie miss for Richard Mansell. Those two looks between he and uh, Pum Six Sense and two of the best we might even see today. Neither converting. A difficult fourth power putt here for Kisner. He gives the one back that he got on the first, so level power after four. Not making any inroads. What kind of goals are these guys setting, Frank, in terms of obviously not in contention, but they're still like they've got to come out, they've got to try and succeed and, and post something today? Yeah, I think if it's Kisner, if he makes another, makes another bogey, the goal is to get the airport as quick as possible. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, no, it's awkward. You're always trying to find something. You know, Kisner came off the back of two top tens, so it's more like scratching your head saying, well, you know, is it the golf course? Is it my strategy? Yeah. Uh, you know, no. what have I lost? Because you know, that's the beauty of being a professional. You know, you look at this opening hole. I just want to uh, ask the guys too one thing. We've seen so many people miss this fairway to the right and be punished. And I know Lynn did get a, a, a bad break, but the left side of this fairway has been so much better to miss than the right, yet 90% of the people miss it on the other side. Thoughts, guys? 
well, it's it's difficult to know, to be honest. You know, why do they miss it on the right? The wind has been left to right all week off this first tee. Maybe that's one of the reasons. Well, Lynn starts this round. Still in with a chance to win the silver medal. Five shots behind Matthias Schmidt. He can make that up if he puts throws in a good round. It's kind of out when it's all quiet. The conditions a little bit better. The greens fresh. Maybe even at slightly less pressure. That's that grip you're referring to. Yeah, the left hand is really strong also. <laughs> it works. He's worked with, uh, with Chris Mason out in San Diego for the majority of his career. Brendan Steele. Well, he nearly won a major in his first start that was it 2011 Atlanta Athletic Club where Keegan Bradley won. Fellow after a good drive at the second. The average, I'm afraid, for Fowler. It's also, it's always found when this scenario, it's a good time to work on your game when you never do that in a tournament, but you now get tournament conditions, you have no chance of winning. Have a think in your swing and try things out out there. Maybe find something for next week. Good flight there from Mansell at the third, 227 yards, pin on the front today. A couple of ways to get close to that one. Yeah, I think so. There's a couple. You can land it short, run it up. You can get it past, use that slope behind. But uh, I think we'll see a few birdies on three today. That's a gettable pin. Unlucky there coming out there off. It generally flies. It would have got that in the middle of the green if it jumped just a little bit. It wasn't offline. It just came up short and then took the slope. Yeah, that little right bank just absolutely killed it on the first bounce. Can barely tell where the water ends and the sky begins here today. That's how blue it is. Seen my seen my pigeon yet? I mean, it's camouflaged. Well, a bit of a disappointing uh, second shot there for Sam Lowe in the rough was all right. I mean, but you've got to play left at this flag. Just where it's located there, so tight to that right side, made that chip virtually impossible. I think he tried to chip it into the bank, and there's nothing worse than carrying it over the bank. <laughs> you're trying to pitch and run it up. It's one for you, Frankie. Um, grasshopper, right? Very good. It's a big one. He's a good climber. Yeah. Worst thing about it, you have to go all the way down again. <laughs> this would be a good little bounce back for Ricky here, if he could make this one. Just trying to coax it down that slope. Can't believe how much that broke. I mean, that, that's, I think that's almost unmakeable, that putt, if you're in that position. And that's why you watch a golf in the morning when you're playing in the afternoon, seeing things like that. So the 2019 Asian Tour number one, Jazz Jane Wotanen on out with Chan Kim this morning. This is game number five. On the tee from Thailand, Jazz Jane Wotanen on. An incredibly talented player. No one's ever questioned that since, uh, when did he turn pro? When he was 14, 15? He's been a pro 11 years. Yes, Turned wow. pro at 14. <laughs> Runner up in, uh, in Kenya earlier this year on um, the European Tour. On the tee from the USA, Chan Kim. I was watching the practice round uh, on Tuesday and saw a swing I didn't recognise. It was Chan Kim's, and I thought, that that dog will hunt. Yeah, absolutely. Bags of talent, bags of power. 
And it's a comfortable pairing. These two are very familiar with each other, played a lot together in Asia and Japan. but it's still trickier from there. It's one of the best things about the Open is, you know, some of those unknown names that, that pop up. Uh, international qualifying was introduced in, in 2005, and that really just opened this event up to the world. It's the Open. That's the beauty of it. Birdie putt for Brendan Steele at the first. Excellent start for Steele. Plus four. Par save required for Sam Burns. Miss the green down short right to here. Now this for his four. Really feeds back to the drive. Can't afford to miss these fairways. You, you know, all three of you have said that. I think everyone that stepped on the golf course has said that this week. I think that's every open venue. Good putt there for his par. I must admit, when they first introduced the international final qualifying series, I wasn't really in agreement with it because I always felt I always came over to the open to qualify the week before playing the Lynx golf courses. I thought that was how qualifying should be. But having attended now quite a few of the final series qualifying events in, in Asia, and in Europe, uh, I think it, it is the right way to go, and th they've done a great job, the RNA, in introducing that. You're identifying the best players, and you want the best players to come and play in the Open Championship. Yeah, it's fair. It's tougher to finish in the top three of an event than it is to go and have, you know, one or two good days uh, in succession when you're in form. Ricky Fowler on the fourth hit, on the second hit, using a four iron. Can't mention the wind because there is none at the moment. Uh, this one's starting to the right, trying to maybe draw a bit, wants to kick. <laughs> Did it ever. Oh, what a turn in luck there for Ricky Fowler. Like you said, there's more than one way of getting it close on this hole, Ali. We didn't think that was one of the ways. <laughs> Sam Burns now with a five iron, just one less club. I mean, you were saying this is a nice accessible hole location, and it really is just at the bottom of that first tier, backstop behind it. This one, higher flighted shot, fading just a little bit. Just caught that. Sans and Mansell both made, uh, made their pass, by the way. They're both level through three. Here's the ball placement. It's down at the first of uh, Kim and Jane Watananond. Well, this first flag has already proved to be accessible. It's a fairly flat area. This green we should see a few more birdies at the opening hole come the end of the day. 52. Yeah. Shane Kim plays all his golf in Japan at the moment, born in California. Who have your discoveries been over, over the years to you, Sam and, and Frank, that, you know, the person you remember the first time you saw them swing it? Trevino. That's not a bad one to have. Yeah, I, I think Trevino stands out, but I've got to say the, the late, great Biasteros. I remember as we watch Kim here. Soft, he's saying. Oh, oh, it's it's a beautiful shot. But the first time I ever saw Biasteros hit a shot live, it just he just oozed charisma, just oozed it, and it 
boy said I thought he was the Elvis of golf. And uh, I know we all miss him dearly, but but yeah, he just played golf differently. My idol himself, my, myself, was Tom Weisskopf. Ball on the way for Jazz. So he'll be putting uh, back for his birdie there. And his playing partner is going to get a pretty handy read as well. It's what it's all about. It's about looking at this week, but also looking back on the history of the Open. It's good to have you with us. Brenda Steele, perfect start, birdie at the first. See if you can hit the fairway here. Well, they think he has. He certainly has perfection. So many bumps and swales and ridges on the fairways and the greens here. Sam Burns, this putt uphill. I'm not sure if there's too much break in it. Gut feeling is it should go left, but so close to the front of the green, oh, it's just hanging out to the right. One of the kind of pin positions that we've seen on three. Played as a, a pretty meaty hole the last couple of days, Karen. It really has. I mean, with those back hole locations really do take their toll on the players and with the wind blowing heavily from the left, I mean, that was quite a tough prospect, but today, very benign out here. And Ricky looking to take advantage of that really good break off the bank. Does it. That's some kind of birdie, Ricky. Alison, we already were seeing the hole where it's cut at the first, very accessible, and also three by using the, the front shelf. They've given the guys a little bit of a chance to get out of the gates. A different story in uh, a couple of the previous days. Turned into quite a hard start. The first six yesterday. This is a group to watch. Lovely reception that he gets really anywhere he goes. He's the Ryder Cup captain. He's the two-time Open champion as well, Padraig Harrington. They'll get underway shortly. Solid swing there from then. Another perfect T-shirt. Yardage. Side by side, yes. Both caddies will still step it out, though. Oh, is that Frank. the blue one you saw, Frankie? That's the one. <laughs> I just obviously lost the colour in the magnificent sky. He's heading north. <laughs> He's looking to head north. <laughs> it's a big pigeon, too. Lots of. Is it fair to call these two a couple of classics? Richard Bland, he's becoming an instant classic uh, in the last eight or so months. This is game number six. On the tee from the Republic of Ireland, Horry Harrington. He's part of the club at the Open. Back-to-back -back winner in 2007, 2008 at Carnoustie and Royal Birkdale, respectively. Got across the line in two very different fashions as well. And just coming down the left side. One was a playoff, another a four-shot win. On the tee from England. Richard Bland. A 
very popular. Richard Bland got his breakthrough victory after well into the 400s attempt. Then when leaving, he was leaving the US Open after two, I think, were right up there. Co leading through 36 at Torrey Pines. Excellent swing, too. Great rhythm. In a different Podridge to open wins was the second shot at Birkdale in 17. Just sumptuous. The five wood to two feet for a tap in eagle. Just to give him an extra two shots leading up the last, it was just magnificent. Now Chan Kim, John Birdie, the opening hole. Great way to start. Just like Brendan Steele. Group ahead. Gets him back to two over par. To the lefty, Yushin Lin. At the second. Brendan Steele's found the green. Little ways away. And seeing that on the top of screen, uh, at the top of the pin. That's next to the pin. For Lynn and a good birdie chance to come. Now Jazz at the first. <laughs> Starting to play in a few more majors over the last few years. Contended at the uh, the PGA was it 2019 I think it was right in the mix in the weekend. Yeah, Beth Page Black it was eventually won by Brooks Kepka. Well, why has he changed the top of the swing position, Frank? Is it too open? Yeah, it, it felt like um, if it was a little less laid off. So you know, that's when you, you look at a swing from behind. Often it sort of ducks back to what it was, then it's more down the line. So it just varies. And consequently, you get the, his miss now is both ways and lost a bit of that draw that he used to be, just about close his eyes and hit on every shot. Steel. Birdie at the first as he gets bow. Oh, so close. And a chance. Kisnap for his part. At the par three, six. Birdie at one. Bogey at four. Birdie at five. Par at six. Out on his own today. Can't play with the marker because of uh, COVID regulations, and sometimes they'd get a, a, you know, a good amateur in, or maybe someone from uh, from the pro shop. Even over the years, we've seen that happen to go out just so they can set their own pacing. Otherwise, it can get pretty quick, pretty lonely. That is a birdie chance gone missing, a very good one gone missing there for Lynn. You ever played in a onesie, Frank? I did uh, for a few holes, actually at Augusta. Peter Jacobson had hurt his back. It was 1996 of all years. And I got a marker on, I think it was the fourth hole, um, who was an exceedingly good amateur player. Jim Holgrieve, I think it was, who'd actually played the Masters more times than I had. <laughs> I remember when Richard Boxall broke his leg from the 10th tee. Uh, and the group in front was Martin James and uh, and Colin Montgomery was, was Boxall's partner and he asked Mark James if he could join him and Mark said no. <laughs> Which was his right, he doesn't have to play with him. He's They've got a marker for him, the match behind, he stayed where he was. Yeah, that was 1981, wasn't it? 1991. 91, yeah. Baker Finch here. Yes. Yeah, went out in 29 on Sunday. Five under after six, wasn't it? Just extraordinary. Incredible. Played beautifully, too. He could putt, Frank. Yeah, he could play, too. Yeah. Drove it straight. 
Hold out regularly now. Richard Bland. A little upslope should help. A little bit more elevation without trying. in his game according to his coach Tim Barter is just that he's getting his putts to the hole he says he's always just been a really good ball striker but it had been you know he, he was always a lag putter and they'd been trying to get him to be more aggressive the one week it, he did it he won ball on the way for uh, Chan Kim uh, two just a three wood said over and over again but just another excellent golf swing really is there's not many bad ones out there frank is no, there now ricky this is a uh, good angle to look at that top of the swing position can't see too much of the green from uh, the second shot down the left part of this hole at four Ricky Fowler's not going to get it all the way back there with that, quite a, a steep bridge. It's done well to stay there, that kind of going back another 15 yards. Very, extremely difficult putt from the front edge of that green four. Now Jazz, another beautiful swinger. Yeah. 14, isn't that extraordinary? of the Pete Cowan Club. They're working on the range and he said, I keep hitting it off the, the toe. Uh, last week at the Aberdeen Scottish Open and uh, Pete Cowan said, the, the toe cut is one of the best shots in golf because it, it doesn't spin much. The gear effect of the driver uh, takes its place. And he goes, that's something that's going to work. I like that. It's not always about perfect. It's never perfect, is it? Sam Burns finds the back edge there at four. All of these stands, they'll be packed later on today. We've had a lot of people come out early this weekend. It's been, uh, it's been impressive seeing the crowds filter in. I think Bryson DeChambeau out earlier yesterday. He's out at, at 9.10 today. In around about 11 minutes, he's out in the next group after this. Yeah, I've almost forgotten about the size of the, of, the, of the fans or the number of the fans because it's limited to 32,000. What they would have got in a normal year around here, very accessible, a little north, only a couple of hours north of London. And they would have got 100,000 people around here. Yeah, it's south of London, but that's okay. Sorry, south, yeah, up, upside down the map. Just don't want you getting lost driving home. You might get wet. I'll get lost. Don't worry about that. I'll follow the pigeon home, Sam. It's better following the crow. It goes straighter. This is the group of uh, Ryosuke Kinoshita and JC Ritchie from Japan and South Africa, respectively. This is game number seven. On the tee from Japan, Ryosuke Kinoshita. Having his, uh, his best ever golfing year, he won back-to-back -back events in Japan. They were his first ever two professional titles. They come one after another. He's had his coach out on his bag as well. He said that's been priceless. I agree. Having your coach as your caddy is just. <laughs> that's right, Jason Davis used to have that. that gorgeous, right? Coach obviously not allowed to give you information on the golf course, but if he's caddying for you, he certainly can. On the tee from South Africa, 
JC Ritchie. Played some good golf this week, JC. We've seen so much of him in, in the coverage of uh, co-sanctioned events towards uh, the end of the year, the South African Open. As well as uh, down at Leopard Creek, six-time winner on the Sunshine Tour. And the 2019 number one down there in South Africa. Solid play so far this week. Land for his birdie. Harrington's already putted, but he's left it about eight feet short. So a bit of work for Harrington coming up. And that's Mr. Reed there was going right. Uh, here at second, Jazz certainly respected this hole cut on the right. That was a look at that uh, pin sheet today. Try and find out. You know, they're used to the golf course now. Find out exactly where those humps and hollows are, and almost put an X, like for example, on the right of the second, and go. You know, do not go there, or at least a target 20 feet left. Plot the golf course around there. Caddies will do the same. Sam, you referenced the par putt of Harrington. A wonderful putter over the years, Parik. What a wonderful player. Oh dear. And the commentator's cursed. Not his best effort, Pori. Wonderful. So he's got wonderful attitude, though. Nothing disturbs him. It's a five at the first for Harrington. This for a three for Chan Kim. Yeah, we've already seen this putt break a little more right than the players have read so far. There's more there than, th than they're seeing. We get the luxury of uh, learning these things. I know some players go out and they, and they watch the morning coverage. They study it. And they try and pick up any kind of tip they can. This is the section of the leaderboard, though, that, that haven't needed too many tips so far this week, unless they were your tip. Of, uh, of course, six times a major runner-up. But the champion golfer of the year back in uh, in 2010 at St Andrews, Louis Oosthuizen, is on top by one. Did so right at the death last night. Gonna spent a lot of Saturday in a tie for the lead. Canadian there, Mackenzie Hughes. The best ever finish uh, by a Canadian player at the Open was a, a tie for fifth. Uh, by Stephen Ames. That was back in 1997. So even without uh, maybe hoisting the claret jug, Mackenzie Hughes, Corey Connors, with uh, some potential history up for grabs from their home country. Those were the thatched roofs uh, that they've recently restored and redone. I'm not sure. I Maybe twice in a lifetime they have to do it. I'm not sure how many times they do it, but it's such beautiful uh, things to look at. 20 years, I think, is the time of the last. I'm not sure how long a slate roof will last. A bit longer. <laughs> a couple of replacements since 1887. in uh, the first cut of rough is uh, Kinoshida. <coughs> the 
little check on the second bounce. He too qualified uh, through the Singapore Open at the start of last year, tied for sixth. Richie, prime position, another one a little bit on the upslope. Almost jumped in the hole. Always nice to two comfortable shots on the first. Just settle yourself in. Now Bland at two. It's very good posture. A little bit of a slip of the rear foot, but I like the way he stays in his sort of spinal tilt. It just rotates comfortably around. You could teach her, Frank. Do you, are you knowledgeable on the swing? No, I spent way too much time looking at everybody else's swing. No, I love it. But I don't think I wouldn't have the patience to teach, really. Love to watch, still love to watch the guys hit balls on the range. I just think it's, it's just the sound of the ball. Gorgeous iron shot there from Fowler. What was your feeling when the shot club face started coming in and by the best players in the world? Yeah, I was completely shocked because I was always taught not to do that. And then I remember someone explaining that everybody basically gets into that position just before impact. You know, the left wrist turned down a little bit as we watch Harrington. So why wouldn't you do it at the top of the swing? Well, it's incredible. Yeah. I don't think Zama Fala taught me all my life, and that was taboo, a shot club face at the top. But it's now, it's actually square because he just, Dustin Johnson's the perfect example. He just brings it and round. They just bring it straight back in without moving it. It's it's actually a magnificent method now. Yeah. Very simple. Now Kisner at the eighth. Blind tee shot, slight dog leg to the right. Good shot. Oh, this is a cracker. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. So he's gone birdie at the first. He's uh, dropped another shot since we saw him at the par five, but that should just be a tap in to get it straight back again. But just to tack on that too, Sam, you know, launch monitors, I know some people think it's too high tech, but it's basically a golfing MRI. You, know, you can find out very quickly what the club is doing because we can't see that. And the divot, the divot almost tells you something too. It's more of an art form reading a divot though, isn't it, Sam? But it's, but yes, yes it is, but it's, basically the direction it's going in uh, and, the, and the depth of it. I know, but... <laughs> he did that yesterday, it's brilliant. He turned around and says, let's get the booing over early. There you go. <laughs> it's lovely to see them engage with the crowds. Playing alongside Shes Reavy out there today. This is game number eight. On the tee from the USA, Bryson DeChambeau. Just a four iron for Dijambo. That's the longest iron he carries. But it only has 19 degrees of loft. And that equates to a. Like a strong two iron. The old days. Really? Get in the hole! <laughs> okay, it's hit it beautifully, straight down the middle. All his clubs are named. On the tee from the USA, Chez Reavy. I mean, a 
why would you want to know what Bryson hit? You're never going to be hitting the same club, are you? <laughs> Lovely one of the straightest hitters, Jez Reedy. That's perfection. There was a player, Lionel Platts, and he used to have a bag of five irons. He had a five, five on every single club, so nobody would find out what he was hitting except when he was hitting a five iron. <laughs> Alison, you were asking, though, about what would you learn on a Sunday. I think Bryson, at his age, is going to play another Open Championship at Royal St. George's in his career, at least another one. He tried the driver's strategy earlier in the week. It didn't work. So it's interesting, going with the irons. Maybe he learned something for 10 years' time. Hope he's got a better memory than me. I would have forgotten it in 10 years' time. Slow down that hill. We've seen a lot of players come up short at the first. Second shot for Richard Bland at two. Big tight pint, pen on the right. Oh, he's pulled that touch. Sorry, his ball you can see there. I mean, apart from St Andrews, Frank, I don't think there's an a open venue that isn't about hitting fairways. Yeah, and Bryson has used the new, as we watched Kinoshita on the first. I mean, he's, he's when he won the US Open, for example, at wing foot, he could overpower it. And there's nothing, good putt there, there's nothing in front of the greens at wing foot. So even if he wedged it out, he could run it through the front of the green. I think he's learnt that that strategy, he cannot overpower this golf course, especially with this wind direction. Yeah, it's interesting when you even look at his scoring breakdowns. He's level on the par threes. He's eight over par on the par fours, but minus five on the par fives, which is probably what you'd expect. But not many people have been able to take advantage of the long holes, given there's only two on the golf course. Oh, what kind of tale are we going to get today in the Open? One of glory, one of heartbreak. We've had them both probably in equal parts. thing we know for sure is that the golf course is glorious the weather seems good and we'll keep you right on top of it all of all of the action at theopen.com as well got some the open radio which is a great listen a lot of people out with their earpieces following on their favorite groups but keeping track of the others out on the course at the same time now Kim at the third just has to negotiate this bridge Stays high and then starts to turn downhill. It just looked, it was so turning towards the hole, but it just stopped. Excellent three, though. Good two putt. So Karen Stuffles has, has made her way to, to this game now with DeChambeau and Reavy. Feel quite lucky to uh, okay, follow five, Bryson two seven, days in a row. Short. I'll be, I'll be interested to hear your uh, comparisons of the two days as well, Karen, like Frank. Yes, I mean, Frank's one of those big. Four yards. Okay. I want you to come in with as much spin as you can get. So, 166 shot? Yeah. be very easy to... Very easy for Bryson to come out here just and just... Yeah. Ball, seven, or yep. five, uh, pitching yep. I think Frank's up right. I think he's yeah. he's still planning and plotting for the next time. Ball is slightly above his feet. I think that's one of the coolest things that, that we see here at the open is that picture of the lie. The audio hasn't been bad either. I have to say, if you're right in there with him, that is right in there by the pin for DeChambeau. Real chance there for an opening birdie. It's, it almost feels like he's trying to get to the same place, but with different directions today. Karen, I know you're, uh, your experience of that, it, living in, uh, in Deal, trying to get to Royal St George's each, each morning has been quite entertaining. It has. Well, the trouble is when you know this road so well, you have so many other options. 
cover on Very that, nice on that line off. there. <laughs> yeah. So when's, uh, when's about 6 o'clock? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pulling that right at it. Nice little note there from Reeves Caddy. Wind from 6 o'clock. That's straight behind him. Most of the days it's been off the left. Just a little recheck on the number there. Ball is slightly below his feet here. Couple yards helping. Yeah, I mean that's right right <coughs> where I line for just a touch right at that. But yeah, I do believe we cover that. I think the decision to land is do you land it at the front and let it trickle down the hill or do you land it close to the hole high and expect to spin this? Yeah, the downhill lie that you referred to is what's bothering him because you know he's going to bounce forward. Mm. This one fading right. He was never set. Turn about 30 feet left for Reedy's birdie at the opening hole. Much less for DeChambeau. About a fifth of that. So we'll be hearing more from uh, from Sam Torrance as the day goes along, but I'm. Uh, Happy to say that Cynic Faldo's joined Frank and I in the commentary box. It's another glorious day at St. Andrew, uh, St. Andrews, Royal St. George's. <laughs> there we go. I was thinking about where you won one of your uh, three open championships. Yes, good morning, campers. It's, it's an amazing morning. Summer has arrived. Did you have any birthday cake this morning? I had, uh, yes, I've been uh, I was a smidgen late this morning. I'm wrapping all my prezzes. <laughs> Yeah, we had a, had a nice evening last night. Most wonderful uh, beef Wellington. My Ooh. goodness. Oh, spoil. That's what I need to do a thousand times now to burn some calories. You missed a very, very short miss by Harrington at the opening hole. I mean, a short, short one? Well, um, he had about an eight footer, should I say, and he oh. left it about three feet short. So. Oh. So the third, they put it in a nasty little front left hole location. So can they land short and skip it up? Oh, just kind of like that. <laughs> See what happens, Frank, when I arrive? Look at that. Oh, oh yes. Absolute peach. You've got the magic, haven't you? Just Especially on your birthday. Everybody's lucky charm. No, not everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a bad lob, wasn't it? Uh, this is Adam Scott who has the company of someone other than uh, Justin Thomas, who he was out with uh, for the first three days. He's with Billy Horschel out there this morning. Both of them had 73s yesterday. Another one to keep your eyes peeled on. This is game number nine on the tee from the USA. Billy Horschel. Came over to play the Aberdeen Scottish Open early. And a couple of troubles with uh, low and left off the tee last week at Renaissance. The other trouble this week was suffering from dizziness on the golf course, which is a. Uh, I've never experienced anything like that, so I have no idea how to cope with that. On the tee, from Australia, Adam Scott. <laughs> Look at the roller coaster fought back. You see, great day two. But again, uh, 
Seems to run up the god double and at the wrong time. of torment in the Open Championship. Four bogeys to finish at Royal of the Sinans at 2012, and he, he could have crumbled, but he came back the next year with a third place, a fifth place in 2014. The top 10 at St Andrews all uh, in succession. Up ahead at the green, shows Reavy for his birdie. No harm, no foul. Now, yeah, first player off playing in a one ball, Kevin Kisner. Get it to five over. Or two under for the round. Oh, greens look good, Frank. Do they double cut the greens? They've got them a smidging, smidging faster, but they've added a couple of points of firmness, I was reading. I mean, it's, I don't know how you calculate it. It's like five, less than 5% firmer today. So I'm sure Bryson will find a way to. <laughs> Okay. I always thought, you know, once a link, if you can hear a ball land from 150 yards, then, then you know you're in trouble. Well, speaking of Bryson, yeah, that firmness need is called a clay hammer, yeah. sort of. That's what the fans got up early for. Well, that would have been like four iron, nine iron. Fascinating to watch him play, to watch him work it all out as well. JC Ritchie at two, just past the hole. Down the hill for his birdie. Nicely done. Par birdie start for the South African. Let's see if Porter can... Uh Reward himself after that beautiful tee shot. Ay, 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 that's harsh. Just correct myself, it's Clegg Hammer, not Clay Hammer. Clegg Hammer, yeah. Clegg Hammer. It's all about gravities and numbers like that. And bounces, he dro essentially drops a... Yeah, drop a round ball and you, they measure the dent, basically, how deep the dent goes into the, into the green. A couple of people trying to make a dent in the leaderboard. Terrible segue, <laughs> but it's Louis Ustazen who is, uh, well, I guess I, if he's lucky, he's still asleep. I guess he's out at 2.35 later today. And he says he's just trying to stay cool, calm and collected in the lead up. Colin Morikawa, uh, Jordan Spieth, I mean, the three of them were, uh, were impressive yesterday. It was a 68 for the Californian. Shane Lowry did well to uh, make the cut. He was, he was battling for a little while there and uh, ended up being able to put together a, a quite a reasonable defense after being one over on day one, minus five on day two. In round of 69 yesterday with a couple of late birdies to match. Bryson with the big dog here. It's amazing the, the, the difference a day makes. I mean, there's so many less variables for, for Bryson to calculate today. I mean, this ought to free him up just a little bit. His head shouldn't be spinning around too much. You see everybody scurrying on the hill. Which way's the four? Left or right? You see it, Karen? It's the other side of the hill from me. Oh, okay. You're hiding. Oh, only Karen, five please. foot four. It doesn't help. You're taking cover. <laughs> You're taking if, cover. If I, was, if I was your height, Nick, I'd have it all cut oh, all boy. taken care look, of. Look at this Little potential there. Good job, gents. Ruby has to be a little bit more tactical here with his game. This one just starting down the right side. 
the crew from uh, from just down the road at Royal Sink Ports uh, marshalling the second hole this week. They kind of form their own little communities throughout uh, the Open Championship. Do their shifts. Back to one with Adam Scott. See if we can hit it close. Yeah, I want to see how the uh, downslope on the front left reacts. Like so. How good was that? It's fairly tame. Yeah. The opening hole, and also the, we were saying earlier, Nick, they give you a chance also on the third. They've got a brutal one at the second. Some kind of gap wedge for Horshaw. Just anything you can do. Oh, I needed to do better. <laughs> Thought that was going to zip back in. You're getting everything you want on your birthday, Nick. You, you wanted to see it, you saw it twice. Jockey Neiman. Oh, I'm going to try that. One handed. Just hold the right arm in. Pops it in, and I'm off. I'm ready. It's the stairway. Oh, it's good try. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready for super quick. He's been watching all those kids on TikTok when they bounce it down the house, down the stairs, off the saucepans, and, and in. <laughs> you could try that. Bong, bong, bong. First tee. If you could, if you could land it and bounce it and it finished on your tee peg, you'd be allowed to take an extra shot off the scorecard, right? I should give you a birdie if you can yeah. do that on the first off. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a handful of tees, pull up the pocket. There you go. That's how you do it without missing a step. He's still a kid himself, really, isn't he? He's 22. Already a player on the President's Cup. Back at Royal Melbourne at the end of uh, 2019. No plastic uh, water bottles on site this week. RNA doing their bit to promote sustainability, look after the environment. Well, hopefully we can see two birdies here at the opening hole. One for Horschel. Nicely done. Back to one on one over par. Yeah, I think the first has been quite a challenge for so many players as we touch the right hand or left hand rough and it, two swipes later and We've seen carnage, really, plenty of doubles and even a few sevens up the first. Adam Scott was trying a couple of different putting grips on the putting green, but it's gone back to the usual method. Almost trying to find the slipper that fits. It seemed to work, but that was probably because of the iron shot and the drive that set it up. It is an opening birdie as well for Adam Scott. To the tee we go. Playing in uh, well for Neiman, his, uh, his second Open Championship. And for Xander Shoffley, it's his fourth runner-up uh, back in 2018. This is game number 10. On the tee from Chile, Joaquin Neiman. Decent uh, recent form, just uh, missed out in a, what was it, the playoff at the Rocket Rocket Mortgage. Just a couple of weeks back now. Guess that means left. That's fine. Should stop before the thick stuff. On the tee from the USA, Zander Schofle.
for world number five. Coming in with form top ten uh, last week at the Renaissance Golf Club just outside of Edinburgh. the dreaded signal into the really matted down stuff down the right it is that looks pretty brutal doesn't it the evolution of the rough at the opens one to watch well, the spectators as we go forward to the second see what the can do out of this talking about thick rough Best it could do. Looks so like Ch Ches Reeve has lost it down the right hand side. Well, that's Brendan Steele. Must have been sitting up on a tee peg for that sound. Wow, that was all right. This is not a very easy shot that really has here. It's going to have to use the slope out to the right, trying to pick a spot. underneath oh, it. Oh, it's not going to stay up. Yeah, it's going to have another go. Such a dangerous hole location. I mean, it's all just barely clinging on to that side before it drops away. You know, and now, when you're in this spot, you think to yourself, OK, I'm just going to... Come up to the, the fairway cut straight, straight forward. Thank you. Just going to make sure that I've got to get it on so that the gut reaction is to go this, make sure that you get it past the hole. So I don't anticipate getting much closer than about kind of eight to ten feet the other side. Now he's got quite a lofty club here. always that's just the gut response isn't it from when you don't get it up the first time now forward to the fifth Brendan Steele I presume he was out of the fairway after that excellent strike no uh, he makes three and a good time to bring in Tom Abbott shift change yeah, it's great to be here, Frank, and uh, what a beautiful Sunday we have in store. Have you been for another stroll? Please I, tell uh, us. I drove in along the, the, the coast. From Deal. And it was I, just I, fabulous. I, yeah, I came in that way as well, for safety, just in case the buses were jammed in the sandwich again. Anyone bring you a cake yet? I've got a cake left, right and centre, yeah. I'm on the cake on the hour, every hour. <laughs> Happy birthday to Nick. Thank you. Well, I mean, to have a birdie putt here where his tee shot went was uh, is quite spe quite good. But I think that's what Bryson does. I mean, I'm not sure that there's a rough that's, that he couldn't get a, a lob wedge out of and close to the green if that was his yardage, and he just proved it again there. Nick, I watched him play at the players, and he missed the 14th to the right almost on the 12th tee. And he was in shindy Florida rough, and he had about 170 yards to the front. And I thought, there's no way he yeah. can get this close. It was like a hot knife through. No, he has, he has hit, or has used that strength, incredible strength to his advantage on it. Yeah, I mean. I think if I swing hard enough, I can get enough on it. Yeah? Yeah, just feel it out. Because I, I think it needs to be at least about a 110, 114 ball. Right. Just can I hit it and keep it straight? And it's matted, it wraps around the shaft, goes left.
Not able to get any control on the golf ball, but pretty good effort from there. And now Neiman from the left side. That's going to leave him an outside chance for birdie. Over to Ches Reeve, trying to save Bogey here at the second. It was a nice tee shot. He went the, you know, the strategy route, a little three wood off the tee, and it's going to chalk up a six. How about that? Well, if you not get out of position here, that's the danger. As we go ahead to the seventh, and Ricky Fowler with his second. Got it all the way over the hill. So this is reachable for Fowler. Currently even for his round. I bet when you wore your orange trousers, Frank, you didn't have an orange glove to match. No, I didn't. I couldn't afford it in those days. Actually, they didn't make them. Didn't hit shots like that either. Chance for Eagle for Fowler. Now, back to the second. DeChambeau to save his part. Stay at two over. Talked about bringing his power game to the open. He didn't know if it was going to work here. And uh, two over at this stage in the championship. You may argue that it really hasn't worked very well at all. But there's been a lot going, away, uh, going on away from the golf course for Bryson as well. And his, uh, his difficulties with Brooks. Good day to be out on the water with the sails up. There's probably not a lot of breeze out there. Temperature is going to get up to uh, 27 degrees today, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Louis Eustazen, he is uh, one for three in converting 54 hole leads in majors. The only 54 hole lead that he converted, the 2020, uh, 2010 Open. Xander Shoffley is going to putt this one from off the green. Pretty good decision, Frank. You see that a lot in Lynx golf. Yeah, the fringes are so tight, just a, a little slower than the greens. Green speed today, the same as it was yesterday, 10.2 on the stem. Yeah, the same as yesterday. Uh, they've got a smidgen more firm as we were talking about that. Probably, I mean, some might measure it to like smidgen under 5% firm. I don't know how you'd calculate that when you hit in a golf ball. I'm sure Bryson's got a slide rule for that equation. How long did it take you to blow out all the candles? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, the oh. fire brigade, Frank. Yes. <laughs> did, did you get them all? I just got us one next to the six and one next to the four. That's <laughs> we're, we're on rations. COVID, you know, you have to ration, ration everything. Revi. Yeah, I fear it's going left. Oh, yeah. It's just so thick around this green. Have you shot your age yet? Though? That's the question. Ah, give me a chance. <laughs> I've just 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 bowled up here to do a, a day's work, and I'll, I'll be out on the links as quick as I can. Okay, all right. There's a little nine holer down the road. <laughs> uh, I can go around thrice then. Yes, yeah, thank you, Frank. Now, Neiman at the first. There's also the, uh, the the senior open next week at Sunningdale. Chance to do it there. I have to, I have to really warm up the sticks for that. Adam Scott second to that second hole. Walking away like maybe giving a little too uh -oh. tight on the right side. It's going to be good in the end. He knew that was close to being in trouble. It falls away to the right. Now Neiman for his par. Not the 
best first effort. It was uh, somewhat of a lengthy birdie try. He first started playing golf when he was just two. Started with plastic clubs. Started using the real ones at the age of four. To be the best amateur in the world. 17, 18 years of age. Now you can start to the 2021 20, calendar year. A couple of runner-up finishes. And playing in his second open, having missed the cut in 2019. Now Shoffley for par. Whenever we go into a major championship, his name is uh, banded around as a, a, a potential player to, to look for. But this week, it's uh, not going to be his week as we go back over to seven, Frank. Yeah, Fel hasn't even recorded a birdie at the seventh all week. Yeah. But, hold on, is that an eagle, but his first eagle of the championship. Much better showing from him today. he has got a bit of a brutal lie here. And what makes this so brutal? You've got some super thick rough that he's got to play from, and it's a flag that's pretty close to him. So you've got to take a big swing, but it's such a delicate shot. That was pretty good. Yeah, anytime you can give yourself a chance for a par from uh, the thick rough, it's a Pretty good situation. We'll go back over to Adam Scott. That lovely approach in here and a good chance for him to get it back to level par for the championship. <laughs> Shot that 66, bogey free on Friday. And getting a little more confident, but uh, not really the week that he was looking for. Over to Bryson, who's got to deal with that <laughs> ridge in the green here, Karen. It is. I mean, we've seen a lot of players going from the bottom to the top tier, but from the back down here, it looks fairly slippery. And you can see his caddy pointing to a spot on the far left side of the green. And that, uh, that requires some imagination and some discipline just to keep looking at that target and almost taking where you know the flag and the hole to be out of the equation. Just trying to put this to a spot. It could be scary as well, because if it didn't break, it would then <laughs> peel off to the right. And that would be about the pace. If yeah. you hit it too hard, that was what would happen. Oh, that's a darn good trickle, that one, wasn't it? <laughs> nearly stopped on top of the hill. It just needed a, my goodness, a more. You know, Tommy, you were talking about the strategy. I mean, I remember reading or hearing about Ben Hogan, how he went when he went to a tournament after his practice round, he assessed what clubs he would be needing the most that particular week, and obviously that's what he would practice on the range. Makes sense if it. You know, if it's a five iron week or anything less than an eight iron. And that's something that bright, I heard that, I read that line and I would obviously do that. I thought about that, you know, if you're gonna thrash away on the, on the range, at least be hitting the clubs you're gonna be using on the golf course. So that's why, you know, when Bryson doing the speed drill training with the driver on a golf course when we all know it is not a bomber's golf course, is bottom line waste of time, isn't it? I mean, you should be out there thinking, if I just, pick strategize it put the ball in the right place i'm going to hit a lot of eights and nines and whatever and you practice those and you play to the spots because every time he's had a go with the drive he's in the rough well that's it's a great shot to hit the green or even a lucky one to be able to chop it out sideways so you know all that effort for me it's not good time management is it well to back that up too I think it's the same story you refer to Hogan, where I think he took the eight iron out, went around the whole golf course and figured he wouldn't need an eight iron. And remember, there's only 10, 12 yard gaps, but he'd strategized to that degree. Yeah, I did that once at one of the PGAs. 
I think it was the one the Zinger one. I, I think I took a 9-9 nine -nine out the back. I thought there's no 9-9 nine -nine shots on the golf course. And I, and you're thinking, well, it, you're either going to leave the certain length layups at all the par fives and just didn't need it. So uh, <laughs> not a bad thing. He could easily have put a driving iron in the bag and hit that all week. If somebody said you're not allowed to even hit the driver. Where has he actually gained in hitting the driver this week? Because look at what the leaders are doing. Moya Carr, I noticed yesterday, many a time hitting three wood off the tee just to get it. You know, just you cannot risk going near the bunkers. Neiman off the tee at the second. And that would be still using your power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah I agree. It's power management, isn't it? If you have the, the strength to be able to hit a driving iron out there 300 yards, you know, I would take that because look how far they hit their short times. They're hitting wedges 160. So even if he leaves 180, you know, it's at worst he's going to have a seven iron into something. Fortunate there, Graham Neiman now. Yu Xin Lin, the 20 year old from China. Playing his uh, collegiate golf in Florida. Winner of the Asia Pacific Amateur on a couple of occasions. Now back over to the tee at the second with Shopley. Very well. As uh, Bryson is clubbing back here on the fourth, Karen. He is. He did this yesterday as well. Still managed to put it into a great spot down the right side. Right side of this fairway opens up the, the green, and you also have a flatter lie. This one is drawing, though. It's going to be hard pushed to stay in, I think. Yeah, that's the wrong shape. You've got to fade it at, at four. Simple as that. It's, it's 45 yards wide, that fairway. It's also a level of maturity that you feel like Bryson hasn't quite got to. I mean, the comments that he makes away from the course, he's a bit, you know, gets gets in his own way with some of the comments that he says. We heard it with the driver this week talking about his manufacturer and making that public, which was uh, obviously he regrets. And it's the same with his golf. You know, just if he matured a little bit, and uh, you feel like maybe he could employ some of the strategies that you're talking about. Well, I think the other thing, what you're referring to, he's picked a fight to a certain degree that, that he doesn't really need. I mean, one that probably Kepka enjoys. You know, he's, his brain is working at such a high degree and it's distracted now. The caddy, he and his caddy, you know, Tim, they did a tremendous job together. That's gone. Now, do I drive it? Do I own it? There's way too much going on. Yeah, the bottom line, you can't do everything at 100% because something will, something's got to give, isn't it? Eddie Horschel here with his tee shot at three. Just gonna settle. That's not a bad spot. Louis Ustazen with a one shot lead heading into the final day. Second in the last two major championships that he has played PGA and the US Open, trying to win his second claret jug on a beautiful Sunday at Royal St. George's on the Kent coastline. Second, and Joachim Neiman was fortunate. He saw his ball pitch in that left rough. It's really thick to the left and right of the second. There's a lot of spots out here where it's, where it's juicy. Slight downhill live for Joachim with his second, and that just didn't get any stop. Just looking at the weather forecast, Tom, too, and at the moment it's northwest, so that breeze is to the right. It's going to change, right? Yeah, it, it's still not going to blow very hard, but right. at least it, it potentially should switch to the east. It's going to go. Well, I thought it's going to go all the way to the south. I think by this evening. So you're looking at what 180 degree switch for the for the last few groups. And as we watch Shoffley here, it's going to move as they play the final round. Yeah, well, if it does, that means they would obviously play. You know, if they turn and play 15 in, or 15, 16 will be then left to right, but 17 be 
back into the breeze. 18 will then be a left to right breeze, which uh, that will be, that'll be very different because they've had it the same direction uh, basically all week now. It can be a caddy's nightmare because as the wind switches, it's not going to be the same as it was on a previous hole or two where you've made notes as this is the way the, the wind is blowing, right? Oh, Adam Scott tried to catch that ridge and missed it. Mind if it landed hard on that ridge, it might have gone off the front edge. So the tide change is 12.25. Okay. So is that when that. the wind starts to switch? Uh, it, it kind of did look like that yeah, on the, well that's on good. the forecast. That would be... Uh, well, there we go, across the golf course. So I just noticed that how that third, because they've been playing the third basically into them left to right all week. And that was looking like it was a little down. Uh, here's the four. Himalayas, you can see Bryson's gone left. Semi-blind tee shot, they can see left edge, and you, so you know you can, you've got to fade it, get it over that right-hand side as far as possible, even though the right-hand cut is a great angle. Flag pushed all the way back, right corner, you know, guarded by fall off all down the right-hand side of the green. 85, 85 is playing, 85 is playing 75, and it's probably just a little over that. I think, I, think it's just, I think it's just a little bit, a bit too much for the seven. Even, even, if, even if you land this thing, you know, even around like the main, that's going to be on the flatter part of that. That's actually, yeah, that's coming out of here, don't worry, it's not going to hold it. It's like, you know, I'm like right into that birdhouse. So, Nick, you're right. The third hole is playing downwind, which means this one is also downwind for Reefy. Decent lie in this first cut. Sounds like he's allowing for about 20 yards of bounce here. Yeah. We're going to get our first look at, yeah, if the greens have firmed up a smidgen, this one it will be... Okay. That's going to be a good shot. That'll be a good play. Just If you just, just go off the back edge, that's... I would take that. It's much better than messing around with anything at that front corner. You know it's bad when you step away from your ball and you can't then find it again. I was going to say, that's always tough. I used to sometimes throw my glove down just to remind me if I had to step away sometimes. So I got, I got you playing this with 137 shots. Well, why? It's 144, 149, correct. And then you're playing three for the temperature and the air six and then 10 down wind. 10 for the weight. Okay. Three for the temperature? Yeah. Okay, 10 o'clock, uh, 47. I think they should calculate the yeah. elasticity in the shirt as well. And if you've got a shirt with a bit of spring in it, that's right got to it. affect yeah. you, don't you think, yeah. Tom? Well, I was going to say, how about the resistance of the different types of grass you're going through? Because I, I, well, I agree. <laughs> oh, we need to know. Are there, are there plenty of, I, I go with a lot of resistance on this one. It is sitting down, but it is such a short club for him. It's going to come out springing. He's going to try and get it up the hill. And it's, wow, look at this fella run. Wow, there we go. That was that. That's, that's nearly 40 yards of run. So that's, ah, uh, oh, Rose and George is coming alive. I need to bulk up a little more to, to have my shirt hold to, me to back. To feel your yeah, shirt you flexing. Can, yeah. While you, yes, I think you do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> English with his second at uh, the first, playing alongside Jonathan Thompson, who's knocked it inside uh, into the greenside bunker. With a name like English, you should get the right sort of applause for a shot like that. Especially here at Royal St George's, the patron saint of England. And Horschel for a birdie. Good spot to, to miss it today. Yeah, that's a great, and you just clamber it on to the front of the third. At least you've got an uphill chance with no real stress of uh, you know, wondering where it might go. That's, where are we here? Eighth green. Oh, whacked it into the face. Took a chunk out of the beautiful rebetted face. I was going to say, massive <laughs> chunk. 
He did well, though, really. You were talking about it yesterday where he pushed, pulled his hands all the way back. Hands were not forward. Had to get it up extremely quickly. Hit it close to the ball. Shuffly now for a birdie. Oh, tracking nicely. Double cut the greens. So they're a beautiful surface today. And look where he's aiming. to get down to the hole. I feel like the, the RNA were dealt a pretty tough hand at the beginning of the week with the amount of heavy rain that, that came through the south of England and obviously then went on to uh, parts, uh, other parts of Europe where they've had uh, horrendous situations and we certainly uh, send our best thoughts to everybody dealing with that in places like Germany. But the now you feel like they're getting the golf course to, to kind of where they want it to be yeah they were f they were fighting for a long time he wanted to get that the rough nice and wispy so you've got long fescue but it's it's kind of playable and after two months of rain they've obviously got a good six inches even to a foot of, of, of green thick green shambo's third obviously quite fancy in that one having taken the flag out Thompson was in the bunker at the first. Here's his third shot. What a great week he's had with the hole in one, and now he's chipped it in on the first. And a big roar, not quite as big as it was at the 16th when he made that hole in one on Friday. And he said uh, after the round, he thought his phone had broken. There were so many messages that came through. And just a wonderful week so far for him. Lovely, little lazy. Don't have to go thrashing away. And just use the absolute minimums on that one, wasn't it? Beautiful. Bryson's tapped in now. Shows Reevy for his birdie. Still haven't had a birdie today at the fourth. Only had uh, what 15 players now with Reevy. Tapping in, playing this hole so far. He's playing to an average of uh, 4.27. Now, Harris English to see if he can make birdie at the first. Just dove left after two good shots. But to play devil's advocate too, Tom, uh, the fact that we had so much rain gave everybody a chance out of the gate Thursday, Friday. And, and then the adaption as we watch Ricky here at the eighth. Do you feel like Lynx Golf only suits certain players then with when it's playing firm and fast? Yeah, I, I always found it difficult, you know, I've talked to, to Nick about this. I mean, just listen to him talking about Lynx Golf, the way in which he feels the shot. Just hearing some of the, 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 the players you can hear, they're almost still playing American style golf, trying to land it on a number as opposed to using your terminology, picking the shot. Yeah, it's, it's very important. Obviously, you can do so much with one club. You can cut the ball against the wind or you can ride the wind so you get a huge disparity between what you're trying to do. So obviously, picking the right shape, understanding the slopes, what it's going to land on, that's very important. Sometimes, obviously, it's landing short of the green. As Bryson loses it right. We've seen that a thousand times this week. That's, yep. a, that's the dreaded blind second shot at five. It is. I mean, down that right side, it is uh, completely blind. Really do have to buy into your target and the club too, because even though a lot of these players are player by number, um, there's still an element of feel involved. And in. if you don't buy into it, it's almost impossible to hit a good shot. It's just a fair way with there. This one flying high down the middle. too far left, but it is a little bit, yeah. No, that's, so that's excellent, exactly what you're looking for. Get a level with that bunker down the left. Tremendous scene, and uh, great to be 
commentating alongside two of this country's major champions in Karen Stopples and uh, Sir Nick Fowler. Frank Novello here with us, and myself, Tom Abbott, here in this final round of the Open. McElroy yep. hitting his day started off in uh, just over an hour's time. Tale of two nines yesterday for Rory. That's how he described his round, the front nine. There was a lot of energy out there, a lot of excitement. Maybe McElroy could make a move towards the top of the leaderboard, but the back nine, tremendous amount of frustration. And uh, it is not going to be McElroy's week. Now, the first after a good tee shot, Abraham Ansel. See if he can hit one close. This has been very gettable so far, especially off that little upslope. This will make a few, huge difference to his day, Frank. He hit in the right rough yesterday and opened with a seven, so uh, a lot happier to be there in two. Kevin Kisner out on his own uh, in the first game, trying to catch the lunchtime flight back to the U.S. He's sprinting round today. Yeah, last time he, last time I, we saw him, he was on the ninth, and that was <laughs> four minutes ago. I mean, he's zipping along. It'll be two hours for 14 holes for Kisner if he <laughs> knocks that one in. <laughs> to the first. Benjamin Hebert with his second. Pull below his feet here, Nick. Sometimes quite nice to be in that first cut. A little bit of softness under it, but you can see if you gosh, you just land it on the wrong spot, catch it these subtle little down slopes. That's the best you can do. Here's a 25-year-old from Rotherham in England. Sixty-nine sixty-five to qualify for this championship at Hollingwell, finished second in the qualifier. There are four venues in the final qualifying, three spots in, the three spots in each. And it's uh, still a tradition for this uh, championship, but it, the qualifying has changed over the years with the qualifying series, but still that chance for club professionals, for example, to get in. They still get over 2,500 entries just for that through the various stages. So you can and a five, six, seven short. Five, six, six short. Yeah, so we got up the live. Yeah, five yards short. Into the wind. Five yards short. Six yards short. I like the so, Okay, so that's 74. Yep. Then the wind. What are you doing? I'm at a 10 o'clock shot. Okay. And for minus three for all the temperature stuff, 171. And then um, what about for the uphill lot? It's going to play like 12, 13 yards. Okay. What's that? What'd you get for wind? That's what I was saying. 13 in total. With for wind and total. Yeah. 184. 10 bucks up. Oh, no, just no temperature reading this time. Oh, I feel he hasn't fully prepared. I think he's, uh, he's, got, he's got to concentrate more on this upslope more than anything else. And what you have to do to try and control the trajectory a little bit here. Otherwise, you end up ballooning into the wind. Down. Yeah, the 10 o'clock shot. It's uh, what about six minutes past. It's a bit late for that one, but it worked out okay. Easier hole location today at the fifth. Just a smidge, and you see anything right of it is a nice flat area. All about three of these feet from 171. Anything left. Not as good. Clean the strike there. Safely into the middle of the green. And a couple of birdie putts to come from this uh, two ball. <laughs> Long birdie 
dry for the Frenchman at the first. English with his uh, second to the second. When, when you're out of contention uh, at a championship, obviously there's a lot of money on the line here and world ranking points. But what, what are you, what are you trying to to accomplish on a day like this when you know you're not going to yeah, win? Yeah, when you're you're out of it, when you at a, at a major, you're definitely still trying as hard as you can because you never know. If you had a 64 or something, boy, you'd leave here thinking, well, that was great. You could really climb up. And you've had a, you've had a nice week. I mean, regular tournaments, you might even start experimenting a little bit and think you know, try a few things to to work you know into your swing but here you're still and you're gonna fight hard all the way to the 70 second green a little bit of pace in it that putt starting to run out a little more if watching the coverage you feel like they're quicker than they were two days ago yeah I, I think they have to be I mean they're drying out for five six days now This is for birdie at 14. Gets him two under for the day. I always, you always see when a player plays very quickly, usually their score is pretty good. It tells you something about uh, needing to spend tons of time figuring out every single shot. Well, this one's going to be hard to figure out for Lynn. Up and over the hill. Does it break? Does it go in? He's still got a shot at the low amateur. Started the day five back from Schmidt from Germany. Golf's oldest championship, the Open, the 149th playing. Louis Eustazen takes a one shot lead in the final day. Rivi here, a little downhill towards the hole, and I mean, this is a great opportunity for for him to try and get one of those shots back that he dropped at the second. Pretty simple looking putting stroke. Ricky Fowler has this for a birdie. Nice approach in here at the ninth, battling to get it back to four over. <laughs> when, when you get to, when do you think it's too old to keep, to wear the orange trousers? Oh, they're so last summer, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought it was about five years ago, to be honest. Bryson DeChambeau putting for birdie here. Karen, you grew up very close to this golf course, did you not? I did. I grew up in uh, Deal, so all those people that you went past driving on the way here as they were making their way to the beach, they were probably some people that I went to school with. That was always the big thing, head down to the beach as soon as the sun came out, even though it is pebbles, it's not very comfortable. <laughs> but, um, Bryson should have a good idea on what this putt will do from Reeves. And it gave up on that quick, didn't they? Did you play at uh, Royal St. Ports growing up? I did. I played at Royal St. Ports, and then Prince's is where I st actually started my golf. I hit my first ever golf ball there, learnt to drive a car on the big practice ground there, climbed over the fence many times over here, although I couldn't do it now because there's barbed wire on it. <laughs> yes, the neighbouring golf course is Royal St. Ports to one side and Prince's to the other. And just coming into the shot at the bottom of the picture will be Prince's and... That's Royal St. Ports there, isn't it? Sorry. I thought that was uh, Royal St. George's for the moment, but that's, that is Royal St. Ports. Yeah, there There's a little humpback bridge there. You might be able to see that little car driving in. Have you ever got it airborne over the uh, humpback yeah, bridge? every morning. And uh, <laughs> Lindsay you goes, oh, it just please, before you no, get to yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've, I've, missed, I've missed it every time. Thompson now for his par. Yeah. 
man who plays his golf on the Challenge Tour. So this is uh, a big stage for Thompson. Now Adam Scott for birdie. This is, this is impressive. Not sure we're going to see many closer than that today at the fourth. Well, that start. Now Harris English for his birdie at the second. We had the joy of hanging on for the seven-hole playoff, didn't we, a couple of weeks back, Frank, when he... Uh, Kept going on and on, <laughs> backwards and forwards, but uh, it was exciting stuff. Yeah, alongside Kramer Hickok, people stayed. They were into it. Eight holes in the end, right? Yeah, that's right. Eight. You're right. Second longest ever on the PJ Tour. Yeah, it's been an amazing year for Harris English. Turn things around. Two wins. Yeah. So looking at the sixth hole. Oh, wait, till you see they've tucked this one. Whoa, hey, keep going. Keep panning. Look at that right round. Another down slope guarding it. So if you can get it to stop by the back edge, that would be a great shot. Karen, did you ever get it airborne over the humpback bridge at Royal <laughs> St. Ports? Too many times to tell you, Tom. Happened a lot for me. And every day this week, actually. Quite fun. And then there's another little, little bump on that track that we drive through the old ancient highway there's another little bump there that's quite fun to uh, take that at some speed but I don't tell anybody I said that because people well, might get cross the driving too quickly sign you up for the RAC yeah, rally yep. <laughs> that would be fun. so you're talking about this hole and yesterday it played really quite downwind today the wind is more from the right if you're gonna hit a little fade it's gonna it's gonna help it stop a little bit quicker but I think the players you've got to be past this flag and a little bit left Go. this is really high Go. Oh. <laughs> only just Still going to have to deal with that, that ridge at the back of the green, though. Well, really, the only way you're going to make two at this hole today is by accident. I saw Yushin Lin make that one from about 40, 50 feet. And literally, you'd just love to ride a three down and run to the next, because look at the skinny green. You've got three, four different levels on this green. Yeah. You know, the bunkers on the right. You know, pitch it on a down slope. Still, please. We want to see it finish in between the, between the pan. Um, and Frank, you had in the wind direction to that as well. It's a nine iron. Really? It's sure also it high, a little bit left of the flag. Did you say a nine iron? Are you sure it hasn't got a six oh. on it? Did it give you the wrong signal upside down? Oh. <laughs> That's a great shot. Go back over to the first. Ben Arn. Sergio Garcia playing together in the final round here. The announcement coming very soon. This is game number 14. On the tee, from Korea, Byung Hun An. Ben Arn had played uh, quite a bit of golf on the European tour before focusing more on the PGA Tour. So familiar with golf over here. On the tee, from Spain, Sergio Garcia. Sergio off to a nice start with a round of 68 on Thursday, 69 on Friday, but 
Had a bit of a mixed bag yesterday. Birdied the opening hole and ma then made six at two. Uh, bogeyed the third as well. Three more bogeys in his round of 73. So falling back to level par for the championship. Looking to finish on a high note today. <laughs> kind of a signature for Sergio, the re-grip. Fiddling around. So game number 14 underway as we count down to that final pairing. Up ahead on the first, Armitage had a birthday on Thursday. Oh, Bertie would have been a nice way to start his Sunday round. Leaderboards have changed over the years here. Not too long ago, they were all manual. Now it's just the two on 18. Sit proud, rest or electronic. We'll go forward to the sixth, the par three. This part here, good price, and it's going to move a bit to the left. But in his feet, he's going to feel it want to go to the right. So initially a little bit right and then back to the left. at the first trying to get it back to level par for the championship man who's had great success on the European tour with eight wins in his career going all the way back to 2012 and then successfully defending this year in Denmark Nick, the, the signal was for a six. My interpretation was incorrect. <laughs> Happens sometimes with me. <laughs> but, uh, this is a great opportunity here. I'm not sure too many people will be able to get it too much closer. Should break left. spot to watch the golf there you can uh, sit up on the, the maiden hill and there's watch the day there's been some fun and games on that hill tom i've seen people sliding down having fun and everybody laughs when people try and hold their their refreshments as they're walking up the hill trying not to spill them and slipping as they go i think as the course of the day goes on that's going to be quite an entertaining spot oh i'm sure well, in this, in this well, look at that fella's hat. <laughs> <laughs> For starters, hydration is key. Oh, there'll be plenty of that. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Solid start for Bryson. The damage has already been done this week in terms of his chances to win, but still trying to. Get the feel in that golf swing. Now Reeve for a par. Needs to be a little bit aware of this one. It's going to move to the right, but just inside the hole. Remains a couple over for the day. Six at two, hurting him. Still looking for his first birdie of the round as they make their way to the par five on the front nine, the seventh. One par five on the back nine, the 14th. And we'll go back to the first. And Sergio Garcia getting his round underway. It's 
slight downhill line, just a touch. But I see the amount of loft on this club, so it's one of the wedges. Just shot out a little right. Not too bad. I wonder if his dad, oh, there it is. Dad Victor out there always takes a different club out there. It's either a putter or some sort of long iron or a wood on the odd occasion. This is at the seventh, and Richard Bland has a chance for an eagle. He was saying yesterday how he's really struggled getting the pace of these greens. Putting has been a bit of an issue for Richard this year, uh, this week. Going to take a bit of time off after the Open. Well deserved with the busy season that he's had and the successful year that he's had so far. Now back to the first, Ben Arndt. Me and Sergio actually played together yesterday. It's two and a half hours later. The field time's a little, a little earlier today after a great approach. Good chance to start with a birdie. It's a very busy shipping lane, the uh, English Channel. And this is where it sort of feeds into the North Sea in the corner of England. Pull up the left knee. Yes. This tee shot at seven is uh, a little bit easier today. Wind not quite up as much and really giving these players a great opportunity to get over the hump that's level with the right bunker and get down deep into this fairway. And this is hugging the left side. Great bounce as well. Quiet, please. And even when I, we've seen Bryson with the driver, he's not giving it the, the full Monty. It's still, it still looks like he's trying to swing within himself a little bit, even with the club. Revy. This one also a little bit down the left. It should be fine if it kicks right. No, I didn't get over the hill. Oof. Big advantage here if you can drive it over the hill at seven. Should be able to today with that slight wind direction change. First page of the leaderboard, 2.35 local time. The final pairing will head out onto the golf course and it will be a fascinating watch. I believe that's the uh, church that laid Lord Purvis climbed up to the top of the steeple to see this land and decided that here he was going to build Royal St. George's church in the village of Sandwich. Garcia for birdie. It is St. Bartholomew's Church. Been there since 1217. Does that make it a Viking? Is that the square top? The square turret top is I that? believe so. Yeah, I, I, I Brendan Steele, three under for his round so far, his second in the night. See if we get the right bounce. And roll. Keep going. Keep going. Chance to go out to 31. Now Benan at the first for a birdie. Yeah. The Vikings that land as they landed on the Kent coast yeah. and, and they stayed in Sandwich. They weren't very adventurous. <laughs> they landed on Pegwell Bay in, in 811, old chap. Remember it well. It wasn't called Sandwich then either. <laughs> it was called Pickled Herring, I believe, at that time. <laughs> and so now on the tee. Oh, that looks nice. Let's see the kick. It's a feisty one. It will, will it go up? Don't you dare. Come on, come on back. Here we go.
That's what can happen at the third, that backboard there. Usually you'd th you get excited heading a wedge into a hole with a backboard, but uh, when you're looking at almost 240 yards, it's a little bit different. Westwood off in uh, just under 10 minutes' time, just trying to get some feel there with the putter. What do you make of that drill? That's kind of the opposite to what you then do with the with the claw, because the, the idea of the claw is to maintain the your right wrist at the same angle. And you don't and don't have that little flip. So I guess he's just messing around, killing time, just warming it up. This is Benjamin Hebert for his birdie at the third. We saw. Answers lovely tee shot in there a moment ago. <laughs> and they're off to a nice start, these two. Brendan Steele has had a nice, good approach in here at the ninth. This is to get it back to one over par for the championship. Eight-year-old Californian, With three wins on the PGA Tour. Ah, jet skiing on the Channel. That wouldn't usually be advisable, but it's uh, just such a beautiful day today. Maybe they're trying to make their way to the Open. Answer for his birdie now at the third. A feeling this could be the only group. Ah, he had that for the half. I was going to say two twos. Tough to beat, you'd have to say. <laughs> when you get a day like this on the links, you just you feel so fortunate. It, I agree. It's gorgeous. I mean, it, it, it. There we go. The fans are here. They're loving it as well. That's the. Hospitality area, all the good old fish and chips. Got, got the merchandising tent as well. Was doing a roaring trade yesterday. Reef is already laid up. Put himself into a good spot. Bryson from 232. Really nice look at it from here. Pretty flat line. Looks like he was playing that back for this low one, but he's lost that out to the right a little bit. He gave himself an eagle try. Sergio Garcia now on the tee at number two. few groans from uh, the folks standing behind him there. And we saw Haki Neiman get away with it, and Sergio's kind of gotten away with that one. You see a lot of the golf ball, but he won't know where exactly that is. Oh, Jack Senior's hit it in the thick stuff down the left at number one. Yeah, just chopping back into play. Literally, oh, that's... Left, Still in there. it. Make it to the where it helped. Just avoided the dreaded thick stuff. See how quickly that just turned the club over. Now Veerman with his uh, second at number one. Good drive here. One. Maybe just a lull in the breeze, but it still indicates that. Uh, we on countdown. We've got another hour till the tide changes. But 
It's going to be a gorgeous day out there, that's for sure. It's a busy day of sport uh, here in uh, England, as you mentioned earlier, Frank, at the British Grand Prix, which is a big deal in, in this country. They said they might get uh, 100,000 people out at Silverstone today. 120 they've got. As Westwood makes his way to the first. Getting to the point of having the most majors played in the game without a victory, Lee Westwood. And uh, playing alongside the amateur Schmidt today, two very differing players. A player at the beginning of his career with high hopes and expectations, and a man in Westwood who's achieved so much, but still that major championship has eluded him and Everyone who follows the game in this country, I think, has a sense of willing Westwood to win one. Um, but he just hasn't been able to do it. Well, it's getting tough now. As you're getting closer to 50, then... Uh so, stopwatches at the ready. Two hours, 30 minutes. Well, they have a, t a tradition here um, at Muirfield as well, Royal St. George's, where you they play a lot of foursomes, obviously. And you play for two and a half hours in foursomes, alternate shot, for those of you that know it in that way. Then you go in and have lunch for two and a half hours, maybe a couple of bottles of wine. And then you come back out and play another two and a half hours for foursomes. If you can remember anything. <laughs> foursomes are always quicker, though. There's a man that's pretty good in foursomes, Garcia. His record in the Ryder Cup. Oh, lovely. Now 25 and a half points he has totaled in the Ryder Cup. Colin Morikawa begins his round one shot back, making his debut in the Open and trying to win it. Which is exactly what Ben Curtis did when he won here in 2003. It was his uh, first appearance in a major championship. And it was a surprise victory, that's for sure. We will write another chapter in the history of the Open and the history of Royal St. George's as the day unfolds here, as uh, Lee Westwood gets ready to play. It's been problematic this week, this whole slight dogleg right par four. If you took a straight line down the left side, 322 yards to run out. Just the majority just continue to miss this to the right. And Westwood ready to get his day underway in the final round of the Open. This is game number 16. On the tee from England, Lee Westwood. 48 years of age, Lee. And making his 25th appearance in the Open. He's made 19 cuts, he's had six top tens. He was the runner-up to Oosthuizen in 2010, but he was seven shots back. He finished third in 2009 and in 2013, and he had a fourth place finish a couple of years ago. Beautiful tee shot. On the tee from Germany, Matthias Schmidt. <laughs> Matthias Schmidt has uh, been very impressive so far, finishing up his uh, senior year at the University of Louisville. And now on one of the uh, biggest stages in the game. 
participate in the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Played in the European Open, the US Open, and the BMW International Open this year. Made the cut in Germany there, finished tied 14th. And he's made a cut in the major now with an incredible round over the week, 65. chance to uh, learn a little something from Westwood today. Jack Senior has uh, missed his par putt here. Still has a bogey putt to come. Now Veerman for birdie. Going back up the hill. Now at the second, birdie putt for Garcia. This one's got quite a bit of turn to the right. Oh, yeah. Birdie of the week for Sergio, but uh, just too many mistakes out there for the Spaniard. Senior to save Bogey, a man who got into the championship just a week ago through his performance at the Scottish Open for the Renaissance Club in East Lothian. Yeah, scrambles the Bogey. Could have been worse, couldn't it? That second shot out of the hay going left. DeChambeau's missed his eagle putt at the seventh, but he's got a chance for a birdie. Uh, much better showing today. Two birdies. One at the opening hole. The rest passed. So we're uh, just under four hours away from the final game going out onto the course. Louis Tayson and Colin Morikawa here in the final round of the 100. 49th open at Royal St. George's. The open first played on the 17th of October, 1860, a Presswick golf club up in Scotland. And played in accordance with the rules of Presswick Golf Club. Deshambo on the tee at eight. Digging it out, that bad lie on the right. tee. Wasn't the prettiest, was it? Make the game hard for yourself and you <laughs> give yourself a bad lie. Oh, gosh. Just following up on the Hogan discussion, a good friend of mine, Mike Clayton, was saying it was actually Marion where Ben Hogan, um, it was a seven iron he did not put in. There was no seven iron shots at Marion. Mike Clayton, of course, has become very uh, well known in the golf architecture world. He's excellent. Reeves tee shot at eight. Yeah, a couple of bunkers down the right. And actually, they're going to turn back slightly into the breeze. So eight would uh, be playing very different today. It's barely a puff, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's only a. You, you're out of puff after all those candles. I mean, it's just. <laughs> well, it, we, with COVID now, you know, the government said you're actually not allowed to blow your candles out. You have to just suck the air in. <laughs> well, they must be still burning then, if that's the case. <laughs> you could start a forest fire. Do you realize that? <laughs> yeah, well, it'll spread yeah but all the trees on this golf course, Frank, we're safe. <laughs> we're starting any forest fires here. Well, Westwood could start a fire, whip one in close, birdie the next. Never know. You got it. Starts here, right? Correct, Frank. This is the first. I'm feeling the three here. Oh, it's a good strike. Oh, wicked kick away from the flag.
A lot of players, though, I think inspired by what Phil Mickelson did, knowing that it's still it's still out there. He needed serious mental strength. That was what was so impressive about Phil because you know he, he dealt with all the, the negativity. He obviously, he had a formula because you know every time he had a poor shot, he stopped, thought about it, dealt with it, and then moved on. So it was uh, that was what was so was impressive for me. That was an impressive golf swing on this. Young lad. Yeah, two time European amateur champion, won in 2019 and 2020. Won last year by three at the Zurich Golf and Country Club. And then in 2019, shot 15 under, shot 63 in the third round at the Diamond Country Club in Austria to beat uh, Ewan Walker by three shots. Now Garcia on the tee at third. Yeah, Sergio has the ability just to you know, just tip it enough in different directions. He tried to tip a little drawer in there, and that's that is the shape. You, well, you can work both ways. You know, if you're a natural fade, you can aim at the flag and fade it into that that right of the flag for safety. Shambo getting ready for his uh, second shot. Uh, Karen Stuffles uh, texted me. We were talking about uh, two and a half hours, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. Here, foursomes, lunch, foursomes. Oh, yeah. She said, you got to remember, the two and a half hours of lunch is, is two and a half hours to let your waterproofs dry out because the days <laughs> are not usually like this. Very, very yeah. good, yeah. Got, got a drying room. Or, I, mean, I feel like it's going to jump a little bit. Yeah, I like 20 shorts. A long way oh, back yeah, there. 226. I'm just lean on an eight time. Ten thirty seven. Do you think he's got the train times as well as well? Does a lot of clock face work. This is what he talks about. How you know, imagine nine o'clock is parallel with us, ten o'clock bit longer, eleven o'clock. So he's trying to feel that's what he does, tries to feel using the clock face to for the length of backswing. That knuckled. Sit down. That means it's come Please out hot. Down. He's going to get a beautiful kick to slow it down. You'll have the train times figured out at Troon for any wake turbulence from the train going by that might affect the golf ball Velocity in the air. Velocity quite yeah. agreed on that 10th and 10th tee. What, what are you guys talking about? Sorry. <laughs> uh, Justin Thomas getting ready to begin his final round here in Sandwich. This is game number 17. On the tee from the USA, Justin Thomas. Justin Thomas with a round of 72 uh, to begin the week, past 70 here, of course. And then bounce back with 67 on Friday, over par yesterday, a double bogey on the third, and then turn things around with three birdies, but made two bogeys over the last four holes so back on level par for the open and look at that temperature 26 degrees celsius if you don't use celsius in your home country you're getting close to 80 degrees fahrenheit On the tee from the USA, Max Homer. Max started the championship with a double bogey on Thursday on this hole. As you can see, he's uh, played under par golf since then and has only had four bogeys since that uh, double at the opening hole. 
groans. And he's going to head into the thicker rough. He included a run here of bogey free goal from the second hole on Thursday all the way through until he made a bogey on the 13th hole on Friday. So Justin Thomas and Max Homer heading out for a beautiful day here at Royal St George's. Oh, we just saw Justin Thomas tee off at first. Remember, he shot 64-68 last two rounds of the Players' Championship to deny Westwood a win there. Yeah, Lee had that incredible run, didn't he, with uh, the performance at uh, Bay Hill. And Finished then, second there. Yeah, and then at the Players where it looked like he might be able to sneak through and win one of the biggest titles in the game. Garcia now for a birdie at three. Yeah, it took a great performance by DeChambeau to take him down at Bay Hill. Obviously, Thomas, that stunning weekend performance. TPC Sawgrass. I thought it showed the character here as we watch uh, Garcia tap in of Westwood that he had uh, he had made a commitment to play the Honda Classic, and he knew that he was he was out of steam. His, his game was not going to be there. He took his son to go and play uh, Augusta National on the Monday and Tuesday of that tournament week, then jetted down to West Palm Beach and uh, but he said you know I made the commitment to be here and I'm, I'm going to honor it even though you know I'm, I'm pretty much uh, exhausted from those two runner-up finishes and just kind of showed the kind of guy he is this is a birdie at the first for Schmidt <laughs> Billy Horschel now for a birdie at seven Caught enough of the hole. I believe a couple of birdies, a couple of bogeys so far today. And as you mentioned earlier, struggling a little bit earlier in the week with some dizzy spells, but seems to be okay now. Jack Senior, the second at the second, looking to bounce back after the mistake at the first. Spin back. Yeah, played it with a lot of arms, didn't he? You've got you to do that at times. You get such awkward little stances where your feet, which obviously affects your hips, so you've got to learn to better swing your arms uh, at different speeds uh, on links courses. Scott for a birdie at seven, trying to get away from him. Going great. Forward. It was a good camera angle there. You could see the top of the grip was at least an inch away from his chest. So cannot anchor if you're using that method can't touch the chest with the top of the grip there's the first and second as we zoom into the first uh, Rob Gunter up in the plane for us uh, as our cameraman You've got to be very used to doing that job because you get tremendous motion sickness if you try to look into a camera while flying around. That plane just flies around for about eight hours. I like chopping. Solid. So he's strapped underneath with the camera. Roll just like it did the other day, you know what I mean? But it's like Niner just goes along, which is totally fine. Okay. And if it comes out a little, yeah, if it comes out a little slower, then you're not going to have a chance. Listen to Max Homer. You're looking right at it. But that plane's going around all sorts of different directions, and you can say to Rob, give me 16 green. And the plane's turn around, and he'll find it straight away. When I first played here, you thought those three bunkers at, at the front of the green are too far back. But as soon as you touch the rough, how do you get on the green? You've got to fly those bunkers onto a downside, and that's exactly what happened. So it's, you know, beautifully placed uh, those three. And that 
They've actually tweaked some of the greens too, brought them even closer to the front to sort of garner a few more hole locations that are even closer to those now. Yeah, Justin Thomas with his second. Yeah, lovely. Right on the high point. So the man can really impact a nice bit of backspin, so gotta believe we're gonna see a good shot here. chance to, to play hickories for the first time earlier this year which was a great experience but the one thing that that I learned was it gives you an appreciation for the way these old golf courses were designed and the way they used to play the game back in the old days and boy do you have to swing with tempo don't you 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 pull down too hard it uh, your, your time is completely gone that's why you have to wait for it yeah, missed opportunity there after a bit of fortune from the second shot at eight for DeChambeau. Now senior for birdie at two. Yeah. Nice 70 miles an hour swing speed. It was perfect for the hickories. Didn't get, didn't get much bend in it. No, much, I didn't get a lot, lot, of, lot of torque, but not much bend. But if you ever get the chance to do it, I would I would encourage anyone to have a go with the with the hickories. It um, it's a it's a very different feeling, and it gives you a great sense of how people used to play this game many years ago when uh, these golf courses were being designed and built and now the links in the UK have become some of the most famous in the world and host of the Open. Take you through some uh, scores as uh, all of these players begin to get ready for their final day some of them will be watching the coverage here and others will want to keep their minds clear and be focusing on the job at hand because as we get down a little further you may say the chances are gone but likes of Brooks Kapka would love to throw in a round in the low 60s maybe put in a record number today and see what could happen Homer alongside Justin Thomas getting their rounds underway. They're on the first. And we shall head out there now. As as opening holes go, where does this rank, do you think, in difficulty at an open? I think it's pretty up there. I mean, Birkdale is pretty harsh isn't it between the, it's extremely narrow between the two bunkers left and right and like the saddle of the dunes um, but this one as we've seen this week you know anything left anything right the rough is obviously the major hazard and and always having a forward hole location so they're landing it on a down slope so uh, this is up there it's got their attention it's, and it's an awkward start how one as you as we're seeing two turns hard left to right and they've played it so right to left on a left to right wind, three days of the week. And then you've got the pretty brutal third. Fourth green is really awkward, and then five. Five has really sprung up this week to being one of the real toughies. So you finally get a break down six and seven. Zayden Hurt has been announced on the first tee as uh, he gets his day underway. 68, 72, 70 over the first three days for the South African. Yeah. On the tee from England, Ian Poulter. He always gets a big cheer here at the Open. Coming off the fourth place finish last week at the Scottish Open and this is 19th start in the Open. Three top tens. Of course, second in 2008 at Birkdale. Yeah, really humid this morning. You see from Porter's worked up in a bit of a lava. Like a 
practice day at Lake Nona. Yeah, you're drenched by now. Colton making his uh, U.S. base at Lake Nona in Orlando. Both, both of you. Well, Frank, you still have a uh, home there. And Nicky lived there. In yeah, Canada. I lived there for a while. I'm up on the north side of, uh, of, of Orlando now, up in Winter Park. Yeah, we kicked him out. Now, <laughs> oh, Thomas for birdie. Nice way to start the day if he can slot this home for a three at the first. No. Well, we could see the break from here. I'm surprised he couldn't. Bryson DeChambeau has reached the ninth. We'll go there in a moment. First, let's go to Westwood for a birdie at the second. Actually, a question to ask, Nick, too. The Feldo series, have they been compromised by COVID? Because no, we haven't. We haven't, Frank. We, uh, earlier this week at Brockett Hall, we had uh, 450 entries. How about that? So we oh, put on an extra course. We put on good old Wellington City, stepped up. So the girls went and played Wellington. We had 95 girls playing. And we managed to play a field of 375. So it's been a huge success. success. I mean, all our fields have been, you know, 50% up. The kids just dying to get out and play. You know, we deem golf is safe, healthy, and uh, it's, it's it's been yeah. I want to thank all the kids for all the support. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it's already developed a lot of good players. Maybe in a few years, more of them will be out there chasing the likes of Deshambo and Max Homer. I see attempts his par putt. Yeah, well done. Been going for a long time, the Faldo series. 25 years now. Yeah, I say, it was around when I was playing junior golf. There you about. go. R Rory started off in an Absolutely. Act. Rory was, uh, I had a, a little thing called Team Faldo for a while. I took the kids to America and Ireland and England. So, uh, Ricky brushing one in, but it's still in the plus numbers. We're trying to get back to, to the red. at the seventh and uh, Xander Shoffley for his birdie. Try and get a sense of how the golf course is playing today. So far it's averaging 68.13 from uh, the scores that have been posted. Now, bearing in mind not all the holes have had much play. Kisner's the only player to have played the last four so far. As we go to the ninth, and Chess Reeves second. <laughs> Wonderful shot there from Reeves, almost getting it to uh, spin back into the hole. There are some humps and bumps on these greens that you can use to your advantage. As we look at that first page of the leaderboard and we continue to count down to that uh, final pairing at 2.35 local time. So three hours and 35 minutes away from Louis Oosthuizen and Colin Morikawa heading out. And as we go back out to the first, it's uh, time to welcome back Alison Whitaker to the commentary box. And what a glorious afternoon. It is. Oh, it's still morning, technically. Been here a while. Second shot for Christian Bezadenhout at the first. I've never seen so many short sleeves at an open neck. With golfers' tans on them as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a fantastic day. I mean, any time England gets up into the 80s, close to the 80s, that's actually too hot for us because we, we don't have <laughs> too much air conditioning. So... Uh, just have to open up the windows, but it is a glorious day. The, the, the fans are going to love it. The players are going to love it. It's a kind of a, hopefully you have a great day on the golf course. Uh, 
inside and outside the ropes. It's uh, it, it's a special special memory. This spot of England. The front of that track, the left track, which is where you go, and is level with the front of the green, right? Which is. Which I think is this is right. I think you got to do this, mate. You're just hitting the other one too hard. 42 pin. Yeah. So I assume I didn't want to thrash a gap wedge. It's got to be pitching wedge. Get it on the down slow. And there you go. You've got the right angle and land it on the right. Oh, even so, it's still still going. But that's a nice shot. Start the day. Just cozied it on down there. Don Belay's uh, rejoined us as well as we see Poulter and. Zayden Hope stride toward the first green. Now, let's have a look how close oh, it was. Right on the top edge. Painful, Dom. Yeah, it certainly is. But hopefully he's far enough back from the lip, so he's got a relatively simple bunker shot. Yeah, Roy's got a bit more spring in his step today. The wind knocked out. It was going great. Four under through the front. I hit a magnificent shot into nine. Really brutal hole location. Made three there, but then the four, the bogey four on the 11th, in his own words, said just knocked the wind out of his sails and came back in three over, which was a shame. Just has so much more spring in his step when he's playing well. I was talking to a, a friend of mine that's a journalist about it last night, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it. That, you know, you, you talk about priming in sports. You see someone like Eri Jutanagan who smiles before she parts every time. You know, whether he could use that body language to try and spring himself on. Do you know, I, the only thing I could offer is when you're on the golf course and things aren't going great is to play. If you imagine you're playing one hole and it's a playoff, then you wouldn't, you'd never get down on yourself. Of course, you want to hit it down the fairway, but if you neck it in the right rough, you're not going to go, oh, I'm, you're not going to have a, a tantrum, are you? Like, okay, right rough. And then I've got to get it up to the green, and if it goes long, doesn't matter, I'm still in. So, you know, it may be, it, as we know, this game is totally mental. So you've got to just, in more ways than one. But that's sometimes a good trick to get you in the now time rather than ah oh, here we go again i've seen this and felt this before birdie miss there for dechambeau he's still two under par for his day and it's rory mcelroy up alongside sam horsfield the american-based uh, englishman And with the new scheduling now, it's it's a long wait for the next major championship. It's now nine months, isn't it? Whereas before it was, well, it was only eight months before. So still, for McElroy chasing the Grand Slam at the Masters. This is game number 19. On the tee from Northern Ireland, Rory McElroy. Winner at Hoylake in uh, 2014. You can see pretty consistent rounds of uh, 70, 70, 69. Made the cut by one on Friday. Went one better here on Saturday. But he had us going for a while. On the tee from England, Sam Horsfield. This will be a thrill for the 24-year-old. It's his uh, first open and out on Sunday with Rory McIlroy. Identical st scores through the first three days. A couple of times uh, 
after the restart last year, two-time European Tour winner. He's earning the stripes, Sam Horsfield. Made the cut at, uh, at Kiwa Island. Looking to go two from two in the majors this year. They're up and running. And you'd probably think some crowds might go with them. Yeah, after the great build-up on the practice ground, I think has some blocks of hair into the rough and knows what he's going to get. We've seen it before. It's seriously athletic, isn't it? You like the changes he's making? Yeah, I just want to see him shape. He's just got to get his little confidence up on whether the fade does fade and the draw does draw. And he, he, so many times stands up to hit the fade and pulls it a touch, tries the draw, blocks it, just just get it to shape, just get it to move. Poulter. Pretty slow putt, but it looks good. Oh, oh, the way. So an opening four for Ian Poulter. It's the third, the par three, pinned down on the front left today. Lee Westwood's there. That's a stat that, uh, that he's proud of. Lee Westwood, most major appearances without winning. Tied with uh, Jay Haas at 87. He said, That's been, that means I've had a really good career. And I've been in contention a lot. Said that before his opening round on Thursday. This for Birdie. Yeah. Excellent two. Lee Westwood. Very close to making the Ryder Cup team this year. They will be considered by the captain Harrington for sure. Didn't hit a particularly good bunker shot. That's a good 15 feet, maybe a bit more. Oh. That wasn't anywhere near it. One of the most consistent players. Hasn't missed a cut all year. No, Ricky Fowler, not far from the OB. It's going to go a little old school, a little bunt and run. Very nearly Bunton in. Down at the par five. Back down with uh, Rory McElroy, uh, the first. Yeah, hands on hips. <laughs> you can tell he's not happy with that straight up. You know, oh, because he knows. Yeah, he can give him a stiff neck, the thought of it. He knows that the best he can do. Let's get it on the back of the green. If he can even do that, he's even looking. I'm not, sh I'm not sure exactly where he's. Maybe he's just waiting. Sam. Nice experience for him playing day four at the Open with Rory. I remember that. <laughs> he has to avoid the cross bunkers here. That's imperative. Yes. Yeah, that's the important thing here, Nick. I think keeping it out of the big rough. Not good in those cross bunkers. Yeah, Almost yeah. guaranteed double. It's not much fun, is it, when it's kind of a bit of a hit and hope. It's the kind of chances if you can somehow get through them. 
around them, over them, anything. That just went. Came, oh my goodness, that's going to be. That one could. I hope they got a dozen eyes on that one because that. Well, they found it. Good, good work. They get a drop from there because behind the, uh, the scoring. Have a look at this from uh, up above. It just comes out almost at 45 degrees. I thought it was going to go in that mega thick stuff where that gentleman in red is who found the ball. So, uh, we'll see what the fate of uh, is of the life of uh, McElroy at the first here in a moment. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, but so often it's chipped that out sideways. It's only got wedge in from there. Anyway. It's just tough to put the reins on yourself, Sam, isn't it? When you've got a wedge in your hand, you think, I don't, wasn't expecting that was going to happen. Yeah. Fultz has to throw himself at this one to get it over the bunkers at 270. <laughs> there you go, beautifully done. He's played a big part in the life of, of Sam Horsfield as well, a mentor to the young lad who's uh, just a, a group behind. Up ahead on the fourth, Westwood with the driver. Five hundred yards today, and he doesn't like that. Yes. There's some thick stuff there. Too. Ooh, no. Oh no! Oh, oh! <laughs> We're everything. <laughs> We're on the roller coaster with you there, Don. Yeah, it definitely went from good, to bad, and then the ugly. You get it all at Royal St George's. Feesberger for his birdie putt. At the par three six. There it goes. The bogey at two. Gets the shot back there just four holes later. Here's another entertaining pair. He and his uh, caddy, Jamie Lane. Quite a fun listen. Both very jovial guys. Back down to one. Goodness. Wow. Well, assume we've got. Yeah, he's going to come round. Fortunately, it's for the immovable obstruction, the scoreboard. So our uh, man here for our rules from the RNA is David Bonsall. Can you talk us through uh, this one, David? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, the leaderboard left of the first green is a temporary immovable obstruction, TIO in our terminology, and he's able to go to the nearest point where he has no interference. And then we have a what's called a, a one club corridor, and uh, he then drops in the uh, next club length away from that corridor. So he will have no line of sight interference at all from that leaderboard when he's playing uh, to the hole. There you go. It's like the voice in our heads, David Bonsall, when we're <laughs> in situations like that. What you don't appreciate when you look at it from the air, you think, oh, Rory, it's a flat lay. But then you see Rory's six feet down in a hollow. It's got to come over that almost semi blind. There's mum and dad watching. And unfortunately, Rory's got to land it, if he can, on a downslope. Fortunate drop. Get himself a way better line than where it was. 
It will be a par putt to come for McElroy. This is Johannes Veerman. Doesn't get more difficult than this, is it? Downhill lay. Hopefully you know all about this green. Green's really getting like rock. But he's got it on to the up slow to slow it down. Oh, tremendous. That's pretty outrageous, to be honest. Yeah. Give a little pat on the back for that one. How ah, did you do that one, Guff? Well, he spent a lot of time in the gym over the last six months. I know that. <laughs> His wife bought a gym yep. in Houston. And he says he's been teaching there and doing a lot of work out himself. Yeah, a couple of hours of, uh, of coaching there a day. It's a great view as we zoom in. You can see the downslope. So it's probably the quickest putt Rory's uh, faced this week. Disturbance going on. Let's get settled. Maybe waiting for the second tee box or something of the like. I don't know. I thought Poulter was in front, wasn't he? He's already gone. Mm. The second. There, are you good? Maybe someone had fallen or not well. Okay. Respect, look back, all right. For a pretty spectacular four to start. behind him. It's been a little bit of a love-hate affair at the first hole for Rory McIlroy. Birdie, bogey, birdie, and it will be a bogey again today. Cheers, Rivi. Couple over par coming up the hill and comes feeds back the other way. Look at this. Oh, straight in the middle of the hole. Very similar line to Michael Royce, who have learned from it. Thunder Boros. Wouldn't have played in uh, in front of too many crowds this size. Sam Horsfield. He's an established winner on the European Tour, but this is uh, well, it's a bit of a, a notch above. In for a five, now the first. A disappointing start, but the writing was on the wall when he hit it into that right rough with the tee shot. 13th bogey this week. Luckily for McElroy, they were uh, matched by 13 birdies, at least so far this week. to hear the young kids out so many of these players you know in their 20s 30s they uh and a long way back as well they came they watched the open some some of them would have caught the bug here 134 left for Fino. Oh, beauty coming out the rock it's done well to get it that close but today Nicholas Yes, Sam. Ah, congratulations. 64 of them now. 64? Yeah. Wow. But the coolest thing is, um, 50 years ago today, my 14th birthday, I played my first round of golf. So how about that? So I just really? want to thank, thank the game of golf for uh, what it's given me. <laughs> Fantastic. 
to get your rail card next year. I've got mine. Yeah, have you? Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I get a bus pass and a rail card. And pension. Oh, I don't mind that. Oh, it's a good <laughs> It's a good <laughs> thing next year. I think the one from America might be a wee bit better, though. Van Donder finds the great Betty Pat now for Johannes Veerman up at four. There you go. They've had quite a, a transient life. Uh, the the Veermans, his, his younger brother was born in the Philippines. His younger sister was born in Thailand. He was born in the US. They've lived in China and Malaysia. And uh, now he's based in Texas. No doubt. Part of the reason why he, uh, he started his career on the Asian tours. Up to the second tee, Sam Horsfield. Lovely hole. You can see a dog, quite a big dog leg left. Can't cut too much off. It's imperative to get it on the fairway with this flag front right. Only three from the edge of the green, I think. Like all the youngsters now, he's got so much speed through the ball. <coughs> Hip clearance is so quick. Not as quick as this one. Uh, As, a, as it was going to be. Remember, he went back a, about 12 months ago, got right into his speed training, and, and that's kind of where his game took a little bit of a turn, trying to chase after more club head speed. We know who to blame for that. Now, Pilter at the third. Quite an accessible pin today. It's right on the front. This is right at it. Yeah, delightful shot. Beautifully played. To the first with Tony Finau's birdie putt. Yeah, similar to Poulter's one, maybe a touch longer, but slow at the end. Oh, Poulter's moved left a little bit, didn't it? Is that a new grip he's trying with the finger down, like Kepka? As he uses All it? sorts, yeah. He's actually might be a new putter today because he had the green grip on before, and he, at least he's getting the putter head a little closer to him, saying so you get the eye line. Because a couple of weeks or a couple of months back, it was a good six inches outside of the eye line at which we all were. And then you'd miss quite a few short ones, obviously, because you're on a different kind of radius. Not surprised to see him switch. He's had 30 putts, 30 putts, 33 putts yesterday. This man's got a tiny putter. I think it's only 30 inches long. Is it tiny or does it just look tiny next well, to he's him? He's a big unit, but yeah, it's. Honda from 12 feet. A unique swing, very strong. It's at miles, but you went to see three different coaches, and they all told them something different before. And they all told them something different to clear it. And he just said, But you know what, there's that much wrong, I'm just going to teach myself, and he has done ever since. And doing a very good job. Ben on. <laughs> Haven't seen much of him this week. Oh, good start to the round. This is on the putting green. Tommy Fleetwood, he switched the, uh, the checkered hat for the shirt this time round. Tees off in uh, just under 15 minutes. Out alongside Victor Hovland. Great pairing there. He might be looking for a, a new Ryder Cup pairing, Tommy Fleetwood. <laughs> I'm sure Molly Wood will be uh, making a, another appearance, uh, whistling straights in September. 
both of them just such versatile players though you'd think neck that you could almost put them with anyone oh absolutely i mean tommy's a great great character so you're right he could play with anybody in the team they've made life a lot easier at nine they put the flag just over ridge center the green so uh, Give the guys a break after yesterday. It's another gorgeous day. We've been spoiled so far this week at Royal St. George's for the 149th edition of the Open here in Kent. Just coming up to 11.30 a.m. local time. So we're at about three hours till the leaders go off. Let's go to Sam Horsfield at the second. Just flicking it onto the green. Still got to be careful of that right edge. Look at that. You can see it from here. It's a couple of yards right at the pin. It's going to run off. safely to the heart of the green. McElroy can probably afford to be slightly more aggressive. Or oh, just live, perfect <laughs> straight, is it too hard? It's very poor from there for McElroy. He's it's hoping not, that... It's just not quite happening for him. Problem is it's been going on for too long, Sam, with the... Uh, with the wedge play. It's now eight years once this tournament's over since he won a major. It's a long time for a man of his caliber. In Poulter, uh, three to get to two under par. Poulter's still a great putter. It's really simple, every square, square stroke. Making a little bit more right hand as he's getting older. Evil right hand. Yeah, it's just steady, steady down, boy. <laughs> Never thought of it when you were young. Now yeah, they all these flow beautifully together, didn't they? And then all of a sudden they're like, "What do you do that for? Why are you going? Why you got a mind of your own?" Is that how you got here this morning, Nick? Now I came past Dilsing Ports <laughs> and, and had a, there's a little bump in the road, a humpback little bump, which obviously I didn't realize how famous it was because I, I kept hitting it every day. <laughs> you know, you, even though you're doing five miles an hour, you can, you can still get airborne. That Port Sinks looks a beautiful course as you drive past it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I played it uh, early in the week, for very, actually very first time, played it on, played it on Wednesday, it's gorgeous. This is game number 21. On the tee from the USA, Brant Schnedeker. Another 40 year old with uh, rounds of 68, 68, 72. It's been around about four years uh, since his last major top 10. Just been sliding a little bit. On the tee from South Africa, Dean Burmester. Very strong player, Dean Burmester, South African. Big, strong boy, like a lot of the South Africans. And out with an iron. One mile an hour wind. <laughs> oh, and he's further back too. So I don't think even as strong as he is, he's going to get it to the green. 
Yeah, they build them big down in South Africa. There aren't very many diminutive South Africans. We saw this part earlier, huge swing left to right. McElroy certainly looks like he's giving it enough swing. No, he's not. That's almost three feet left. Good speed, though. Very difficult part. Three, two and a half, three feet left for his part. <coughs> Still scratching his head a little bit with uh, just a little flip wedge in at uh, two. That's the fifth green. It almost looks like a little bit of a practice area when you get out there. It's, it's so isolated uh, because of the split fairway. And it's suddenly flat as well, you know, the the, the lead in, you see the apron there is, is dead flat. And it's the f you think, oh, where did this hole come from? <laughs> Found the bunker off the tee, that's why he was there for two westward. But, uh, Lovely little pitch. Should get away with his par four. This is no tap in. Snaps it in the left side. Can't be easy playing a, a major championship when you're fighting your golf game a little bit, Sam. No, oh, absolutely. And he's mid-change as well with Pete Cowan. He's waiting for it to bed in. Trying to take his hands and arms out of the, ga out of the game and just swing with his torso. Let the arms follow. Just seven minutes away now. I've seen a couple of people wait until just the last mo moments to get over to the I could never do that. I just, just start to freak out a bit. Yeah, you calculate your time. You, you know, you, you know it's going to take you a minute to get across yeah, there. But yeah, you're really Yeah, just a hair, mate. They, have a, they all have their own little routine when they start their walk to the first tee. Oh, Horsfield looks like he's aiming a little right, maybe trying to turn one over. Pump it just short of the green. Is it too much. <laughs> Played its uh, longest yardage yesterday at 245 today, 227 yards, the third. Yeah. And on the front, that's why. Rory will maybe try and fade one in there because if it doesn't happen, it will at least kicks to the right and you've got a better angle for your, for your second. Yeah. Yeah. He nailed that. It's got to be good, is not it? Oh, sure is. Go up, come back. Uh, just pure, isn't it? I mean, when he hits a shot like that, it's just a joy to watch. Does he have a stock shot at, at the moment? Uh, good, good point. It was always the draw, and then he's worked the fade in a little bit more. Um, bottom line, he likes to work it both ways. Taken for Finau at two. Very nice. Bottom line, that I'm not 100% sure which one he's got the most confidence in. If he needed a couple of fours down the last two holes, I'm not sure if it would be a fade or a draw right now. Which is not great, because it, you really need to have something you know you can hit. Bermist has had his troubles. In, he's over on the left rough now. Second shot there for Snedeket, in high left. 
We'll have a little bit of that ridge to contend with. I wonder if they know we're watching. <laughs> it's always dangerous, especially with someone like you, Sam. It's the bunker cams that I hate. That's the one I hate. First time I saw one was at St Andrews, the rod on that. Up. I so wanted to hit it with my club. How dare you watch me in this bunker? I'm suffering. Leave me alone. But they're great for us. Fantastic to watch. It's just such a big production here. I guarantee they don't know we're listening. No, that's what I was just just to, I'm sure they're not happy there's a mic there also. You've got to be careful. If you play with somebody you don't like, I can't believe I'm playing my hand yeah. today. <laughs> could be quite revealing, couldn't it? There's the punting green. It is not far away from the first. Yeah. Victor Hovland coming through now. Great talent, Nick, isn't he? Yeah, amazing. Really is. And he, you know, he talk about learning fast. Always got a you know good attitude, good demeanor. Keeps trying. appreciation from the crowds putting back for birdie now is Tony Fee now feels like you know, it's been a long week for Tony he was a couple of under day one and, <laughs> and, he's, and he's been on that whole journey and still just a couple under no mistaking who this is look at those arms it's rigid but it's a beautiful stroke He's getting a lot of help with the pocket strapped to his arm. And having a severe look at that, the rules, people. Third birdie of his day. Back to level par for Bryson DeChambeau. And here we have the world number 14 in Hovland alongside the world number 35. And last year's, last time's runner up. Uh, Royal Port Rush, Tommy Fleetwood. Both start their day at two under par. This is game number 22. On the team from England, Tommy Fleetwood. <laughs> Three under on day one, one over on day two. Level yesterday. Oh. It looked like he was going to be a contender two weeks back at Mount Juliet at the Dubai Beauty Free Irish Open. Ended up just inside the top 20. On the tee from Norway, Victor Hovland. The first Norwegian to win on the PGA Tour, the first Norwegian to win on the European Tour. That happened by a two-shot victory at the BMW International just last month.
pulled out of the US Open because he had sand in his eye. That's down the right hand side for Victor. Kent's police are, are looking after the opening hole, the, uh, the spotters out there, keeping everyone in line at the same time. They're very busy too. Those guys down the right side of this hole, <laughs> they have wrong. eagle eyes. Uh, one of the best putters in the game. Just love this rap stroke, just a little pop. Gets the ball rolling beautifully. Another birdie chance for McElroy. This time at the third. Saw the shot in. He stepped it in. One of each in the first three. Level part. So Burmaster in the rough on the right, then the rough on the left. Got it to here in three. So long power putt. Left it short. Sergio Garcia. Here's Birdie at the par five. I wonder if he's still putting with his eyes closed. You can never really tell, can you, unless you ask him. But he's been putting with his eyes closed for a long time now. If we go for a close-up late in the round. I used to close my left eye. So I couldn't see the hole. It worked for about a week. <laughs> So why did you not want to see the hole? Because I actually made a much better stroke with it. When, I, when yeah. I saw the hole, I, I kind of turned and looked at it. it. Yeah. But when I got within two feet, I could see the hole, even with my right eyes. I had yeah, to turn yeah. my head and look over oh here somewhere. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you can see why I went gotta, to the long putter. You've got to face your fears, Sam. <laughs> I tried. Trust me, I tried. Uh, Louis Hustes, and he's going to be doing that today. A winner here, 11 years to the day ago in the open and that was it st andrews six major runner-ups since then it's a, a big day for uh the likes of, of someone like dylan fratelli who is another one of the pack that uh wasn't even in the field until monday when he replaced uh his fellow countryman in louis diaga There are so many names of interest on the leaderboard this week. I don't think we're going to get that uh, that outsider that we saw back in 2003 when Ben Curtis took the title at Royal St. George's when he was ranked 396th in the world. He was making his major championship debut that week. Took the title by one shot over Vijay Singh and Thomas Bjorn in the end. Victor in a area very close where Rory was just a few moments ago. He can actually see the back of the ball. That is a real result. But even the best, that's the best they can do out of this stuff. Pretty long drive from Tommy. I think it's the longest we've seen. Where are we? We're still this morning on <laughs> countdown to to noon here in England. And look at that. We've got a heat haze. Wow. Maybe Tommy can have a hot day. Definitely can get some spin. Oh, and he busts it. Got a flyer. for Polter. He 
sweating up in the paddock. Hot day out there. It's warm in the sun, it really is. Went for a walk when I stepped out. Really lovely to hear the cheers erupting from different parts of the golf course. It's the sound we've missed to Horsefield at four. Here is the uh, second shot. And he's pulled a couple this morning. And that, oh, that'll be top side coming down the hill. Not his best, avoids that. That wonderful natural blowout there. Look at that sand. Lucky that they didn't sneak that closer to the green, otherwise this hole would be even more brutal. Ian Poulter made his, uh, his putt, coincidentally, in for a five. Rory McIlroy now. Yeah, it gives it a bit more speed at the four to get over the ridge and try and get some bite, and that's long. That actually flew all the way. Got to be careful, out of bound fence, not too far off the back of the green. That's why Rory is concerned. It's only about six paces between the back edge and that fence. Second shot for Tony Fee now. Need a chip in from somebody. Victor's long putting uh, routine or his cadence to the to the stroke. Lovely tempo, lovely. This gives it like an equal amount backswing follow through. That's one, two. One, two. And holds the finish. That's always good. Don't recoil it. Got a pretty good record in uh, all six of his majors so far. I think he's been inside the top 30, 35 in every single one of them. There's Mackenzie Hughes arriving at the golf course. Around about two hours and 15 minutes from now. Hughes currently in a share of sixth place alongside Ram and Fratelli at minus seven, five back. Let's go to Fleetwood at the first. You can see the ripple in this green. Went down, up, and back up again. They flatten these greens out. When you see it once, at, right about sunset, when the sun gets low, it really shows it off. All of the undulations on the fairways and the greens, to be fair, some of them are quite severe. I'm trying to decide whether that shirt would bug me on my backswing if I saw all those. Now, seriously, because you look down and you make you get your left shoulder come under your chin, you suddenly see all those checks and stripes, and I don't know, I don't know what. If I was having a bad day, Frank, I think that would put me off. You know, I think I'd have a... No, nothing would put you off. <laughs> no, don't be silly. You wouldn't wear it. What about those Lylan? Was it Lylan Scott? Oh, no. Pringle, oh, Pringle. Sorry, harsh. Pringle, Pringle. Oh, a dagger to my <laughs> heart. Oh. Oh. I was Pringle of Scotland. It was great <sighs> with my intarsias. Oh, I look, I look grand every day. Frank Nobolo back in the commentary box. Thomas Bjorn as well alongside Nick and myself for the next little while. So opening pars for Fleetwood and Hovland. Let's have a check from uh, the International Space Station where Rory's ball ended up. We zoom in. Not far, was he? He only had a couple of yards to spare. Oh, and he's in there. Cabbage again. Really got to open the face because if it shuts, you could miss the green left. Yeah, he had to bail out over there for a bit of safety. If that come out hot and, as I said, shut face, easily would have gone off the left-hand side. 
He looked completely deflated yesterday when he finished. Well, I, I, not so much better today, Frank, as well. You know, opening tee shot straight into right rough, takes a five. Wedge shot at two is very long. So once again, it's like, oh, come on, get it closer. It was four under on the front side, three over on the back side for McElroy yesterday. Second shot at 18 for Fowler. And Thomas, it looks like he's going to have his best round of the championship. Yeah, it's nice to, to see that he's starting to show a little bit of form. I mean, this is obviously not what you want as great a player as he is, but he's starting to show a little bit of form again, Ricky Fowler, which is nice. DeChambeau down the right side of 13. Pretty handy. Looking for back-to-back -back birdies. He's maybe getting back into red numbers for the first time in a while. So Sam Horsfield, you saw him pull that second shot high. Next one's gone down the other side. And now he's come come back up again. I mean, it was he cannot appreciate the slope in this fourth green unless you've seen it. I mean, the, the high point on the left side to the the lowest point somewhere on the right. It's got to be close to six feet. Certainly in the hollow from top right of your picture down into the, the hollow in the mid front of the green. That really is six feet, maybe even seven. It's like find the. Uh, must be fun finding greens out on the links like this. You you wander through the dunes and then you think, ah, oh, that look at that and clean it all up and prepare it and. Uh, we love it, old school stuff like this. Rory doesn't like that one. If you design them like that, uh, like this now, I think you're on a loose agenda. Yeah, really. you're right. If you did that now, they'd, they'd scream. But you know, you have to say, hey, this was this fellow's 130 years old, plus. Yeah. Thomas, you should be doing that then. <laughs> Do you, want, do you want me to kick him or hit him? Yeah, I can uh, give him. A, I can start give him a, with a kick. And I can we'll give him a straight, from there. straight left jab for you. Oh! I'll be the bouncer. Down the second is uh, Victor Hovland. That iron off the tee at the par four. He takes it back a smidgen on the inside and comes back a smidgen on the outside. That's how he gets his fade. Unbelievably strong. You should go on YouTube and <laughs> see some of his leaping about exercises and then go and try them. And, and then you might be recovering for the rest of the day. But he's another bent lift armor at impact. McElroy makes his five. We're seeing more uh, more patterns amongst the golfers, the bent left arm, the bowed left wrist. I remember Sam Torrance said, he said went back here in 2011 when he saw Dustin Johnson, he said, that guy will never make it. <laughs> we go up to the eighth hole, Ben Arn. This is for birdie. Breaks on that. Went left, he went right, he went left, and then right at the end. Ricky Fowler at the last. This for 64. It was a colourful day. Two bogeys, an eagle, five birdies. And that's going to be a round of 65. He gave him a hard time for the orange strides, but maybe he should wear it all four days then. You know, 65. You're taking four of those, wouldn't you? Best round of the week came on Sunday. I don't want to say it, but Nick Fowler was my fashion guru when I was a kid. I was wearing those Pringle jumpers as well. Wow. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, were they? Two peas in a pod used to. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. As Vernon makes another birdie. Yeah.
who's coming in now. That's Jordan Spieth. And outright third place. Just under two and a half hours left. I, uh, my badge is in my golf bag. And I don't think he's driving that thing down the, the Kent uh, <laughs> lanes because he'd be scraping the edges. <laughs> he just talked his way in there as well. The badges in the bag. Have you, have you guys tried that trick before? It, it doesn't really work when you're in broadcasting. No, I was trying to get in the other day. They wouldn't let me in. They don't let you in with a badge, Frank. Yeah, good point. <laughs> So as uh, the final group start to arrive on the golf course, we wonder what kind of day it's going to be for those three at the top who can launch their name into the mix as well from further down. T. McElroy is just going with the iron here. Really no chance of carrying the dunes in the middle, so just iron into the, into the fairway. Just a little plateau there you want to get the ball on. That's about the only place you can see the green from. Oh, a little more. A little more. It's Left. Coming down the right. And that's yeah. perfect. It's a cool little hole. Over there on the fifth, they've uh, redone the wasteland over on the left side of uh, the approach at five. There's McElroy and Horsfield in the bottom right. Two ahead, Westwood and Schmidt. Fleetwood and Hovland back on at the second. And that's where we'll go now. Cannot go right here, otherwise it'll fall all the way off the green. Sensational shot, took it on. Thomas, just looking at that second green, were you one to like put a, a cross in your yardage book, say don't go there, or you preferred your caddy to say, to give you a, a direction to go somewhere else? Uh, you definitely have. Anytime you look in your yardage book, you would want to have the no-goes. That's the, that's the way I did my yardage book. Always the no-goes, make sure, so you had a visual of what I can't do, and then you commit to your shot from there. Now, Fino couldn't afford to leave it short there. Excellent shot. He put a, a, a big green tick next to the pin. That's where he hit it. That's the thing that, you know, such good golfers, but they, they play for their misses, don't they, the, at this end of the world rankings. Good bit of bother here for Tom Fleetwood on the second. It's all a stab. Let's get it up there somewhere. He's done well. He's done really well from where he was. Giving himself every chance of getting up and down for par from there, Fleetwood. Let's go back to the first tee. You heard the roars, they were arriving on site. This is Brooks Kepka out alongside Ryan Fox today. This is game number 24. On the tee, from the USA, Brooks Kepka. Should be bringing out a new single soon. I, I love my driver. <laughs> the remix. Got it to five under par but through two like, rounds. But uh, sorry, but I don't like my three wood. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the second song on the album. B side. On the tee, from New Zealand, Ryan Fox. There's not many of us, so I might as well cheer for him today. Good old Kiwi boy. Wow, this is going to run. Got a good ball flight for Lynx Golf, doesn't he, Thomas? He really does. I mean, he's, he's really had a tough year off the golf course with all his COVID restrictions. He found it extremely difficult. 
but he's got his family over in the UK now and, and in much better mood. He's got an apartment in London that they'll uh, be using as their base. Up ahead at the green, Antoine Rosner trying to save his part at the first. off the tee for the Frenchman. McElroy now at five. Oh, well, he'd be feeling good because finally got it on the upper plateau. But he's fanned that one up into the breeze. One of the more whimsical holes on the golf course. It's really become a, quite a character this week. It's uh, in the past downwind. It's just a Five iron to the top of hill and a, a little chippy nine, but uh, it's been a brute this week. Taylor Gooch to get to three under par, just misses on the left side for an opening chance. Down short of the green at two. Tommy Fleetwood hacked it out to here. Yeah, up the hill. Gotta be a bit careful with what he's put always. When you see that slope behind, you just get a bit tentative. That was way too tentative from Tommy. Now at the par five, seventh, 48 years of age. Still got the firepower to reach the par five and two. Ooh, took a little bobble off the face. Good enough to go in. about that from Lee Westwood and Eagle. Westwood back into red figures. Tommy Fleetwood trying to save his par here at two. Four in the end, given where he was, given the lie he had. Pass the pin at four. Tony Finau for his birdie. That's assertively done. Two in the first four holes for the American. Yeah, that was a different different tempo. So obviously uh, trying something new today. Brooks Kepka yeah. at the first. This is when you find out how you know, how useful all those 225 pound bench presses have uh, <laughs> been working for you. Oh. 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 Wow, I'd say pretty darn That's good. Oh. As best you could do, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, it's downhill, it's fast, it's. Uh, going to end up there, but at least he managed to keep it on line. <laughs> Muscled his way out of that. You can see his top 10 finishes in the, the majors. Last 14 appearances. There's 10, previous 15, just the five. This game's gone up a notch. One of those players that kind of adopted the mind frame that the major weeks is really only maybe 20, 30 guys that he's playing against and shorten the field. At least from his mind, Frank. You see there in that close up of the ball. Okay, perfect. Is he coming out of that lie? He's probably quite hot as everything has this way. Okay. It's all right, isn't it? Yep. He's just described that light down a little bit, so potential for a flyer here. Yeah, difficult to create any spin there. Going for safety for the middle of the green. for birdie on the second after that glorious second shot. A bit left to right on this one. Up a 
run out of it. So important to stay in those pots. Never get your head moving up. The blade just goes open and then you've missed it before you even started. From across the green at five, Rory McElroy for his birdie. An unlikely one. It's got the pace. <laughs> Playing alongside uh, Lee Westwood, who just picked up his eagle at seven. Can Matthias Schmidt equal the feat? Yeah! He matches him, blow for blow. Both one under par for their rounds, both one under the card for the event. Well and truly getting that drop shot back at the third. Nice there from the German amateur. Now driving iron. Oh, pretty late on that one. Down in the divots. to the first green with Fox and Kepka. Brooks has gone long into that little gully. <laughs> do you think, Nick, that this feud that everybody talks about, do you think that's gotten a little bit to both of them this week? I don't think it got to Brooks, to be honest. I think Bryson's probably the one who's felt it a bit more than any, than he compounded it with his own comments about the driver, so he's been kind of walking around gingerly trying to make friends with everybody but I don't know how it's either good entertainment it's well, they're trying to win social media points But to be brutally honest, I mean, there's mutual respect amongst all the players, but it's it's just unrealistic to think that everybody's going to get on. I think, you know, you've got to stop deceiving people and you know, just say these people are trying to compete. So, so he is a beautiful ball striker. Didn't quite climb the hill, but it's a good spot, though. Into the front edge of the green at three. This for par for uh, Rory McElroy at five. In it goes. He stays at level. So he'll head to the par three sixth hole. And we'll go back to one the game of Brian Harmon and Justin Rose, both uh, three under par, ready to get their afternoon started. This is game number 25. On the tee, from the USA, Brian Harmon. Got off to a hot start. In the first round at 65, two rounds of one over at par 71 since then. Finds himself currently nine shots back. <laughs> Had some good finishes uh, in the spring. A couple of top fives snuck inside the top 50 in the world. On the tee, from England, Justin Rose. Forty-year-old who was part of uh, that big runner-up group in uh, in 2018 at Carnoustie. At this, uh, the Open, where he announced himself on the world stage.
just saw that wind direction. Uh, things are changing quite considerably. Uh, first hole was basically going left to right all week. Now it's slightly right to look into them. Stride down one. We're up and running now in the afternoon of the Open at Royal St George's. Up on the first green. This is for par for Kopka. from the long grass. Down in front of the third is Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah, it's a nice accessible pin, this. You can pretty much hit it all the way to the right-hand side of the green. It will come round, camp around towards that flag. Should be good enough for three pars to start. Up to six, the other par three on the front nine, and McElroy. Yeah, completely different test. Flag way back right. Middle of the green is good with a little fade. Oh, there's the spot. You can feed in that corner. Actually, highly unlikely. It kicks it in every direction away from that. Uh, so that's about a pretty darn good shot. There we go with that. Hang on to that right wrist angle. See how we, we call that holding off. Pretty stylish and super, super slow mo. Not bad with the pine forest of people in the background as well. Putting back towards it is uh, Victor Hovland at three. On the way for birdie. Well, he's had a couple of decent looks. A little bit of a recoil there. Nice length of backswing. Just sort of shorten it up. Didn't quite flow through. Catch up with Westwood. He's got a nice look at the green from here. Lee Westwood. Standing up on this fairway, hitting down. Beautiful green. Link screen is sitting into the dunes. He's coming off an eagle there. And the last, this will come off from the back down. Beautiful. That's how we play Link's goal. Some nice symmetry from there, from you there, Thomas. I saw that. Birdie part for Bryson DeChambeau at 14, par 5. It's a different day. That's three on the bounce. For DeChambeau, five under par for his round today. Birdie part. Now for McElroy at six. He's made his way down to the green, stalked it, ready to roll. They're ready to cheer behind him. are a very animated crowd this week, especially when it comes to Rory. Oh, yeah, everybody, everybody's pulling for him. Second shot for Brian Harmon at the first. Found the short grass on the right side. Where have that wind directions changing is this this should stop making his uh, his fifth open appearance best finish was uh, just outside the top 25 back in 2014 royal liverpool
Nearly two hours before that final group tees off. I can promise you all these players are thinking, you know, starting three under, but you can shoot seven under, get to ten under the day. I mean, it's might not win, but it could, could get you in the top half dozen. Now, you should learn we'll have to knock this in. So he'll stay at plus six, and at the moment, Schmidt is one under. So Looks like he will not win the silver medal. Round of 71 to finish for the 20 year old from Beijing. Still a major weekend for him. What a buzz. Kupka found the second fairway. What we want to do, we talked about it earlier, just want to go left of this flag. There is nothing to gain by going right of it. See much of it from here at four, Tommy Fleetwood. Just the tip in line yes, of the TV tower. You're right. It, the, uh, the little high society green heist there in the garden is perfect spot. I think you saw Rory go with a big bounce. So that's just about going to hang on to the back edge. Yeah, super shot. In a little stretch of the golf course where you kind of need to walk up some hills to see the lay of the land then go back to your second shot let's go up to eight in the meantime with westwood's birdie yeah. three under in the last two and there he goes to two under par chip from the back edge to hear tony fee out be a drop shot at the fifth. It's going along so nicely. Still one under par for his round so far today. Game 26, they're about to get their announcement. An all English pairing of uh, Matt Wallace and Aaron Wright. Both multiple winners on the European Tour. Two very different styles of play and of thinking, to be fair. Excuse me, sir. This, this is, is game, game number 26. 26. On the tee, from England, Matt Wallace. of 70, 68, 69. Consistent play from, uh, well, you can call him the fiery, fiery Englishman, I guess. He's only fiery with himself. He's a bit of a late bloomer, Matt Wallace. Coming in his third Open Championship. On the tee, from England, Aaron Rye. Two-time winner on the European Tour. Steady progress through the scores. 70, 69, 68. The man that took down Tommy Fleetwood at the Aberdeen Scottish Open in October last year. Oh. 
playing his first ever Open Championship, playing his first ever Open Weekend. He finds the fairway at one. Yeah, they'll set off nicely, these two. You, difficult to come across two harder working gentlemen on tour than these two, that's for sure. And Ryan might just outdo Matt Wallace on that front. Which is saying something. Brian Harmon up ahead at the green for his birdie. Yeah. Nothing but Matt there. He moves to four under par. So will this, this fade work for Victor? Nope. It has, hasn't it? Has it ever? Two great shots in to the fourth. Fleetwood as well. Past the pin at the opening hole is Justin Rose. This to match that birdie of his playing partner in Harmon. How do the greens evolve uh, throughout the day here, Nick? They, they've been running so true all week. They don't, they've looked fantastic, haven't they? I mean, they double cut them last night, and the uh, firmness is up a half a dozen points. So we're actually to one, one, two, three on their uh, scale. So yeah, that's, and you can see that the color is just changing a little bit. I mean, this is this is perfect uh, link setup right now. Sandra Shoffley going along uh, nicely today as well. Up to birdie at 13. Four on to par. Minus two for the event. Oh, Tommy Fleetwood. Right to left putt here on the fourth. Oh, I never got that up on line. Started it left of the hole. Stayed there. He's not quite finding his his way to be the one that we saw a couple of years ago, Tommy Fleetwood. A bit of work to do. Long one for Sergio at ten. Oh, finds the bottom. So Garcia is out thirty-four. So he's two under for his round. Two under for the championship. Yeah, that group going along nicely, playing alongside Ben Arn, who's also three under for the day. Bogey free. Hovland, three feet left for his birdie at four. Makes no mistake there. First birdie of the day. Well, the man on top, he's already got a claret jug. Back in, uh, I think it's back in Florida at the moment. He took it back to the farm in South Africa. He says he's been quite boring with it. He wouldn't mind another, though. Louis Oosthuizen. He's had a runner-up in every single major around the world since that win in 2010. Can he get across the line today? He's going to be playing aggressively. He says we'll wait to find out. with the softly spoken Aaron Wright at the first. Just on the right edge of the fairway. Well, there's literally no wind right now. That flag. Pretty much straight down. Great shot attack today if, if that's the way it's going to stay. Started playing with, uh, with two glo golf gloves after playing in the rain when he was, I think he was eight years old. And he liked the feeling so much that it stuck. Matt Wallace from the first cut.
works a lot with uh, with Liam James, who's part of the Robert Rock Academy. Liam uh, probably gets out to attend more, and then you see him more on the range just because Robert Rock's often playing himself. There's quite the presence on tour. Brian Harmon is off the tee at two. Position A1 at the corner. Roy's had a great drive down the seventh, par five. Jostling over there. And Justin Rose with the driver as well in the second. 270 to carry those bonkers down the left. Just having a little look down the right hand side. It's going to hang on. And nah, that's okay. Plenty of camber on these fairways. Next to the course now is Colin Morikawa. It was a great round he put together yesterday. He's two over through five, but came home with uh, with four birdies and a 68 in the end to draw within one of his playing partner today, Louis Oosthuizen. Well, that's a first for the week. Got one of those in your backyard, Frank? Uh, I've got something pretty close, but um, that one can... What if they can get to France? Wouldn't be that long, would it? You can Across yeah. the English Channel? No, I think you can actually see it from the beach some yeah. days in this part of the coastline. <coughs> Might get a bit bumpy out there. Yes, hubby taking his uh, missus out for a little one there in the harbour there. Have a look on a beautiful day like today. Go around Pegwell Bay. Nice. Bring the sunblock out. Gorgeous. Good day to be on the water. There's a good hole to be on the fairway, though, the second. Especially with a flag on the right. It's just got to keep it. Where have we got this breeze now? A little right to left. So if you want to be really brave, but take it down the left hand side of the TV tower. Gritted teeth. That's okay. On the tee, from the USA, Lanto Griffin. His first ever Open Championship. Gosh, there's some names this year that uh, have popped up the world rankings. He's uh, number 75, but, you know, with the two-year gap between, you feel like they're household names, and they're teeing it up in the very first Open Championship. Tea. From England, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Oh, hold the phone. We went, we had a press release. He now wanted to be called Matt Fitzpatrick. <laughs> it didn't make its way over here. Stripes it. But also, a lot's changed really over the last 18 months, two years. I know we talk about COVID, but what it did in this game when it came back, no fans. So it allowed some younger guys that came out of college or that had turned pro really to play in the same environment, which was not having the, the hoopla and the energy and actually starved some of the household names of what, as we watch Matt Wallace here, 
starve them of what they train to, which is playing the intense cauldron of people all the way around and under that. So a, a lot of guys benefited from that sort of last 18 months. Morikawa is one of the few guys to sort of win in that environment and then win when the people coming back out of the younger brigade. Very true. One in his debut performance over on the Californian coast, trying to do the same here. No man's ever done it. This is the ball of uh, Rory McElroy. Make it to the gallery. And maybe they just shimmy back. And that was inside the ropes. Back on the first. Down my for birdie. He's very methodical in the way he does things, how he goes about his work, reading pots, how he does his work on the greens. I mean, watching him in Scotland last week, practicing. I mean, he takes more time on his practice pot reading them than he does on the golf course. It's a quite an interesting way of going about it. Here's Dustin Johnson. He gets his day underway in the seven minutes. And there's, uh, well, plenty of mouth-watering groups, really to come. He's up alongside Liliano Grio. There they are. Next out is uh, Cameron Tringali. He has the company of Danny Willett, Jason Kokrak, an All-American grouping with uh, Joel Damon. They're at four under par. Andy Sullivan, one ahead of Robert McIntyre, the leading Scott, the only Scott in the field. Shane Lowry and Paul Casey out together. Same goes for Daniel Berger and Webb Simpson, the 2012 US Open champion. It's getting closer. Almost exactly two hours until that man tees off in the final group. Louis parked his tractor in the car park. <laughs> He's a tr tractor fanatic. We've got to know him a lot in the last decade or so since uh, his win at St Andrews. Not a bad lip reader as well, singer Oosthuizen. Shame there for Rory McElroy. Greenside in two at the par five. He's going to walk away with par. Brian Harmon down the green on the second. Down the slope. Probably just got cheated a little bit by the brown look of the greens. Starting to look a little bit fast out there now. A slight yellow tinge to them. They were a verdant lush green on day one. This for birdie at the par five for Shoflate. It's back to backs. And he gets to five under par for his round. Finally making his move. He's just left it a little late. Dog leg right first hole is uh, Lento Griffin. Well, as we've just seen, that the tiniest of change of wind direction now, these guys can uh, throw it all the way to the flag and get some bite if they're coming off the fairway. Winner at the, uh, the 2019 Houston Open in the wraparound season to 2020. conversation here with Billy Foster, his caddy. How to hit that golf ball that looked like some child had been painting all over it. It's obviously working on a little fade when we cut across this one, get some, chop it against the breeze to get it to sit down even more. The 
teaching. Pretty good. Six-time winner on the European Tour. You have to think that maybe Fitzpatrick might get his name on the claret jug. Many think that that's not far away for him. Birdie putt on the way for Justin Rose. Another one short in the heart of it. Tommy Fleetwood missed the green right. Still has a par putt to come. This is for Birdie, for Victor Hovland. Cozied it on down there, for better or worse. Back to eight. Yeah, Roy with his driving iron. Is it, oh, that's, oh. That's, he's holding his neck again. He was playing with that right off the first tee, wasn't he? And he just grabbed it there. So feeling a little, little tight there. Not, uh, and it's affecting him. It's follow through a touch. Fleetwood, a little bit of bother here on the fifth. So this is Papa. Just slips by there, down the hill. It's one of those that surprises you a little bit. It gets quick when you get those kind of slopes. Well, the greens here at Royal St. George's have s slopes from the outside of the greens into the middle. So being in the middle of the green, you're always putting uphill. Last to the party is John Rahm. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, John. Morning. Have a good day, man. Have a lovely session today. Good afternoon, man. John. Will it be a great afternoon for the Spaniard? Next to play is the world number one, Dustin Johnson. We know the, the tales that he's had around this golf course, Thomas. Yeah, he obviously has a little bit of a dis disappointment from 2011 when Darren Clark won when he hit it out of bounds on 14, his second shot, and kind of played him his way out of the tournament. I thought it was a very strange day for him yesterday. I mean, you kind of, we all expected him to step up a gear, get to the golf course, be ready, and he was five on over after 11 holes and just disappeared. Uh, it was very, very strange and unusual for Dustin Johnson. Only hit seven fairways yesterday and nine greens. So 50-50 in each. Perhaps the explanation. This is game number 28. On the tee, from the USA, Dustin Johnson. Reflected in... Uh, the numbers there got to seven under par at the start of Saturday, three over yesterday. Dropped him back. He starts the day eight off the lead. Team. From Argentina, Emiliano Grillo. The 28 year old now calls uh, San Diego home. Man from Argentina. easier drive today no wind a little bit of wind off the right I really struggled the first three days when the wind was off the left this tee box aims right a bit a little bit as well which it makes it difficult when the wind is off the left you just can't start it enough left of the tee so much much easier after the first tee today and off they go Griffin has a little bit of work to do 
for his par. This is for birdie for Fitzpatrick. Interesting to see Fitzpatrick always pots with the flag in, but this week he's chosen because of the flag sticks. He's chosen to, to not to do it because he's scared that the ball would bounce off the flag, flag stick because they're so thick and heavy. Oh boy. Blind. I assume he's giving it a go. Oh. That actually came out pretty straight. Oh, how about this for a goal shot? That's definitely the one you don't try this afternoon at your, at your local club. <laughs> that was impressive, wasn't it? Very strong there. Land to Griffin to save his power on the first. That's pretty straightforward, straight pop. No trouble at all. Strides to the second tee. Eagle chance for Tony Fina at seven. <laughs> Only two par fives on the golf course. One at seven, one at 14. A two time. Open champion Porter Carrington's come to the last. Oh, Ryder Cup captain. This is for Birdie. <laughs> He's 50 in August, Porterick. It's great to see the older brigade still play four rounds of these great championships. Ever popular figure. Three bogeys on the front, two birdies to come home for this year's and last year's technically Ryder Cup captain in Harrington. Well, as far as we know, I think they're all here. They're all ready. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're all just a, a little bit amped for this final round of the Open. It is the 149th edition. And look, there's some big names trying to vie their way to the top. And there's one of them, the defending champion, golfer of the year. Shane Lowry, it was a, a six-stroke win in the end. And what a moment it was, him walking down uh, 18 in his home country. Plenty of content, uh, radio, feature holes, whatever you want. It's all at theopen.com. Got some great statistics as well. If that floats your boat, you can check in. Sound a little smarter than the guy sitting next to you on the couch or the girl. Down to one. Second shot on the way for Grillo. Oh, I haven't seen that at all from the fairway. Oh, and it's plugged. Up against the face. <laughs> Dustin Johnson. He'll be looking straight at all the flags early on, I think. Try and get something going. Try and move up that leaderboard. Excellent. Try and move up that leaderboard. Put a little bit of pressure saying to everyone, I'm still here. There is some decent scoring out there today. Deshambo minus five. That Shufflate. He had a run going. Five under par through 14. Victor Hovland for his birdie at six. What do you like about his game, Nick? Uh, it's, it's a whole approach to it. I mean, he has his own new uniqueness in his swing. We can hit that lovely fade, but I think it's his whole attitude. He's uh, he obviously because he's young, he's loving it out there, and it's and he. Doesn't matter what he's shooting, he, he looks like he's giving it 100% all the time. 
Just to tap in in the end for Brian Harmon. And one under through three. Fleetwood. Oh. They put that flag in the tiniest of crowns, haven't they? You see how the guys are coming up short. That one turned hard left. Do you have a favourite par three on the on the golf course, Nick? Sorry, favourite? Favourite par three. Oh, here? here. Uh, wow, that's a good... Probably that hole, the six. I mean, three was always a brute. Eleven, we didn't play quite as long in, in my day. It was about a four-iron shot. And... 16 is a bit nasty, isn't it, Thomas? Yeah, that's, I was about to say, I thought there was only three par threes there. <laughs> I directed that question to you, Nick. <laughs> so, oh, careful, careful. So I, he's in trouble now. I have a rule of thumb that if you are within one club length from the face, you can't really get it out. There's no shot from a plug light. And this one is right on the borderline. It's he might just scrape it out. <laughs> yeah. Let's just slide up to search you. This is what happens if it just it falls in off all these gathering areas. It just pops in on the wrong side, and you cannot get your feet in there. And that actually really well. Actually, that's very well done because it's so difficult to get any leverage. You know, you can't use your back. It's kind of static, so it's all hands and arms. So, did well. I wonder if he forced the issue because he was greenside at the par four. 12th, that was his second birdie putt to come. Same for McElroy here at eight. It's all a bit not to be for Rory this week. Uh, just still trying, to, the search continues as, as we like to say sometimes for that golf swing that makes you believe and trust. Dustin uh, studying the, the arrows in the Greens book. Which may get banned. Um, some talk about that. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to implement that because technically if you've got a book the year before, you get a, a new book with a clean page. Can you just put your own arrows in? Or if you, or are they asking you to do all your work in practice rounds? They started regulating the, the size of the squares for a little while as well, didn't they? Because a lot of players, I think it was Justin Rose, had A4 pieces of paper out of yeah, the Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, uh, well, that's what we do for television. We, we blow that up, so at least we can see it. And uh, otherwise, I have to grab my reading glasses. And by the time <laughs> I've done that and looked at all the, they're onto an, another hole. You see, so I missed everything. Perfect timing as, a, as another year ticks over as well, Nick. This is for Birdie, though. Dustin Johnson to make an early move. You just never know, do you? If you get that really great start, you just never know. You might just get your name in there by the end of the day. Well, he's done it numerous times, so it's not like... You're, so he... Look, all these guys know that having an incredible day. I mean, the weather's this good. Bryson is Bryson the best on the golf course at five under right now. This is game number 29. On the tee, from the USA, Cameron Tringale. Yeah, in fact, Ricky, Ricky finished with five unders. That's the best of the day. So, you know, these, it is possibly very doable or possible. And one of the top half a dozen or more could shoot a, maybe a record 62 today. has that snapping follow through. On the tee, from England, Danny Willett.
a likable uh, character from Sheffield, up to the north of uh, London. Good couple of hours up there. The 2016 Masters champion. If you really want to know where Sheffield is, just watch the full Monty. Great, one of the greatest movies ever made in Britain. <laughs> oh, I never thought that movie was going to make it in the broadcast today, but I'm glad it did. One of Thomas's faves. Well, Sandra Schoffler reached the 16th. This is for birdie for three and four holes. There you go. Coming into a nice finish. Because he would have wanted a lot more when he started out this week. Dropped his only shot of the day at 15 and gets it straight back. Just a hole later there at the par three. Wow, this looks like it's even a putt, but along the diceling, dangling along the edge of the green. Yeah. Read every hump and bump perfectly. Two under in the last three holes and doubles his score. Grant Snedeker as a result. Started the day at two under par. Now at four, just outside that front page of the leaderboard. Only around about an hour and 40 minutes until the final group goes out. The countdown's on. It's been on all day. There is a buzz here at Royal St George's. It's the Open and it's Sunday. What else would you expect? Dustin Johnson there. Up to five under par, one under through one. Xander Shoffley going along nicely, as we've said. He's five under the card for his Sunday's plate. Victor Hovland, he too, is uh, enjoying some nice golf. Bogey free so far today, the Norwegian. The name of Bryson DeChambeau. He's popping up. He's had five birdies, no bogeys today. And this is uh, where everyone is at the layout here at Royal St George's. As we looked from overhead, you can see Dustin Johnson and Grillo out on the second in the top left corner. And we head there now. Yeah, Dustin out with a big stick. You just got a feeling that somebody might get out of the pack today, as Nick was saying early. And Nick. You've been on the receiving end, and then you also handed it out on days yeah. like this. Yeah, Greg caught me here. Bye, I was leading. Greg I shot 67, and Greg shot 64. So, um, there we go. Incredibly athletic. I mean, how he clears the waist, you know, that belt line through, and the extension. Uh, it's seriously fit and strong. Well, you got him back at the Masters, though, didn't you? I got Greg back later at the Masters. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, but all these all these players know that you you get on a as I described, you put your head down, blinkers on for at least nine or twelve holes, and then you come up for air and see where you are. I mean, that's that's really all you can do. Ninth have given them a chance, a nice easy hole location, right in the middle, just over the ridge. Being reflected in scoring, reflected by that shot of Rory McElroy. One of the three holes on the front nine that is playing under its part. Well, it's a good thing they're not playing together because they're dressed in the same clothes. Paul Casey and Rory McElroy. You see that more often these days that like the fleet of shirts. You even get told what to wear on Thursday to Sunday. Nick, how would you have gone with that? What happens if you don't, just don't feel like blue on Sunday? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they've, they've taken out your own individuality. And uh, as Thomas said, sometimes you can come out and you're all looking the, all looking the same. No, I think uh, 
back in my day, you know, we were more recognizable. You know what, Seve had his look and Greg had his look and I had a good old Pringles, so uh, um, gave us our, our identity. Sometimes they all look a little too similar. To the heart of the green is uh, Danny Willett with a birdie putt to come. Garcia and all his troubles in that bunker. He tried to drive the green, ended up in the bunker. Awkward stand, so this is where he came out to. This is for birdie. Oh. Oh, <laughs> pace down the green there. to Fleetwood or backwards to Fleetwood on seven. Middle of the fairway, just with an iron. Just trying to hang it out to the right, draw it in off that bunker into the middle of the green. There we go. That's better. That's how you want to do it. So a nice easy chance there. You have to have a birdie so far today, Fleetwood. Could he bag a three at the par five? Up one to Fino at eight. Yeah, it's, it is a brand new change of grip. But yeah. Ditched the, if you put it, the chopstick grip before. Change putter grip and probably needed really just to clear the mind. Cameron Tringali on the first. Just off the green there through. When it gets dry, those edges of the greens, they don't really take too much pace out of the ball. It, it really just becomes like a normal pop. Great effort. Bryson DeChambeau to finish with a birdie for a round of 64. Not to be, but you do wonder, Nick, don't you, what, what he learnt today? Played much better, 65? Well, absolutely. We made things si simpler. You know, played for position a little bit more. And we, we saw him in the left rough at two. I haven't seen him in too much rough after that. That's the, obviously the number one key. Justin wants it to fade. Well, it's better missing it there than the other side. Danny Willett, he'll be looking for a low one today. Get him himself, maybe not winning, but right up there. He's starting to play a bit of golf. Just slides by. Just ran out of pace, really. He's had his health battles this year, hasn't he? As well, appendicitis. Joel Damon in at minus four so far, playing alongside Jason Kokrak. It's a pretty steady play from Damon. 69-68-69. Another one of those late bloomers. He spent a lot of his uh, career caddying as well on the side in the early days. On the team from the USA, Jason Kokrak. Good round of 66 yesterday. Made the cut by one on Friday evening. Moved in the right direction on Saturday. in his third open. Let's finish uh, with a share of 32nd in that Royal Port Rush. Last time round finds the fairway. Another that perhaps uh, might have had to have adjusted his normal game plan for Lynx Golf with his length off the tee. Tengali. Saw him lipping out there on the first as he's left for this for part. <laughs> nice 
nicely done. In it goes, and, uh, and sadly, off uh, Sir Nick goes. It's been lovely hearing uh, your insights with us this morning and a joy to have you here. I hope the rest of the birthday goes uh, goes nicely. Thank you all. I've loved it. It's been a great four days to be with you all and uh, and enjoyed it. This really exciting afternoon. I have no idea how this is really going to pan out, so it uh, should be a great one. It was a nice Sunday as well for, uh, for Bryson DeChambeau. Perhaps he, he cracked the code a little bit out there. Final round of 65. And creeps him up inside uh, the top 40 as it stands. Fleetwood on seven. Oh. It's just not been the week with the potter for Tommy. Another one slides by. It's only a birdie. Only. I guess when you're looking that much at an eagle, you'd be disappointed with it. It's like trying to start a fire with wet wood on the grains sometimes for Fleetwood. Dustin Johnson on the second. He'll be eyeing up these birdies early on. He was really annoyed with himself yesterday, just one of those days came out of nowhere really he played nicely right where he wanted to be after two rounds and for 11 holes yesterday it was just a different golfer and we all wake up like that sometimes where you just you don't feel it you don't have it you just hit a few loose shots you don't get the good lies you might have gotten the first couple of days and it just kind of disappears from you but when you come home after those days you're really annoyed and you just want to go out and prove to yourself more than anything that it was just a little bit of a blip did you have any strategies for yourself on those days that you were just feeling a little bit off? Yeah, but I, I just think, I mean, I always go back to when listening to some of the great players. Just take, try and take mistakes out, big mistakes out. Try and get yourself, you know, take your game back a step. And, and that, was, that was the way of doing it maybe 20 years ago. I just tend to, with the players today, they almost go the other direction. They just go full out blast and see where it goes. But... Yeah, I like taking it back uh, just to, to try and keep control of, of my mistakes more than anything. Sage advice. Putting back across towards the pin. Here's Dustin Johnson at the second. Not Betty at one. Had the read right there. Not the pace on it. Back to one. It'll be uh, Joel Damon to play first from uh, 164 yards out. Both finding the fairway. All you have to do is clear over the bunker. The entire thing, if I get a pass of luggage, it's perfect. Correct? That's the only way I make any number. number. Yeah. I mean, I just a little cold on the book. Is that right? All right. Fly one in there. Am I crazy? No, I just, uh, there's no, nothing wrong with one pitching around the whole eyes. Do you I, think this ball, this will go in the bunker? Oh, I don't think it will. Okay. If you think it'll go in the bunker, I'll hit the other. No, white one in there for me. Some audio there. Well, that's certainly one that we put down to a little bit of nerves on the first hole. That was an unusual one for him. He came here early, actually, to get acclimated, okay. and he played yep. a, quite yep. a bit of Lynx golf in the lead-up to this week. Certainly paid off with his place, four under par as we start on Sunday. Here's a fella. That's nice to spend a bit of time with. Good laugh. Really nice guy. So if you don't know much about him, you can start rooting for him. Jason Cockright. Don't take it too seriously. Off the golf course. Right, probably. 
That's excellent. Nice shot. Into a winner this season. In fact, two wins. Let's go to Rory McElroy for birdie at nine. Saw the approach. Snags the right edge. Back to level par for his round. So how do you guys see it? There's two nice shots here in on 13. And this is for birdie a little bit left to right. right in the heart. Are you watching, Padraig? Are you watching? Doesn't miss much. Up to three with uh, Dustin Johnson. Uh, might just trickle back just off the front edge there. Didn't quite get the strike to get it back where he wanted to. We're getting to the pointy end of things here on a Sunday afternoon on the coast of Kent. Who are you, Stason? Leads by one. But what a leaderboard it is. We've got a lot to look forward to. Who wouldn't love the trio of Ustazen, Morikawa, Spieth? They were all up alongside each other yesterday, but things have stretched out a little bit from Saturday evening. and Wallace, one under, and they're at four under total. 65 for Bryson DeChambeau, nice move for the American, the long bomber, the US Open champion from last year. Good 66 from JC Ritchie today. Wow. Here's a choice of club from there. He's going with the putter. Oh, the rough. Up and over. I don't even know if that was a good shot or a bad shot. I was so <laughs> shocked by the choice of club. It was something. <laughs> Birdie putt for Brooks Kepka at six. with speed, first birdie of his day. Tony Fino is on the ninth, and this is for par. That was a bit of a stab from Mr. Fino, that. Tidy scorecard, but it's still two under par for the front nine. Jason Kokrak, who uh, is known for his pr prolific length uh, off the tee, he's actually inside the top five in strokes game putting as well for the PGA Tour. We don't often see uh, those two go together, but the big man has good hands on the short grass. This is for an opening birdie. Should come a little bit left to right. Just never hit it. That was a good line. <coughs> we talked about it a lot this week, but the greens are slow from the middle of the green out towards the edges, just because everything pretty much slopes into the middle of the green. A lot of the greens here slope into the middle of the green. a lot of uh, bowls and raised edges around the greens. It, it's quite a sight when you come to Royal St. George's for the first time. It's going to be a drop shot for Damon. Yeah, 
you see that Dustin Johnson's ball came off the front of the green. So now he's putting right up there. This one's going to be really, really slow. Good pace. Like a bit, little bit of line that one. Picked up his birdie at the seventh. It's for an outside chance uh, for birdie. I oh, don't know. Try to score correction. It is par. Much to uh, Fleetwood's dismay. And the fans of his. McElroy's had all sorts of problems here on the tenth. He chipped up to here, and this is for bogey. You just wonder what goes through his mind at the moment. It's just not working out for him. But with his talent, his ability, he'll be back to his best um, soon enough, I'm sure, but this really hasn't been a great week for him. There's Dylan Fratelli. He's out in, uh, in just under an hour. He's making the most of a, an opportunity that was afforded to him. When uh, Louis Diaga pulled out of the event, he's missed nine of his last 11 cuts, Fratelli. But you wouldn't know it from the way that he's been playing. Starts the day five shots back. Around of uh, level par 70, but 66s and 67s on day one and two. Got him right into the thick of things. It's a nice birdie as well. The final hole to finish on Saturday. This is just outside right, maybe right lip. Positive this. Yeah, he just sh shot that a little bit. That's disappointing from Dustin Johnson. He's going to get back the one he earned at the first. Let's go back to the tee with the 115 group ready to go. That of Robert McIntyre and Andy Sullivan. This is game number 31. On the tee from Scotland, Robert McIntyre. Made quite the splash in his uh, open debut at Royal Port Rush. Tied for sixth that week. He's impressed in the majors. Since then as well, it was a great 65 yesterday after making the cut on the number. Four-year-old yet to miss a weekend in the major event. On the tee from England, Andy Sullivan. The likable 35-year-old, former Ryder Cup player. on the UK swing at Hanbury Manor last year. <laughs> Two rounds of 67 to start his week, a 71 yesterday. Fourteen. 
Eagle putt on the way for Sergio Garcia. That one just drifts on by. So it should be good enough for his uh, birdie coming back. We'll see that in a moment. Trying to make three birdies in five holes is Garcia. Let's go to Matt Wallace now at four from off the green. Through the back, in the heart. A great birdie there. First birdie, first birdie of the day for Matt Wallace. What a time to do it as well. So there's the state of play. It is Oosthuizen by one over Colin Mor Morikawa by three over Jordan Spieth, courtesy of a, a couple of loose putts for Spieth towards uh, the end of Saturday's play. He ran off to the putting green with his coach Cameron McCormick. John Rahm, he said in his presser last night he is going for it. He's going to be going at all the pins. He's going to be playing aggressively wherever possible. Good play so far from Sergio Garcia. You can see he did tap in for his birdie there at the par five. He's four under par for his round today. We'll change up in the commentary box. Ali Whitaker alongside Sam Torrance and Frank Nobolo now as Kepka sets up for his eagle putt at seven, Sam. Thank you, Alison. Uh, it's, oh, well, that's a nice time for me to start. It's an easy game, this, isn't it? Just knock it on the green, knock it in for you. You're going to get to six under. He didn't have a good day yesterday. He's looking to have one today. Had a nice putt at the par three just a few moments ago. In about ten minutes now. So three under through two holes. And Shoffley gets to finish at 18. Not quite the Open Championship he expected or wanted. But that round of 65 is something for him to remember as he goes forward. I just want to say thank you, too. This is my last stint. It's been great rekindling friendships. Uh, the team over here has been tremendous. The, the, everybody's worked so hard, the cameraman, audio, and hopefully the people around the world have appreciated all the effort that's gone in. Right. Same for us to you, Frank. You fit it in like a glove. I think. Kopka jumped into the top ten. Wow, well, you fancy it's getting over the front and near with the eight. Yeah. You How far on is it? Fourteen. There's a massive downslope to it. Yeah, that's what I mean, mate. Um, What's the front? Fifty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy this, mate. This is good. You happy? Uh, yeah. It's coming down on it just right a bit, huh? Yeah, exactly. And I'd just go straight ball, but. <sighs> And Sam, the breeze is just starting to turn back into their face now. So for the first time this week. Yeah, it makes this oh, shot just a little bit harder, right. Frank. You're right. Oh, right. <coughs> Not much chance of it getting up later, though, you know, to make it really difficult and somebody catching up from six, seven shots behind. Beautiful all week. No sign of it changing. I think this, this is, it's the least amount that we've seen. There was only a, a one mile per hour at one point in time this morning. <laughs> well, they're all fighting originally the right side of the field because of the cross breeze. So now they've just got to make that little subtle adjustment. Realize this is very gettable right now. Wonderful follow. Shot equally as good. Have a good and change. Ending champion. <laughs> Sterling defense. Still giving himself a glimmer for into today. Thank you. 
Bank of Lancaster, there's the claret jug right behind the tea. He takes a little look at it. It's a familiar one. That's seen, it's seen some things in the last 24 months, says Shane Lowry. It is quite magnificent. They give you a, a smaller replica when you win it. A lovely gesture. I think you can actually buy them. You don't need to just have one if you want it. Glory at 11. Oh, that's better. A double bogey at 10. It's not his time. Frank, it was you that said, Frank, it's now going to be eight years yeah. since he won a major. Yeah, sadly, I was looking at some of the internet uh, articles that are already being written, saying eight years, what will Rory do next? Probably Mountain pressure still on his shoulders. Probably make another 10 million this year. <laughs> right now, he's not worrying about money, though. It's hurting. It's really hurting him. And the longer it gets, the deeper the worry. Down the hill for Andy Sullivan at the first. Seen too many stay up there so far today. Around about two and a half feet left for McElroy's car, a good one on the sand in the end at 11. It's not much con consolation though at the moment. It is the hardest hole on the day, however. Wonderful amphitheater back there on that first tee. Another look at that little claret jug for Larry. I mean, it's amazing over all these years, you know, the quest for that jug. You know, it's broken so many hearts. It's made men. And those immortal words, too. That someone's going to hear at the end of the day, as Larry did two years ago, champion golfer of the year. Still makes the hair on my arm stand up. This is game number 32. On the tee from England, Paul Casey. World number 21. Already a winner earlier this year at the Omega Dubai Desert Classic. Best finish in the Open came in 2010 when Louis Oosthuizen won. Tied for third at St Andrews. in there on the tee from the republic of ireland the defending champion shane lowry that's a shame from the compound as well yep. he loved it on thursday but it feels a little better to hear it on sunday he's worked his way right back into the event at minus five Just okay. Probably won't be accessible to the pin, but we'll get it on the green easily enough. Be tough to control your ball flight and spin from the, even the first cut of rough. Such a special moment there for Shane. Birdie putt for Robert McIntyre up at the green.
Great stuff. 65 yesterday, he's off and running already. And he's sixth in Port Rush in his first open. He is a, a star on the horizon. And he returns uh, to the open this time as a winner himself picked up a win in Cyprus in the latest stages of 2020. And he's a different man than he was back in Royal Port Rush. Birdie at the first, nice for the only Scott in the field. Brooks Kepka, three under through seven, three under through the last couple with uh, the Eagle to follow the birdie. It came at uh, six and seven. Good move too from Sergio Garcia. He's crept his way inside the top 20 today. For now. Marcel Seam, 17 minutes ago. Held on fantastic yesterday in a great second round. We've alluded to he won on the Challenge Tour last week, contested the week before to get here. He's got a one-stroke advantage over his playing partner and Kevin Strillman. Cameron Smith out with Justin Harding today on the same score. Dylan Fratelli alongside Mackenzie Hughes. Scotty Scheffler has the company of, uh, of John Rahm. Corey Connors and Jordan Spieth out in the penultimate pairing and this, the final pairing, Colin Morikawa, who is one shot back from our leader in Louis Oosthuizen. Looking to continue this fantastic run. Birdie Eagle, the last two. Oh, it's a cracker. It's a cracker. Oh, my goodness. Don't go in. Well, after four under and three holes, he's making a move. And he's not too far behind. And that will be to get within five of the current lead. Now, McIntyre, the left-hander using the left side of the tee, which normally means he's trying to cut it. Overdone it. The guys from Royal Sink Ports, they've got it. We drive through that every day, don't we? It just looks beautiful. It's a lovely stretch of golf. We've got Prince's uh, up to the north, I think. I've got my if I've got my ways around. Sink Ports to the south of here, Royal St George's. Sandwiched between them. Lovely shot right over the top of the flag. This is kind of where McElroy was. We've seen a few here. He was here yesterday and only moved it about 10 feet. I've got nine. Yeah. The jump, so what? Yeah, you're gripping down. to lie today as long as he's got missed the cross bunker unfortunately it hasn't you know, have to get up and down from there not easy very close to the face too his game's gone up a notch uh, in 2021 the win Hafa mentioned but also uh, a top five at Kiwa Island uh, a top ten at Torrey Pines for the US Open Polter at the short 12th Slight dog leg. He's played it nicely. Another birdie. DJ for par. That halts the run. Two bogeys in a row. Birdied the first, but now goes one over for today. And back to minus three. Matt Wallace for his birdie picked up one at the fourth, a very good one at the fourth. This at the sixth. Oh. Up 
on the knife edge. Still, he's one under the card for his round so far. Down to the first green. Well, not quite. Wasn't bad from the uh, from the long grass, though, Sam. No, no, he would have loved to have missed this, obviously. Yeah. But great to get it in that one and not the one that's like 30 yards short of that. That is the impossible shot to get to the green. And you can see he's, he's not small, Casey. You can hardly see out. But it's on the upslope, so. Gonna throw the club head at the ball here, try and get it straight up in the air. They certainly got it straight up in there. What a shot that was, by the way. It's just been the, the putter that's plagued him a, a little bit this week. But having said that, even despite those numbers, two days with 31 putts for Paul Casey, he's seven shots back and a chance to make a good par there at one. Another birdie chance for Kepka at eight. He thought it had it, it was quite firm, but it still dived left on him. So just a disappointing par for him. Rory McElroy. Trying to make his four at the short 12. Knocks on the side door and it's answered. Two good pars in a row, really, the up and down at 11. And a good four there at 12. Probably would have been expecting a good look at birdie, though. It's certainly a, an attackable hole on the back nine. Berger and Simpson coming up next. Both excellent players. Major winner, Simpson. Had a great score yesterday to get him here. They had a win back in... Uh, in and Pebble Beach uh, in February. It's been pretty solid since then, form-wise. This is game number 33. On the tee from the USA, Daniel Berger. Some good play the last two days. Level par on uh, Thursday, five under for the last two. Making his fourth appearance here. <laughs> First of which came back in, in 2015 at St Andrews. On the tee from, from the USA, USA. Webb Simpson. Do you like this swing? I mean, it's so effective and in such great positions, but the follow through just to me, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he, he stays on his right foot, his back foot so much. That's why sometimes it looks like he's got a broken hip. The way he gets through the ball, I think is what you're saying. But the thing he does so well is he actually knows, knows where the, the grip and club face are. Watch. And more often than not, it, it produces sort of a flattish draw. Seven times a, a PGA Tour champion, a major champion. A man from North Carolina. A long putt for Lowry. We saw his second to here. With a swing off the right here. Going right. That's weak. Not what you want on the first screen to not get the pace right. Doesn't all go well for the week. Now at the second, McIntyre was in trouble off the tee, so now his third, the full length of the green to work with. Oh. 
So a little bit of work to do to keep the birdie of sorts. Uh, he made on one, that for par. Coming at two for McIntyre. Paul Casey back at the first as well. That's a great par for Paul Casey on the first. Stays at five under, seven behind. On the key at T at nine, Kepka. There's one bunker just down the right side. So you either hit the iron, skip through. Exactly that, or challenge it with a driver. Really the two strategies there at nine off the tee. And another one of the blind tee shots here at Royal St. George's. It's polarizing, but I think a couple of people have fallen in love with it in the condition that it's in, the way it's playing, greener than usual. Louis Oosthuizen, he's not complaining. Rory McIlroy said he, he thought this was the best it's ever played in terms of the bounces, felt like it was a little bit more fair. There's so many ridges in the middle of these fairways and greens. Yeah, sadly, this week wasn't the best he's played, though. Now, Casey. The dog leg left, par four second. Oh, no. It's rather warm outside now, which is good to see. Really, temperatures have got hotter and hotter each day out here, Sam. I mean, it's just wonderful. It's, it's stunning. Able to compress the ball more, head it further. Interesting trend of going on about the uh, was it the last six winners of the Open. They've all had a, a top ten in a previous appearance. Quite the pattern. Shane Lowry did oh, back in, in 2014. He missed four straight cuts and then won at Royal Port Rush. Just the iron off the tee, playing for precision, finds the fairway. Tommy Fleetwood. This is the tenth, and this for Birdie. Well done, Tommy. That's better. Back to level for the day. But I say right at it from here. Yeah. You said straight at? Yes. Uh, a hair out of the left. This shot is a little tougher for Webb Simpson because what we were talking about, very shallow through the heading area. So he's liable to get a little bit of grass before the ball, which takes away some of the spin that's required. its way up onto the, the back plateau right around the back edge of the first green. Perfect tee shot from Berger. This will be, be very aggressive for this one, probably just a nine iron. Excellent iron player. Stop as well, as well as it should have done or could have done. Check in with Brooks Kepka, found the fairway at nine with the iron off the tee. This is second shot. Just a little wedge in hand. Just a nice wedge in hand. Can he keep the run going? It's a shame that one at eight didn't go in, Alison. No. Probably the best driver in the world. Judge had about a 20 yard draw on it there. Yeah, 
Second shot, just splash it out for Polter. It's far more ambitious. He doesn't just try hard enough, does he? He had no idea he was there because no. it didn't go in. <laughs> well, his what background man. too, Sam, isn't it? I mean, he came really from... He admits a, a, a very sort of average right, amateur yeah, player. Yeah, turned himself into something special. Yeah, no, uh, exactly. Got it. Yeah. All right. This man turned himself into something special. He was very good as an amateur. He won the Irish Open as an amateur. And you knew then that something special was in this boy's life. That would probably have been enough an Irish amateur winning the Irish Open. To win the open at Port Rush as good as it gets. A little unlucky there, but it's okay, it stayed, it could have come back off. A birdie at six, Eagle at seven. As Sam said, just the par at eight, but still is to go four under through four for Brooks Kept Cup. From six onwards. And off he goes. It's an outward nine of 31. He's within five. He's making his move here on Sunday. See how important posting a score is. It's so fin hard to finish it off on very, very tough golf courses. Simpson. Seems to have got the speed. No, he's going to come up short as well. Rory McElroy at 13, the right edge of the fairway, at the furthest point of the golf course. Super shot. And it tilts a little to the left from the middle of the green. Just got it to sit down softly. Back to the first. Next to play, Kevin Streelman and Marcel Seen. This is game number 34. On the tee from the USA, Kevin Streelman. better every day. He would love to get a, a lower score than 66 today. Very good competitor, Streelman. There's a lot of great golf in America. Very straight. On the tee from Germany, Marcel Ziem. I think a couple of those crowds have jumped on the bandwagon, and rightly so. Marcel Ziem won last week on the Challenge Tour, made his way here, played his way into contention. Forty-year-old was uh, challenged in his round yesterday. He had a triple bogey at 14, but came home with two birdies in the last three holes to get back to six under par. The man that has been inside the world top 50, he was outside the world top thousand at the end of 2020. What can he produce today? You know, there's going to be some fist pumps. He's exciting to watch. Electric at times. Let's go up to the green with Berger. Slightly uphill, and we'll turn left. If only, if only it was right on line. Good sporting family. His father, Jay, used to be in the top ten in the tennis world. 
think he was the uh, the tennis coach for the Olympics as well at some stage. Yep, and also co uh, David Cups David Cup captain with Jim Currier. Now Larry at two. Pin high. You don't want to hear that on a putt though. Powerful man gives it such a hit. Oh, beautiful. For left! Not sure of the drive though. It's left oh. shouting left and Kepka shouting. Oh. She saw it in the end. She got a little bit of a fright by it. Casey at the second. For his birdie. Not quite. Hold a wonderful pot for. Well, it was a wonderful pot, it's only 10 feet or something, but a great bunker shot. First hole to make part. Good part of the second. Steady stuff. Webb Simpson trying to save his par at the opening hole. No trouble at all. So he will stay at five under par. Rory for birdie on 13, the size drive. Get it to here, par five next. He'd love to hole it, and he does. Well done, Rory. Two in a row. That double bogey at 10 wiped out, back to level for the day. Start again. There are opportunities out there if you can take them. One man that has so far is Brooks Kepka, who's four under par through nine, playing his way into the front page of the leaderboard. Cameron Smith, they're at minus six. Alongside Justin Harding and Marcel Seam on the same score. Harding twice a winner on the European tour. Once in Kenya, once in Qatar. One hundred and sixty eight yards the number. But what is the lie like for Marcel Seen? He's off the left. <coughs> it's just hurting me off the left slightly. One fifty one flag in the TV top. Yep. Perfect. Well, Alison, the flag's on 14, so it means to cover that front is 154. will be the number just to try and guarantee to carry. Good. That's not too bad, Sam, from uh, that first cut. Wasn't a flash in the pan. Is when he actually contended the week before in uh, the Czech Republic at the Cascada Golf Challenge as well. A perfect tee shot from Streelman. All systems go from this position. from there, but it's okay. Up two to three with Shane Lowry. Oh, Shane. Currently the second hardest hole on the golf course, but this is, oh, just one kick forward over those sprinklers. It could have been close. Okay. Only five birdies here so far today. There it is, down by the ball of uh, Paul Casey, popular spot. It's a two iron for Rory. Driving iron, he does hit this a long way. That's not very straight, I'm afraid. <coughs> I on McElroy, like no flight at all, when it's in the thick stuff. Jason Kokrak 
Here's Birdie at four. No trouble at all. And he moves to minus four, gets back the shot he dropped at the third. He's level par for his round so far today. Four holes in. It's almost a rite of passage coming to the open, watching the golf. If you can get here, hopefully uh, this time next year we'll be able to welcome more international fans. There are 32,000 people out there lucky enough to see what unfolds this afternoon. Sullivan alongside Lowry, Casey Simpson, Berger Streelman, all at five under par. Good day's work for Sergio Garcia there. He's four under par through 17. Just crept inside the top 20. No one's complaining with the 65 in the final day here. Sandra Shoffley just wishes that it came a little earlier on in his week, but it does match the best score of the day with Fowler and DeChambeau. He may have got really lucky here. All round the bottom, there's no way you can get it out straight and up at the green, but that's a remarkable shot. Just a remarkable shot, let me tell you. Fantastic, a chance to get to nine or ten. I've lost count, he's making that many birdies. Be a chance to get to minus eight for Kepka. Off the back edge for Marcel Saint. Down the hill to the left. That's been the common theme from the back edge. Really wears his heart on his sleeve, that man. Four times a European Tour winner. And then uh, kind of fell off the planet trying to chase a little length. He tried to bow his wrist in his swing, made some swing changes, but he is clawing his way back. Next up, ready to play game 35, Justin Harding and Cameron Smith. This is game number 35. On the tee from South Africa, Justin Harding. Some good play in round one, round two. Level par yesterday. <laughs> Do you like his play, uh, Sam? I, I think he's a fantastic player, Harvey. Very aggressive. On the team from Australia, Cameron Smith. A three time winner on the PGA Tour, Cameron Smith. I love this guy's mm. game. Such a good player. Never seems to get stressed or upset, takes everything in his stride. Left and stay out of the heat. It certainly will, but it's in the fairway, possibly not. But that's okay, that's not bad at all. One of the fun things about the open, open rotor, and this is the most southerly of the 10 courses on it, is that it's thinking about kind of the courses that could suit the styles of play of each of the players or, or the weather, perhaps. Cameron Smith, a fun one to think about. Up ahead at one on the green, at least. Kevin Streelman for his birdie up the hill. The green left here with a really good looking shot. Just come up a little shy, ran down the hill. 
He's potted up to here. That's for par. Go on to him. Very good. Excellent save. Par part for Marcel Seam. Just a little left with this, short with the first. That's a settler. He hasn't, he hasn't been sleeping well, he said. No, who would? Birdie putt for Kepka. Oh, how did it stay out at 10? Shame that would have helped him with the momentum, everything. He's having a great day. You see him seven under, one shot behind four. All the each way backers will be getting excited. A little turner here for Fina at 13. Long par four. Keeps turning. Oh, used it beautifully to four and a quarter inches. Fina trying for three consecutive top tens at the Open Championship. Tons of birdies on that scorecard. <coughs> I don't think he's ever finished outside the top 30, has he? Since he's been here, it was 18th in his uh, opening campaign back in uh, 2016, 27th at Royal Birkdale when uh, Jordan Spieth took the title. He'll be trying to do exactly the same. Here he's three shots back, Spieth from the lead of Lou Oosthuizen. And there he is, Tony Finau. Three under through 13 today with two bogeys as well. Victor Hovland has moved to four under par. Uh, what a joy it is to be here, just outside of Sandwich at Royal St George's for the 149th Open. A prolific winner on the Sunshine Tour there, JC Ritchie in with a, a 66 today. adding to his major and his open experience. Marcel Seam at the second. That's better. Straight down the middle. Tough pin at the second, so you've got to get the fairway, give you a nice easy second shot. Smith just from uh, the first cut of rough. There's the lie on the right. Doesn't look too bad, Sam. No, it's not bad at all. Just not able to get the, the sort of ultimate spin on it. Only 20 feet behind the hole will be a good result. That's okay. Just 14 paces on at the first nine off the left edge. <laughs> Second shot for Justin Harding now. Great strike. Oh, it's Ooh. a beauty. Oh, and that stops so quick. A little unlucky. Five or six paces of you know, the first green we've seen throughout the week. It does release. A number of players taking advantage of that, at least from the fairway today. Robert McIntyre for his birdie at four. <laughs> Rattles it in. Second birdie of the day. You can see the drop shot at se the second. Minus one for his Sunday's campaign thus far. 
Ian Poulter at 14. See if he can birdie the par five. Nearly hold the bunker shot at the previous hole. Poulter trying to roll to the clubhouse. There he goes. It's a, a hole you really feel you need to take an opportunity of. You only get two of them on this golf course, two par fives at 7 and 14. Let's go to 11, though. The par three with uh, Brooks Kepka. Huge par three. No catch and release here. 253 playing every inch. Bunkers get another one. They've had a few. Rory McIlroy included in that number. Kepka wouldn't mind a, a similar up and down. Cameron Smith sizes up uh, his putt at the first. We say goodbye, alas, to uh, to Frank Noble. It's been a joy to have you here. Thank you very much, Alison. Honestly, the team has been tremendous. It's almost been a welcome home. I know you guys will finish strong today. I'll be watching. Cheers. Fingers crossed. We hope it's uh, not too long before we hear from Frank back on this side of the pond. 35 is good. Marcel Seam with his second. You can see the pin just to the right of uh, the number two tower. Shot there, controlled man. shot. Seems interested. Yeah. Not too far away. He's been caddying for himself a lot in the last year, he said on the challenge tour. Old habits die hard. So next out is the group of Dylan Fratelli from South Africa, Mackenzie Hughes from Canada. Canadians trying to best the tie for fifth by Stephen Ames in uh, 1997. Two in the hunt today. This is game number 36. On the tee from South Africa, Dylan Fratelli. Started with a bang, you can see there, 66, 67, level par round of 70 on day three. Another one finds the right. On the tee from Canada, Mackenzie Hughes. Thirty-four years of age, making his uh, open debut. It's been a good one. Three rounds in the 60s so far. Starts the day five shots off the pace. His co-leader after uh, 54 holes at the U.S. Open, challenging just one major later again in the thick grass on the right. So we've had a, a little bit of a, a change up in the commentary box as we watch the part of uh, Cameron Smith at the first and about 40 feet left for his birdie. And that's tracking. <laughs> I'm joined in here by uh, Tony Johnston. Thomas Bjorn, and uh, you'll be hearing from Dom Hollier, who's taking the reins for the rest of the afternoon in just a few moments' time. Cap cut. A little on the down slope. There is one very, very classy bumper shot. Back to the 
first. Justin Harding lining this one up. Break right to left. Quite slow. And just one of those that you often start the day with. A little bit of an outside 20, 25 foot chance. You don't quite hit it. It's okay though. Power on the first is always good. McElroy. Long birdie putt at 14. It's going to be a bit of right to left in it. And will it get there? Will it get there? Oh, you little devil. What a great try. But he'll be bitterly disappointed not to have birdied. 14. It's just two iron shots to get there for him. It's just a medium length par four, really. Kopka out from the bunker to here. So yeah, he's one of the few ones out there that's really lighting it up today. I wonder if it's maybe a little bit too late for Brooks Kopka, but playing great on a Sunday in a major championship is what great players do. As a man, I think we've all been looking forward to watching. On day four, where's his heart and his sleeve? He's been absolutely loving this Open Championship after his win last week. On the challenge to get going, get going. What a great try. We're all, we just keep, Thomas, we keep wanting to hold putts just so we can see the reactions. Yeah, he really is enjoying himself out there. It's fantastic to watch. He was fun yesterday, and he should be proud of himself as well with the way he finished yesterday. <laughs> Sergio Garcia's Open Championship comes to an end with a beautiful round of 66 shots, four under par. Not quite to be this week for Sergio, but he's in nice form. He's playing some nice stuff. I wonder if we won't be seeing him in Whistling Straits in September. Grillo. Okay, with a putter. Oh, bring out a new flagstick because that one's broken. Man, that went in <laughs> serious pace. Shrug of the shoulders. You have enough bad breaks in the game. When you get the good ones, just enjoy. Back on the first, Fritelli. Good lie there. You can see a lot of the ball. Just uh, snagged a little bit for him there, yeah. It was a good lie, though. It was just a poor execution. And he drove it poorly yesterday, Thomas. You know, when he played in Europe, I, I thought of him as an extremely accurate driver. He was all over the shop yesterday. Yeah, but he's one of those guys that really gone for the length. Mm. Like, he took yes. made a decision to really add length to it. And I thought yesterday that he hit it so hard all day long that he was out of control. And on Lynx golf courses, you're gonna miss fairways doing that. Mackenzie Hughes. Tell you what, he did well to miss that clump just short right. And if you go in there, you're not moving at 10 yards. He's got a lie and he's got it on the green. Just stay there, it's a long way from the hole that I think you'd still qualify that as a bonus. And the US Open champion from Tory Pines, John Rahm. He's coming to the coast. He knows what's ahead of him, he needs a good one, but he also knows he's very capable of a good one. Played excellent this week. A lot of pots that just missed. Hopefully you'll have one of those days where they fall in. Kepka. Just uh, making shot. a little shot point today. Uh, really is. Okay. Not in any divots, that's spot on. Will be a big wind up for Rory. 
full flow. Just kind of just by that bunker. It's all good. Straight out of the divot. No problems. Robert McIntyre, who prefers to be known as Bob. Ready paddock five. Oh. Close. That's just a putting stroke to die for. Yeah, it's remarkable that he is the only Scotsman in the field this week. Well, there you have it. Brooks Cook is moving up the leaderboard nicely. Finds a way to bring out the best in himself, doesn't he, in majors? Amazing how he, he just does find a way. Yeah, I, I thought him and Dustin Johnson were the disappointments yesterday, but mm. Brooks has certainly come out with a point to prove today. Fratelli opting to just chase it down the slope, let it run all the way out. And that's excellent touch. Big surprise there, South African with a good touch, isn't it? They all have it. They all seem to learn from the great master Gary Player. Arguably the best bunker player of all time. Just stunning pictures here today. Blue sky, barely a cloud to be seen. Golf course set up stunningly well this year for the Open Championship here at Royal St. George's. It really has been magnificent. <laughs> so John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler are about to get underway. It's a final day of the 149th Open. Right, have a good day, guys. This is game number 37. On the team from Spain, John Rahm. He may need something like he produced on Friday, that round of 64, if he is going to win both the US Open and the Open. Those eyes are as a mixture of focus and desire. He's ready. On the tee from the USA, Scotty Scheffler. Wonderful debut at the Open for the 24-year-old Texan. He likes the links. Well, the Texans tend to play in very windy conditions a lot. It's not windy today, but they like the bouncy golf courses as well. And that's what they grow up with. They tend to come here and, and do well. No. No less than somebody like Jordan Spieth loves it, you know, and also from that part of the world. Yes, yeah, Spieth actually says that he finds it difficult to play when there isn't any breeze out there. Right up to the first green and a chance here for Mackenzie Hughes. It's OK, he may have got the line a little wrong, but the pace of a multiple changes of 
elevation were excellent. Here we go. Kepka. Seven holes to go. And he'll be wanting a bunch of birdies to finish. Oh my. Just glorious. He'll also be wishing, Tony, he could play yesterday's round again. 72. Yeah. Left him with an awful lot to do. Turns professional tomorrow. Matthias Schmidt, exciting young German. He's going to turn professional after winning the silver medal here at Royal St George's as well. Kind of reminds me of a young Henrik Stenson, physique-wise. Strong young lad. Tony Finau. Oh, burns the edge. Another good Open Championship for Finn out. He's just never got quite close enough to the lead to uh, threaten, having played so well at Royal Port Rush a couple of years ago. And here is the man who takes a one-shot lead into the final round. Yeah, it's a nice place to be walking around on your own there. Airpods in the ears, just your own little world and starting to collect your thoughts about what's ahead of you. Just everybody stay away from me. Delightful approach shot. <laughs> Followed by a pure putt for Kepka. Nice three birdies and an eagle today so far to get to five under. He's on a mission, isn't he? Well, he's still got a par five to come, Tony, and then he's got one or two more chances after that. Be interesting if he could get in and, you know, maybe 11 under par, 12 under, something like that. I know it's going to be tough. <laughs> he might just do it. Fratelli once again missing the fairway. I'm with you, Thomas. I think he goes at it so hard, he loses a bit of control. Dylan Fratelli. Looks like this stuff's going to hold us up a little bit. And I don't know if you were watching, Thomas. This, this took a little hop into one of those really high little stands of fescue. I think it's right in the middle of that clump. Kind of like the wedge. Yeah, now you're trying to read a lie. A I'm trying to read what, what's going to happen to the ball when it comes out there, but you're also trying to read what's going to happen to your golf club. I don't want the golf club wrapping around the shaft and just kind of closing the face over. You can, you can miss the fairway very easily. You can miss the fairway from here left uh, for the next one. And with that pin position, you want to... You actually want to be right of the flag if miss, you know, your miss wants to be right of the flag. Oh, there you go. Straight left. I mean, you can almost call it when you're in one of those clumps. It is just, you, no matter how big you are, how strong you are, it comes out at 45 degrees. Yeah, and he is flag. strong. He is strong. Immensely so. Yeah, but now he's left with no shot. Three bunkers in the way down slope. Oh, that's thing, right? No matter how good a lie he gets, he's not going to get it no, anywhere near the flag. Yeah, and you know, if it, looks, if it comes out a little loose and it goes well past it, you feel. Okay. Right? Get your good number, you want to hit this, all right? Play the number. That's it. See that shot. John Rahm. You get to spend some time with this guy. Start realizing here yeah, he has the desire, he has everything to be a great player, but he also has so much respect for the people and the, the things that's gone before him. I always tend to mention the great Seviano Ballesteros and everything good he does, and he's a wonderful guy to be around, John. And he oozes wanting to be the best that's ever played the game. Dedicated that US Open victory, didn't he, to Sevi? We know what a love affair Severiano Ballesteros had with the Open. Yep. So just a couple of groups, a couple of pairings left to go, four players. And Jordan Spieth walks onto the first tee, and he's out today with 
the other Canadian in the mix, Corey Connors. Isn't it great to see a couple of Canadians up there? Up to Matthias Schmidt once again, coming down the 18th. great things about this championship is that you get to see all these amateur players that have done something remarkable on the way, winning the British Amateur, the European Amateur, or whatever tournament has taken them here. But you get to see them, and they are the future of the game. The INA does so much good for the, for the young players of the game to bring them into the professional ranks, which is it's always great to see. Good. No, it's not good. It's, it's a lot better than that. <laughs> what a T-shirt. I think you're right, Dom. I, he'll be thinking, you know, par five to come. I can get him 12 under par here. Then let's see what the boys can do. What a lovely reception. What lovely memories. And here Schmidt will have to take home with him of his last day as an amateur golfer. Yuxin Lin, the only other amateur to make the cut here. He's finished at six over. So the silver medal almost certainly heading to Germany. And Schmidt. What an experience for a young man to come up to that reception. And the final home, the Open Championship, magnificent. Hopefully mum and dad are recording it back home. So Spieth and Connors set to go. There is Corey Connors, as you say, Thomas. A huge weekend for Canadian golf. They've only ever had one major champion in Mike Weir. That was 18 years ago. And we've never had a Canadian winner of the Open. So history beckons for both Connors and Mackenzie Hughes. This is game number 38. On the tee from Canada, Corey Connors. Hugely impressive back nine yesterday. In fact, it was a hugely impressive round because it was a bogey free 66. On the tee from the USA, Jordan Spieth. And just listen to that reception. He is so popular, isn't he? Plays a, a wonderful brand of golf. It was a horrid finish, bogey bogey. Yesterday. Needs to drive it better today. He drove it beautifully on day two. Yesterday he only had five out of 14 players. And with a combination of some lucky lies and great execution, managed to get away with it. But you keep doing that in this rough, sooner or later it will take its toll on you. And he did get some fortuitous bounces, no doubt about that. He was on the putting green at least an hour after he finished yesterday, after missing that short one at 18. You remember when you could do that, Tony? No. <laughs> <laughs> so the 2017 Open Champion is underway. Let's go up uh, green side. Scheffler's fourth shot. Oh, it's got away from him. 
Oh, the last thing you want to do is kick off with a double bogey. Man, that'll take the wind out of your sails. A cup cup. That's a straight forward. It's only a wedge. And trust me, he is looking at nothing but flag stick at the moment. Expecting six feet, Thomas. Oh, he just carried it too far. Yeah, a little bit of a... Just maybe a little bit strong there. Just when you get a little bit too excited mm. about how things are going. You might hit it a one or two yards further than you expect. As we head up to the 18th with our amateur friend Smith from Germany. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. It doesn't matter who you are. When you're young and you come there the first time on a Sunday, mm. all of a sudden putting seems so difficult. <laughs> So a big putt already for Scotty Scheffler. He's got this to drop. Just the one shot at the opening hole. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I tell you what. He walk off there feeling cock a hoop, actually, with a five. I feel like he's gained something with a bogey. Ian Poulter has reached the far three. 16th, good tee shot. This to get to three under. <laughs> Clearly just getting people warmed up for the Ryder Cup. <laughs> well, he look, certainly got dressed in the dark, but there you go. John Rahm on the first. These are the ones that were slipping by all day yesterday. Oh, a bit heavy handed on this one. And there is Louis Oosthuizen down the steps. Do you think he has a little look at the claret jug on the way past and says, hello, old friend? Let's have a look. Come on, give it a little glance. Bro. You know you want it. Or maybe deliberately not. <laughs> maybe. Looking at it. <laughs> Connor's second into the first. I think he was expecting it maybe to come out a little bit hot, that one. I just never got the flight. The strike looked all right. Yep. Jamie Spence is going to be following Corey Connors and Jordan Spieth. And uh, how's Jordan's ball lying, Jamie? Hey, afternoon, everybody. It's not too bad. It could be a lot worse. He can get to it from 152, but he's going to have to smash it up into the air. Let the breeze just hold it a little bit. Puts it to his favourite distance. Well, not the easiest of putts here for Brooks Cupcake. It's up and over this ridge you see in the middle of the of your screen. So up it goes, left to right, and then down to the hole. Yeah, not, not his best wedge shot in there. Should make his par, and then he's got one of the uh, most fearsome tee shots in open golf. Next up at 14, a par putt for Lee Westwood at the 18th. <laughs> Lovely playing with Matthias Schmidt. Two under the turn, Westwood, but I'm afraid he's faded over the back line. Home in 39, which is four over. And his wait for a first major championship continues. McElroy 16, this is unfortunately for par. He's going to slide back to level par for the championship, which is only just inside the top 50. Schmidt. He's got a bit of a cushion. There we 
Yu Xin Lin. As I say, finished at six over par. At the second, Ram. Hold the return touch on one. Too far left. A little left and ooh. Second tee and already getting a little irritated. Come on, knock this in, young man. Lovely. Well done to Matthias Schmidt. Managed to make an eagle at the par 5 seventh. A few drop shots on the car, but that doesn't matter. And as I say, that is enough to secure him. The silver medal for the leading amateur at the Open. And nice of Lee Westwood there with a few few words and I'm sure it's just all about what's in front of him uh, it must be a lovely day for the young man to play with such a great ambassador of the game and a lovely touch from Corey Connors from that green side bunker very close to making that one let's go up to six the defending champion Shane Lowry well, that's been some shot in here from Shane Lowry this is a tough pin position today. It's cut over that bunker. Excellent putt. You will not see many twos here today. Excellent from Shane Lowry. Good start. Oh, people dropping shots in the first few holes. The pin positions are tough. It's one under through six holes. It's a great start today. And into the top ten. Thomas, pretty impressive when you've had two years to think about this and, and worry about when you're going to get to defend again. Yeah, I remember on Friday reading a stat there saying uh, about missing the cut, defending champions missing the cut, and I thought, mm, that's a bit early <laughs> to, to put that one up there. He <laughs> certainly didn't do that, and he's, he's doing himself very proud this week, Shane Lowry. He struggled on the opening day, but he's come back nicely since the Irishman. Luce Tayson playing in the final two ball with Colin Morikawa. 25 to 3 in the afternoon here in the far southeast corner of England. And our final pairing are about to get underway. Oosthuizen, one ahead of Morikawa, a two-shot gap then to Jordan Spieth. This is game number 39. On the tee from the USA, Colin Morikawa. <laughs> Well, the highlight of this week was that Friday 64, which was absolutely wonderful in tough conditions. He was two over through six yesterday and fought his way back nicely. And this is his first ever appearance in the Open. He's an impressive young man. Seriously impressive start. Stats with iron play and approach shots in the PJ2. What a drive that is. It's gone miles. On the tee from South Africa, Louis Eustazen. Six runner up finishes in major championships since winning the Open back in 2010. And he said last night, You have to believe. You can lift the trophy. Has he got the belief? It's been a long day waiting. Anybody that says that they sleep well the night before the Sunday of a major championship when they got a chance might just be lying a little <laughs> bit to you. <laughs> Nice settler, though, isn't it? Finding the fairway at that uh, difficult opening hole. Jordan Spieth from, gosh, must be 40 or 50 feet at the first for birdie. Wow. Well, that was an unusual like, one. Man, that might be the worst long putt I've ever seen him hit. We'll get back to him and watch Tony Finau. Two 
birdies on the home stretch so far for Finn out. That one at the 15th hole. So he's in pretty good shape at five under, just outside the top 10. Now to the par putt for Spieth. It's all happening a little bit fast here. Just strong belief. Yep. Very nice. And for the one who missed on the last yesterday. Just a little bit better. He was back to his usual kind of quickest routine, I think, where he's just determined to hit the pot. Par 5, 14th. Oh, so the driver iron has just crushed it down there. Can get home easily with two irons. Corey Connors splashed out of the bunker to here, so he's got, what, about two or three feet for his par at the opening hole. To stay four behind. Oh, no. Absolute last thing you want on the opening hole is a missed short putt after a great bunker shot or a great chip or a great recovery. Ugh. Try not to let it dent the confidence. No, the only thing about that, as I guess you could say, at least it's happened early and he's got plenty of time to make amends, but that will be a little bit of a shock to the system for Corey Connors, immediately back to seven under par, five behind our leader. Look at Brooks Kepka go, five under through 13. Will it be too little, too late? We shall see. He's a four-time major champion. He's not yet an open champion. He actually came here in 2003 and watched Ben Curtis uh, lift the trophy. He was on a family vacation. They played a bit of golf. He went to play St Andrews, actually. Spieth at the second. Differential. Yeah, about 320 yards, mm. and it's into the wind today. That's uh, that's some hit from Morikawa. He got a little bit of a bounce of a downslope, but it's still some hit. It's not known to be the longest. Yeah. Anthony Wall is going to be following this final pairing. Afternoon, Anthony. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. What an afternoon it looks like. It's going to be beautiful out here. Hottest okay. year this so far. Probably a club of breeze, slightly different angle actually, hitting into the first for Oosthuizen. 154, so probably just a good strong 9 iron. And into the breeze, there's plenty just short of this pin, so no real issues here. This week has tended to be a little leak out right with his irons. Maybe he just gets ahead of it a bit, and then every now and then he gets scared of that, like he did on 14 last yesterday on the par five with the out of bounds right. Double crossed himself left, but I mean, every time he he doesn't hit a pure shot, you look at that swing and think, well, how? Because it is just glorious. It's 112. Just a gap wedge for Morikawa. Struggled here at first and second, so this is a little bit better. That's right where I was. I was on exactly that number. Finish at the hole, right? Yeah, finish at the hole. It's at 11 o'clock. See the guy in the, the blue and white stripes? Yeah. Love it. Right, right finish, at it. Finish it right on the, right on the hole. Nine at 12, right? Nine at 12. He can go straight at this. Ideally, maybe just right of it leaves the uphill putt. Looking to get off to a flyer. Soft. 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 Oh. That's a very good approach. Huh? I'm not sure, Tony, I could swing it that slow under this kind of pressure. No, <laughs> I'm with you, Thomas. Just becomes a blur, doesn't it? 
John Rahm drove it into the left rough off the tee at the second, but he's got a birdie putt here. Whew, that was just about as tough a putt as you could get out there today. Mackenzie Hughes, meanwhile. Paul Stark drop shots at the first and second. But yeah. oh, nice comeback there. Well, I don't feel better after that. Bogey, bogey, birdie start for the Canadian. Well, John Rahm, these pots are big. You just don't want to lose any momentum. All week it's been like that, hitting lips, staying out, just sliding by. Not the best of starts for John Rahm. Brooks Kupka has reached the 14th hole. The best round on the golf course. He was aiming, taking aim at the number 14 on the TV tower and cutting it off there. Uh, not the best of shots. What's it going to do? Uh, I don't know, Tony. Would you rather be in the bunker? Oh, maybe not to that flag. No, and, and he's still thinking. He's still thinking eagle, isn't he? He wants to chip that in. That was from 132 for Spieth. Bit of fresh breeze into his face now. Oh, that's right. Oh, no, stay there. Just right in between claws made that uncomfortable off the upslope. It's trouble, isn't it? There's nothing right of that flag. And Louis. Tentative. You know, it's understandable. First green, final round of the Open Championship. It doesn't matter how good your, your feel felt on the practice putting green, Thomas. That first green, you feel like you've got boxing gloves on, don't, that, don't you? Yeah, it's a different kind of, of feel getting down there. You just kind of want to roll it up to the hole and knock it in and then go to the next and try and settle into the round. Fritelli for par. Yeah, that was a short stroke, that. Short and a bit of a stab. Up to 18, Justin Thomas. Didn't scare it. Back to the first, and Morikawa for the opening birdie. Also, also shy. Okay. No blows traded on the first. here just short of the bunker here at 14 a little uphill pitch plenty of green to work with this for eagle oh that's poor really poor gets the wrong side of the ridge pretty good from down the bank there tony yeah absolutely jay that was awkward wasn't it a couple of different ways you could have played that. I think that's good enough. Jay Townsend has joined Tony Johnston and myself, uh, Dom Hollier. You'll be hearing more from Europe's 2018 Ryder Cup captain Thomas Bjorn a little bit later. And it is Jamie Spence and Anthony Wall out on the course for us. Nice little view there. Ball almost outside his right foot. Hands ahead. 
Just giving it a little stab, get it running forward. Rom at the third, 227, as you see up there in the top left. Tough hole location because there's not much green to work with. Good safe play out there, taking the bank to the left out of play. There's some hole locations that you see, you know they're there. You want to shoot at them, but you shouldn't. To two. Well, Connor's played out of the bunker. He's here in three, across the green, left to right for his par. He can get away from you in a hurry round here at Royal St. George's. Two shots gone in two holes for Corey Connors. So he's back to six under. Six behind Oosthuizen, our leader. Swooping down to the second tee, this par four. Dog legs from right to left. And that breeze I was mentioning, Dom, is definitely freshening a little bit. Actually makes this probably slightly easier as a tee shot running out right. It's almost out of play. As long as you're sort of middle to left half carrying those left bunkers at 270. And it's those left bunkers you're trying to avoid. So drivers the plate for Morikawa. Such a great tee shot because it gives you the option. Go with the driver over the trouble. Take an iron to the right. And that just hangs on for Morikawa, but not a very good angle. He'll be really pleased, though. He made a hash of that hole yesterday, found the uh, fairway bunkers, and ended up holding a really good part for bogey. This could be telling right here after a short miss on 18 <laughs> yesterday. No problem right there. Spent a lot of time in the putting green. That looked pretty confident. As opposed to, you know, sometimes, Tony, I'm sure you've done this, I've done this. You, you have the hit me, wish me, watch me stroke. <laughs> just just hoping it goes in. Driver for Ustazen looks solid on the first tee. Can he repeat it? He's picking the tee up. I think he has striped it. Two lovely tee shots from the final group. Ram across the green at the third for a bounce back birdie. going to seriously annoy him. He knows that six behind, he needs to try and give the, give, give the putts a chance, give yourself an opportunity. I don't think this will be short. And has to put up a ridge there. That's going to be disappointing for Kepka. Green high in two and a very indifferent pitch shot. Now at an eagle putt for Shane Lowry at the par five seventh. Again, up the slope, over, down, and round. Back-to-back yeah. oh. -back birdies will get him to seven under. And just five behind for the defending champion. Yeah, he was asked last night, you know, how much of a chance do you think you've got from five under when 12 under was leading? He said, well, probably not much, but if you can go out there, shoot maybe 65, get in at 10 under par, you just never know. And you do just never know, because there's an awful lot of pressure on the shoulders of those guys who are ahead of Shane Lowry on the leaderboard. And there are going to be plenty of twists and turns uh, over the next four hours or so. Nice progress from Tony Finnau and from Victor Hovland. Such an impressive young Norwegian. First Norwegian to win both on the PGA Tour and on the European Tour as well. And here is McIntyre. He has a very streaky putting stroke. When he starts making them, he makes them from everywhere. And he does, and that's two in a row. Three in the last five holes, a couple under par through eight for the only Scott in the field.
15th tee. Kepka. A ripper. Looking back towards the third tee, first of the par threes at Royal St George's. Yeah, it's a three and a half, really, isn't it? This one, this third <laughs> yeah. hole. Yeah, you're not, not far off. Two twenty-seven. You got nearly two fifty for the eleventh, so it's a tough hole. This third hole, two twenty-seven yards. Flag on the front of the green, but ooh, it's a tricky one on that left-hand side. Wants to drill it into the bank. Six paces past the pin. Short rough, but not an easy chip. <laughs> they missed in the wrong place at the second. He's done exactly the same at the third as well. Well, who stays in at the second? How far, Anthony? Yeah, 136, Dom. Just under 290 off the tees. It just gives you an indication. He's ripped that up there. It's, it's not that long. So There's a good breeze there, even though it's pretty warm. Pitching into an upslope. Might just see him chip a nine here with this freshening breeze. Yeah. Dada. Yeah, that's the one. It's let him down a little this week. That little leaker. Yeah, there you go. Just a little leaker off to the right. Driver for John Rahm at the fourth. Overall, maybe around that. Big bunker. Hard to lay it down any better than that one for Rahm. On the flat side of the fairway, right center opens up the green. You can see more of the green. Up the left side, it's a blind shot. We go back to two fairway in Morikawa. Yep. And quite remarkable, really, making his first appearance. 132, just short left. will be absolutely perfect. Right. Yeah, beautiful shot. Lovely shot. Just making, he wants to make a little statement. He says it's Mr. Green. He just wants to let him know. Look at me. Morikawa showed a lot of maturity yesterday. Got after that bad start and uh, really fought back bravely as we go to the defending champion, Lowry. Second to eight from 216. He's been laying up off the tee a lot this week, leaving himself longer shots in, albeit from the fairway most of the time. And that is a bad miss right there. You can see there's a bunker over there. A lot of green to cover. Forward to the 15th and Kepka's second. Asking it to be right. Oh, it's going to come around. It's going to come around. It's going to get closer and closer. Excellent shot. You think he thinks he still can win, post a score? Hundred percent. What's the number in his mind? Eleven or twelve. Proper alpha male, isn't he, Brooks Kepka? <laughs> well, that chip on the second was, I reckon, nine and a half out of ten in terms of difficulty for Spieth. And this one's seven and a half on the Richter scale. <laughs> uh, he's brilliant. I hope I'm not going to curse him because. Honestly, that chip on the last, I think Connors is going to play per first. This is a chip all day long for Connors. But he's putting it. I just think this is just a chip and a spin, but it's, it's quite slow up this bank. He's got to give this a healthy hit, Connors. Pretty good. A 
it's dropped back a hole. Ustay's faced with a similar chip to Spieth. Actually quite nestled. I think he's got the right play. They're in danger here. He's quite close. That's the only issue. He's got to try and run it along that little ledge. He can easily come out hot. That's the issue. Yeah. Can't ask for a lot more than that from where he was. He's lifting himself a little tester. A little bit of fluff underneath the ball here for Spieth. Help him get this ball to release. Pitches it into the bank and wow, that is just a can you believe it? But I do because he keeps doing it. He's amazing. Another amazing guy right here, Ian Poulter. For par at the last. He's enjoyed himself out there today, playing with Rory McIlroy. I beg your pardon, he's a group ahead. Yeah. 68 to round off the week for Ian Poulter. <laughs> Two good weeks, played nicely up in Scotland as well, and he'll be delighted with that. Nice way to sign off. And just the perfect leave, just to set down an early marker for Morikawa. Just inside the hole, pretty firm mind. He's had a couple of good looks at it, maybe a little bit of doubt, possibly. Maybe it's just that one of those funny ones where it's just a little bit too straight, looking for something early on. Played it straight, and Anthony said inside left, and I think Anthony was spot on right there. Maybe a little harder for the line he chose. It would have gone in, but uh, there wasn't much movement there. Sometimes straight putts can confuse you in their simplicity. That could have, could have been a big touch, and if he holds that, he gets to 12 under. Ustay's in no give. Could almost have stolen the lead. Kepka, birdie putt. Left to right. Oh, you can see how hard he's trying. He hasn't lost belief yet. Huge putt right here for Ustazen. Hold it with confidence. Good speed. Routine never changed. If you're nervous, a putt like that, it can show your nerves. I didn't see any there. Nothing, nothing, Jay. And that's just a nice length putt to hold early on. To four. Builder. Second shot for John Rahm, 195 yards to go. Back right hole location, getting aggressive. It's so easy to go over the green. There's also a bank that can feed off to the right, but Rahm plays a brilliant one right there. It's hard to look past Rahm and see many that have hit it better than John Rahm. We go down to the fourth tee and Jamie. Yeah, 500 yarder today and it's got some teeth at last, this fourth hole, hitting over Himalaya bunker. It's into this freshening breeze in off the left for Spieth. Big fairway though down there. Better than that down four. And down the right half of the fairway, which is the flat half. That's pure. So it's as you were at the top, because Ustazen still leads Morikawa by one. for par at eight. Oh. Yeah, he knew it was 
going left. You can kind of see the knees bend a little bit there. Always the first sign of a player bagging. Oh, it needs a little help as we look back from three green to three T. And as Jamie Spence was saying, almost playing like three and a half. I just feel though with this front left hand pin, it's probably the easiest of the four days. If you can get it on the putting surface, 227. There's a little bit of breeze there, but the flag is showing very little, but it is there. Balls down there, well below the level of the green. And our cameras really flatten it out on your screens at home. Dustin Johnson has reached the tenth hole. Horrid day yesterday. Yeah. It was five over par through eleven holes yesterday. A couple of uh, late birdies but he went from right in contention to pretty much out of it, I'm afraid, with that round eventually of 73. And it really suits a draw the third. Plenty of green down the right. Everything kicks down towards that pin also. TV Town's a good line behind the green. Just taking his time, rightly so, might be in between clubs. Tough start here, one through four, not easy. You miss these fairways, you're going to struggle to get anywhere near the pins. Great set of par threes at Royal St. George's. Pretty good leave right there. Straightforward pitch shot. Not that far off the green and not that far down the bank. We go ahead to Rom. Yeah. Four birdie. Get back to where he started the day at seven under. And Rom and Dustin Johnson have a little mini event going on themselves. Whichever one finishes ahead of the other today will be world number one tomorrow. The last for Rory McElroy, winner of the Open Battle. Royal Liverpool in 2014. And he signs off his week with a one over pass 71. And he'll be heading to the Olympics with Shane Lowry. Kepka, 16. 155 today. Cut over on the right side of the green, just left of a slope that takes it down to that right bunker. You want to be aggressive, but you know better. That's a good shot. Most of the players will be aiming right there where Kepka's ball is. Well, it is an absolutely peerless day in southeast England. And Royal St. George's. We are 12 months later than we should have been here because of the COVID pandemic and the cancellation last year. But what a week we've had. It really has been entertaining right from the start. And to have all those major champions in the mix gives you a pretty good idea of the tests we've had this week and how they've enjoyed being back at the Open, which is the original. It's the oldest major. And of course, it is the final major because of the way the schedule has been changed now of the season. Garcia rounding his week off nicely. Bit of a surprise for Cam Smith, who's been in such good form lately. But an excellent uh, Sunday for Bryson DeChambeau. 65 blows. Kepka. He's just thinking birdie, birdie, birdie to finish. Get to 11. But got to make this one first and gets it completely wrong. Now, 
John Rahm, he has woofed this quite a way past at the fourth. Just about <laughs> grabs enough of the hole for his par. Good thing that hole wasn't just slightly smaller because it would have been another lip out. As I was alluding to earlier, he's striking the ball so well, probably better than anybody besides maybe Louis Oosthuizen. Yeah, he drilled his tee shot into the third here, which is where we go. There's more a cow up. And he's just run back a little bit further, really, than you would like. So this one's a little bit tricky. I would say half the field would probably putt this. But Morikawa with a, just a bump and run up the hill, trying to skid it stone dead. That's pure class. Acclimatised, didn't he, in Scotland last week? I know you watched him turn. He had a bit of a shocker on Sunday there. Let's go to Spieth at four. Yes, that's what I'm trying to figure out what to do. Can it get on the green on the high one? It just has to be a really nice shot, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. That has less variables. Need some wind, man. Otherwise, I'll hit one less, can't I? Three seconds. Up there. Just have a drop on the little putt there. Want to pitch it, what? 95. Yeah, 95 is playing. 202. Just past where a six would go here. Yeah. I'm going to play the punch, buddy. I just, I feel like I can commit to the punch versus having a kind of soft flick up in the air. Okay. I just you know want you to, yeah. I don't like the fade into this hole. You know yeah, I, mean? I just want you to feel that in your face. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, regardless of the punch, it doesn't make much of a difference. Left it, huh? yep. Well, he's got 199. Connors is short. He's got to pop up that huge mound, and that's where you do not want to be. Right, Jordan it. Spieth, all the chat. Back go edge. Go You've got to be brave here yep. at four. You've yep. got to get, get oh. it up there. It is a nightmare two putt from the front of this green up that mound. Time player and Kenny take that long to decide. You know they're in between clubs or in between the type of shots they want to play, and that typically ends not well. Putter for Ustays at the third. Okay. Pretty good. Mackenzie Hughes for birdie. Got off to a horrid start. He's yet to make a par and still has not, but the good news is that was a birdie and not a bogey. Bogey, bogey, birdie, bogey, birdie for the Canadian. At least he's moving in the right direction as he heads to six. We go back to three and who stays in to clean this one up. Good up and down at the third. Yeah, it's Pass all the way for the leading three, Ustase and Morikawa and Spieth. Here's Rum with a long iron at five. And you really want to get it up the left side, left. but there's a couple of bunkers up there that are just menacing. He gets it up on the Campbell's table, and he's going to have a view of at least some of the green. Very well played tee shot. Back to the tee at the fourth hole. And just hesitating, just a fraction. Just a hair different breeze. So really trying to send this as far right as you can and keep it on the fairway. A little bit like the first couple of holes. Driver is the play. You leave yourself too much, you can really struggle with the second. See you, Sharper. Fantastic. 
launches it way beyond the yawning Himalaya bunker. Doesn't get better than that. Well, we've seen some wonderful short game skills so far from Spieth. How about this, Jamie? Well, this is probably the easiest one of the lot. I think you'll hold this. Those last two are ridiculous. This is so difficult, though. Not a bad lie. Look at this man. Brilliant he is. Yeah, Jamie says the shot that goes seven feet is brilliant. Just goes to show you the difficulty that he thought it was. And Spieth makes it look fairly simple. He can't keep doing this, though, can he? We said that yesterday, and you wouldn't think so. Back to the tee. Who stays? A little further left than Morikawa, but the fairway slopes from left to right. We should get a kick back down to the flattish area. And those are fine. Ball might be a little bit below his feet, but both second shots are blind for both for both players so it's all okay dustin johnson downhill lie in the bunker at the long par three fluffy sand have to get it up quick over the face and that is just all world right there that's why he's the number one ranked player in the world and he's playing hard just to retain that right now head to head with john rom both on six under parts we go to 18 and Finau. Where was that yesterday from Dustin Johnson? That's the question. Finn out will not close out with a birdie today. But it's been another good open for him. 67 to uh, close out the week for the very likable American. And five under par just outside the top ten as it stands. Ram second at five. Over the mounds. May be able to see the top of the flag. Just backing off a little. To see it land. Good shot. Good shot again. Yeah, T to green. He's been a bit special this week. You're absolutely right. He's got to start hitting greens. You've got to make it as easy as you can. He's only hit one, and that was on the first speed. So putting himself under the pressure. But I sort of want to see him chip more, but I'm, I'm willing him on. Does that make sense? Yes, because it's fun to watch. Oh, he's brilliant. This is downhill, right to left for speed for his par. Vital. No. That was pretty casual. Yeah, it was, but he's just tempting fate by mm. forcing himself to get up and down all the time. He's going to have to tighten up his ball striking as he falls four shots behind the lead. Now going to the fifth tee. We'll go up to Kepka at 17, 420 yard par four. Interesting going with the driving iron here, laying back to this front left hole location where he can spin it. We had a great discussion last night where you drive it up there and pitch it into the bank for your second or do you lay back, play a full shot? Shane Lowry for a birdie at nine. Left to right, down the hill. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Catches the side door. Excellent front line of 33. Climbs to fifth with nine holes to go. Five back, but only four in front of him. Could he? Could he do it? Could he successfully defend his open title? Lowry is up there. You look at the scores and you look at the sea out there, you wonder, what is it going to take? The conditions are benign for Lynx Golf. No one has really jumped out there in the last five or six groups. Everyone is just waiting. Who, who's going to grab it? Or who's going to put pressure on Ustazen and Morikawa? No one has so far besides this man. But he's running out of holes. He's second to last hole. Big false front, Tony, on this 17th green. Yes, indeed. 
got to make sure you get it over that. Oh, At the very least, doesn't like it. Yeah, I think trying to hit it very hard to carry the false front and get it to come down softly and just launched it a little right. That's a long putt, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big old green, isn't it? Mm. Who stays in left center of the fairway, 205 yards, has to land it. Ideally, well, that's going right, so we won't even talk about what ideal was. Now he needs to get lucky and get a lie. It's going to kick over into the rough. There's that shot again, though. The weak, kind of short right one that we've been talking about, Tony. Yeah, that's exactly the one. Is bad shot nearly every time. It's that one. And he'll know what's causing it, but he just, he's just but trying to he iron it out. Think you can get a trappy stick, good full trappy stick in three. Do you not? I think so too. I mean, it's a, it's hotter. It's okay. That's that's six six is probably going a little more than 190. Right? 100%. Yeah. So we had a good trappy six. I think it's perfect. It takes long out, but I like it, dude. I'm right there with you. Good committed golf swing. Where are we finishing this one? Yeah, I'm excited about that. So you're gonna, it's going to be like a trappy neutral one? Yeah, so a slight draw. Okay. So let's just start it with the green umbrella then. Okay. So we're going to hit a slight fall. draw. It'll fall basically there then, yeah? Okay. Yep. Okay. Three really good drives yeah, for Morikawa. Yeah. It's probably not quite as good an angle, but actually it's, it's probably clearer mentally the picture you're trying to draw to yourself. 191, looking long left. Trying to catch the camber. Also headed right. Catches the side slope. And again, the door was sort of just open for him a little bit. He just wanted to get that in close and apply some pressure. And he hasn't. Rob for birdie at five. We saw his second shot a little bit right of the hole. You can see some of the slopes he has to deal with as well, uphill right to left. Up out of it early. Short. Yeah, you can't do that at this point. No. He's trying to make up ground. Well, you know, Jay, he's blasted the last couple past. I think he's tr he was trying to force the pace a bit. And he's realized that, and then suddenly gone soft. Back on the tee at five. Spieth. Driving iron here, aiming right, trying to play a little chaser up there, right to left. kick right when it gets up there. Oh, it just oh. held on to the top table. I thought it was right of the table. Very good now. Just avoided that sandy divot as well. Yeah, really good right there. His right foot is so quiet. His left foot slides a little bit. I never like a sliding left foot. It's hard to come in to return to impact the same every time when your foot slides a different amount from one swing to another. As we go to Fratelli at six. Great hole location here in the back right. And well done for the South African. Picks up his first birdie today. Back to even par on the day. And he joins the group at five behind the lead of his fellow countrymen. Here's the part for Kepka all the way across the green at the 17th. From that range, that's a really good effort. But he'll be disappointed. He will, every hole that ticks off without a birdie is a disappointment for Kepka. Well, this is not good. No, but Shane Lowry's pretty good at these, but he's going to have to dig. Uh, no. Ooh, there's a couple of really uh, deep bunkers short and left. And that is where he is. Not only are those bunkers deep, Going around the course looking at every bunker on Tuesday morning, the sand in those bunkers is flat. Unlike a lot of them from the middle, it, it kind of comes up to the face, so it will roll back down. Those two bunkers, short left of 10, the ball will roll right up to the edge and not roll back. I mean, it's going to finish pretty similar with taking all the rest out of here. Going that way. Absolutely. I'm thinking if I threw a ball there, it would get pretty close. Okay. Go straight that way. It's, it's you can't stop it. It's all running away. Isn't it? And it is an interesting conversation, really, because I don't honestly believe if 
give him 10 balls. I think he'll struggle to get it inside six feet. So maybe using the back bank is an option. Guarantee the five, run it down, leave yourself 12 feet. Let's just have a listen, see where we go with it. He's definitely looking up there, isn't he, Wally? It's not a bad light, Tony. It's just a really, really difficult shot because he's coming across such a steep ledge. Any sort of bounce, and it's actually probably at Morikawa's feet. So I don't blame him for going left, trying to get some momentum on the ball and run it all the way around. But there is a little bit of luck involved. Yeah, look where he's headed. Way left. Use that slope. With the whole cut over in the kind of right side of the green, you've got to really tempt fate and get it almost all the way up to the rough to get it to come back. There's no way that comes back all the way. Well, he hasn't hit it high enough, has he? No, you had to hit it up into that, that first cut, it, it, which is very severe, but almost to the rough to get enough momentum to get it within eight feet of the hole. So Ustazen will have that for his par. Let's go to Spieth and his second into five, 169 yards. One foot range for him. Yeah, there's nobody on this planet better from 20 to 30 feet. And a worse lie for Morikawa, but an easier shot because he's pin high. Only had one go at it, really. And that was nicely played. It sounded like he played an explosion shot, kind of like a bunker shot with uh, a lot of club head speed. tee shot here at six 183 yards just should perfectly suit his little cut shot in this back right corner of the green exquisite is this where John Ron starts making his move needs to hasn't made a birdie yet today John Ron so he needs to start moving forward. Well, there's a three shot cushion between Morikawa and Kepka at the moment. Morikawa 11 under, Kepka 8 under. Ustazen is four clear of Kepka. Interesting. I just looked at the, uh, the leaderboard and the, and the groupings. The last 14 players that tee off, no one is under par. Pretty amazing that. Those are the guys that are playing the best this week. It's a Sunday at the Open, I guess. Looking down the right, those days, and just starting to see a little bit of a nice glazed area. So this is reasonably quick. In you go. Oh. All about the second shot, really, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Set, well, both of them set themselves up beautifully with their tee shots. We're both poor. Makes this putt even bigger. Poor Cowan knows that Ustazen's going to drop a shot. Only one. Good shot from Spieth from 169. Got it pin high. This is just straight down the green. I can't see anything. Don't leave the hole. Looks a little bit of both, but overall, you can overread them here. If it says straight, hit it straight. They've got to get moving, though, these two. Four behind now, Speed. How did it stay out? How? He won't know, of course, what's happening behind him to lose Tazen and Morikawa. How perfect is his pace on those 25 and 30 footers? 
he's not the only one that's surprised when he misses from that range. We are as well. He is a pleasure to watch, mm. both for his good shots and his bad, because the bad shots, we know what's coming next, to right to left or for par. Just for a share of the lead. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. is gonna drop one, the lead's gonna be 11. Both of those players will be co-leaders. Three clear of Kepka and Spieth, but let's not forget Kepka's on 18. He's run out of holes, one would think. It is, I'm afraid, a bogey five for the South African. And that's what I was talking about. That's oh. the flat bunker. I saw that in practice when I was walking around, and this was inevitable. It was going to happen to someone. He's just trying to chip it into the middle of the bunker. Absolutely no shot, Jay. These Nothing. are the only two bunkers on the entire golf course that are greenside bunkers that don't have a splashing up so the ball would roll back. John Rahm for his first birdie today. Three wood for Morikawa. Just trying to nudge this down the right, maybe. Get a piece of the top ledge if possible. Makes all the difference for the view of the green. Another fairway hit from Morikawa. Mainly off the right, just a pair of them. I quite like that play, Jay. A little bit further back, you can see more of the green, the gap of the dunes. At this point, I think it's just so important to be playing out of the short grass, Anthony. Yeah, he looks good off the tee. Hussein's no slouch, though. He tends to play a little bit more aggressive here. He's looking, looking more down the left. Leaning right. That little table called Campbell's Table at this point in the championship becomes a little bit more narrow over there because you're afraid of going left in those two bunkers in the Sahara bunker, the wild looking one at the top of the screen. Penalty for a miss on Sunday seems exponential. This is Norway's Victor Hovland. Five under par, is he gonna finish there or is he gonna finish at six under? And in his first ever open, that is a bogey free. 66 for Victor Hovland. Excellent. Kept on the tee with an iron tain taking that right bunker out of play. 320 yards to reach it, and just goes to show you how things have firmed up. Earlier in the week, guys were hitting three woods, the medium length players hitting drivers, but not the case. A lot more run out this Sunday afternoon. Second bunker shot, fourth shot on the 10th hole for Shane Lowry. I love the bunker cam right there in the middle of all the action, but it was a really deep bunker, difficult to get out of. You can see the depth of the bunker right there. Shane walks the other way around it. Sixth hole, Spieth. This is the longest it's played all week. Flag in the back right hand corner. 183 yards, and it's slightly into the breeze as well. Be a six iron, just a smooth one for speed here. Maybe a big seven. If it's a seven, he's got to flush it. Get to the green. Well, not only did he not flush it, it was a clear miss hit, and now he's left with at least a 40 yard bunker shot. And not straightforward. You heard him say, Fat Lowry for his bogey. Huge, isn't it, in terms of momentum, this for Shane Lowry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a lot of work for a bogey, that. 
And he's one of the very few guys in the top 20 that's under par. Here's another one. He is under par. Brooks Kopka. And he'll be taking dead aim. Make three here. And you never know in golf. You just never know. What a lovely day he's had on the links. Brooks Kopka. So many good shots. So much good golf. He'd still be disappointed about yesterday. Kind of threw him out of the tournament. But it's only got to land like 10 on, right? Yeah, he said earlier in the week, didn't he? He was asked what he thought about Ross and George. He said, well, it's not my, not my favourite. I wonder whether that's difficult. He said, it doesn't matter. I don't have to like a course to play it well. But you just kind of wonder whether that psychology plays into things at all. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, interesting to get Thomas thoughts. I had courses that... I really liked and didn't play them well. Others I didn't really care for, but they seem to suit my game. I mean, I don't think it matters. It's always fun to play a course that you like because it, it's more inspiring as we look at the two balls on the fifth fairway. See your shot, bud. 84, 94. Yep, line 84. And just a hint of help. They're down in the dip. They can't feel that 193 with relatively tight pin on the left for Morikawa. No more than the seven iron. Well, what about that for speed? Can you believe it? Bounce short the bunker. Total miss it. Got a good lie. Lip won't be a problem. I might have to get this ball close up the ridge and down the other side. It's the downhill after the slope that's a difficult thing I, he won't be able to spin this at least not much i think he's got to play for a run really difficult but let's be honest he shouldn't be here now with the ridge in play that he had to carry that was overall a pretty good shot but uh, probably not one he expected when he was Practicing, it might have practiced out of that bunkers, but it wouldn't have been to that back right hole location. Look at all the people out there watching these great players. Go to five, Ustazen. Yeah, Luis almost this far forward, hey. Almost has a look at the green. He's not liking this. It's going right. It's okay. He's just not quite firing these two yet. What used to be said when you look at the whole scoring is that the first four or five holes here at Royal St. George's are causing problems for pretty much everyone. And then the golf course opens up from there. Yeah, it's testing him, Thomas. It's testing him out here. Connors down the green, quick putt. Once it goes over the ridge, it'll start going right to left from about here. Well, that is a much welcome birdie for Canada's Corey Connors. Horrid start. Bogey at the first, bogey at the second, but he steadied things down. And now he's moving back in the right direction. So he's only four behind now. Here for South Africa's Dylan Fratelli at the par five seventh. Coming off that nice birdie at six and follows it up. So back to back birdies after bogeying the third hole into red numbers for the day. And he's the only person in the last 14 to tee off that are under par. Spieth taking a long look at this one as is his caddy Michael Greller from the other side of the hole. Yeah, and it's been a struggle, Dominic. So far, I'm going to say must make, but they're all must make on a Sunday of the Open. Down the right-hand side for Spieth. It's uphill a bit. Needs a firm stroke here. Oh. 
two gone in three holes, I'm afraid, for the 2017 Open champion. And Spieth falls back to seven under. And this golf course is too difficult. You can't play the Harry Houdini act for four straight days around here. It's going to catch you out. It's been an amazing exhibition of, of grit and determination and short game play. But I think everyone agrees you have to put the ball in a fairway on the green. This golf course is just going to show its teeth, even without wind. So Connors and Spieth are heading off to the par five seventh. We'll go to number five. And just down a little step, Dom. It's going to move right to left early on, then just straighten out. Actually quite a good chance to get his day going. Quiet in that group to start with, but Cup Cup on the last. This is to finish on nine under par for the championship. Oh. If anything, that definitely needed to go in just to have a chance if it all unraveled for the others. Excellent round of all 465. No bogeys. That lovely eagle there on the seventh. Good week's work for Brooks. He won't feel it like that because he only thinks about winning major championships, but a good week's work. Morikawa has had a little teach from Oosthuizen. Mm. That little uphill at the end, I think, is fooling them. We saw Spieth come up short with his. Seven fairway, John Rahm. And a pin position's on the left side of the screen today. You're just going at just left of that bunker. Green side bunker. Oh. Oh, he's going straight out of it. Come on! Oh, my gosh, what that is. I actually thought he was going in. <laughs> See a straight goal shot, that was well there. Excellent. Absolutely brilliant from John Ron. He just pushed it a little bit, Thomas, didn't he? Spieth back on the tee at the seventh. Easily reachable today. It's actually slightly down, Bruce, for once today. Connors is down the left. He's okay. He can have a crack at the green. Get it over this hill, though, and it'll go far, far away for Spieth, but he needs a good one, needs to get back on track. What about an eagle? Oh. Well, he's hit the tee shot, straight down the middle. Oh, nice bit of run there for Jordan Spieth as well. Corey Connors striding out in front of him. Just made the birdie at six. Well worth another look. Yeah, we get everybody excited. They're all gathered around there and the natural grandstand that the six provide. That's such a beautiful little golf hole that. That's where Morikawa and Ustazen are now. Talked about the fact that it was going to be a gruelling 18 holes. Colin Morikawa. Also about just trying to stick to the process. It's a thing you hear a lot of people say. It's very much his mantra. And I have to say, Dom, I feel with a slight wind change. Yes, I know the scoring is a little bit better today, but with the pins tucked away, it's a real hard grafting day. A little bit like yesterday, the scoring drastically changed. Hardest to the week, considering only half a field were playing. Greens have got to bounce in them. You've got to really catch the right slopes and just try and feed them down. 
cut, not cut, cut, Lloyd. Anything long here, there's a bunker ball. right, which Anything might just catch it. Smash, Trevor, to get 69 in the air out of it? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. So 183. Finish, I think we need to just play this wind yeah. straight across. Tiny see, see how you kind of see like the little view in the fence? Two options trying to pitch it really just over that first big ridge or maybe just feed it off the bank at the back. Yes. So I got to start it's it. Stay, on the it's got to stay just left of where the court is. Okay. So I got to start it on the down middle. Right of the on the down, middle of the down. Yeah. Middle of the down, right? Bottom of the V, yeah? Yeah. And it's not helping, is it? Anything from a hard eight to just a pushy seven. Just try and feed it and camber it round. Even if it is and you get a little more and it carries 76, I think it's fine. I feel it hurting now. Yeah, no, it's slightly hurting mostly off the left. Yeah, I love it. Let's see if it. It's certainly a great example of why these caddies get paid a lot of money to do a job. When you get to this Sunday afternoon at a major championship, you've got to know your job. All about adding value, Thomas. Good from the tape. Just didn't quite get back there. We saw the great approach shot, nearly an albatross. Really settle for an eagle to get to eight under. Okay. Rom finally holds a putt, and you almost feel for him. You get, you're feeling his frustration. You get frustrated watching him. He keeps hitting good shots, doesn't make them, but there he is, tied for third. For seven holes, he's within. Three of the lead. Could John Rahm make a big run? And Ustazen's ball flight really makes up his mind here. Much higher, floaty iron. Here we try to pitch this pretty close and just let it feed round from the back tier, I would have thought. Yep, that's what he was looking to do. Giving himself 20, 25 feet. Tough pin position on a six. Still looking for his first birdie today. As is Morikawa. It's been five straight pars for the American. Let's go up to Jordan Spieth and his second into the par five seventh. Time for a good one. 238, 220 the front. Pitch it just short, just short, just on the front edge. Just let it scoot up that green. Been on the left hand side, so this is how this hole should play. It's been playing much longer all week. And hit two big woods to get anywhere near it. Not today, just the medium irons now. Five or four. I think this is a five iron for speed. Down the breeze, this freshening breeze. Great gallery around this hole. To, to stop because if it just goes a little bit further left it falls off that green and down to the left but just hung on and now it's good big, big chance for an eagle for Jordan Spieth good angle for Connors as well 234 just a little bit closer from beautiful line a little platform on the left hand side about getting over the first four or five holes over with here at Royal St. George's and then you, some opportunities come your way. And so that seventh is definitely a big one. Up to 14, Dustin Johnson, the hole that was his nemesis here back in 2011, cost him the championship when he hit it out of bounds. He's at seven under par with a birdie there, but probably running out of holes now, four to go. Shane Lowry trying to bounce back after that good bogey at the 10th, where he hold a lengthy bogey putt. 32 just slides by. That was an amazing tee shot. And you saw on the graphic 253 yards at this par 3 11th. 
The three is a good score, and that's what he walks off with. Yeah, unsurprisingly, the hardest hole on the course. Just one birdie all day at the 11th. Here's Morikawa. He's putting for birdie here at six. And quite a tricky one, actually, up and over the slope. It, you think it's going to be quick, but actually it's quite, quite a sort of fluffy light, sort of dark green area back here at six. Very easy to leave this one short. Well, he's not left it short. Oh, a bit of extra right hand on that one. He's snuck by a good four or five feet. Robert McIntyre at the 12th has to get to seven under par and seven under is not out of the conversation. Did he get it there? He did right in the middle fist pump for the likable Scott. With the final tear not making any headway. Seven under eight under plenty of holes left. They have to be thinking like they have a chance back to six and a much clearer pitcher actually hit seven iron. Louis after he saw Murray Cowers eight come up short. This is right to left all the way. He'll make his par. Murray Cowers still with work to do. Let's go to eight and fresh off the eagle. Ram. Yeah, this has been iron off the tee all week. And this is the fairway wood. Ola! Tricky one. Getting it into the wind. Been very lucky. Been very lucky. Yes, okay. Well, he's asking it to get lucky. Right it definitely does need to get lucky down there. It looked heavy. The tee to the green at eight. Dylan Fratelli. He's buried the two previous holes. Does he have some magic here from long range? That's a pretty good line. Just a little bit wide, but that is a good putt from over 40 feet. Swooping down to the seventh, the par five, and some eagle opportunities here for Spieth and Connors. Oh, and they're holdable. They are holdable. That 2017 Open at Birkdale. That's the best two hours of golf I've ever, ever witnessed from this man. We need a bit of that magic right now. Mr. Spieth, come on. They're all cheering you on. He's so popular out here. Just going to a little bit off the left when it gets halfway. Just going to dive it right. Yeah. How about that? The eagle does land for Jordan Spieth. And he's back to level par today. And he is only two behind now. Thomas, I was looking at you after I watched that ball go in the hole, and you were shaking your head. I mean, how does he do it? Oh, he's just a great putter. He sees them, doesn't he? He comes up there, he sees them, he understands the putts, he, under he, he picks his points, he, he believes and trusts. But John Rahm and Jordan Spieth both making an eagle here on seven will send a nice signal down to the leading group. If you don't pick up your game, we are here for, to take this trophy home. He makes things happen, doesn't he, Jordan Spieth? He really does. Connors, can he follow Spieth in? He can. Both Connors and Spieth in the penultimate group, nine under par. Yeah, and after that poor start, he's gone eagle, he's gone birdie eagle. Nice recovery. Yeah, it was all a bit quiet there for a while, and then all of a sudden we've had three eagles. Boom, off we go. In for a great afternoon. It never disappoints this championship. Just the two par fives here at Royal St George's, number seven and number 14. This is Morikawa for par at six. Nicely hold. And you had to wonder after his putting week last week, especially last Sunday, would he look fragile there? And he certainly didn't. Shane Lowry, good drive at the 12th. Yeah, there's a 
straightforward for a great wedge player like Shane Lowry. Big bounce. That's all about the bounce. Just maybe a little bit surprised with how firm they're getting now. And we saw Ron miss the fairway left at eight, and this is some nasty stuff right here. Unlikely to be able to reach the green. Probably be doing well to reach the fairway. Didn't even try to think about the green as strong as he is. That was just a strictly back out in play. Well, sometimes you just got to take it. You hit it there, so you've got to accept that you just have to chip it out. Brooks Kepka leads in the clubhouse after a bogey free 65 on Sunday here. And we're all tied up at the top with Oosthuizen and Morikawa. are changing though, aren't they, with those two eagles. Connors and Spieth closing in. Shane Lowry has a birdie putt and the 12th. Good tempo, bud. And that's the tee at seven, and that's Colin Morikawa. Yeah, and it's about 290, really, to carry all the trouble, which is loads today, no issue, really. They can fly it down the right, get the down slope as you've seen, have a good eagle chance. He's flirting with the rough down the left hand side, but he's okay. Third shot now for Ram into eight. An aggressive one. Oh. Give, yourself, give yourself a chance for the par. That's all you can ask when you hit that bad a tee shot. Who stays would like to? Just rip this one up the right center. And that is a perfect line right on the left edge of the right of the spectacle bunkers. Is that what they're called? It is, yes. Doubting or surprised? I'm, I'm not doubting at all. I mean, a bit, but <laughs> you can it go seems with like either. There's spectacle okay. bunkers on all these links courses. <laughs> Eighth hole. It's been playing quite short this week, slightly into the breeze. So it's just a three wood. Quite an aggressive play from Connors, and a lot of irons off this tee. Oh no! Oh no! That's left. Look out, everybody! Not that left. Straight down the middle, isn't it? Way back near the coast, near the beach, Jordan Spieth. Well, what a hole that was, that previous hole for these two. He's got the driver. Now, this is what I want to see down here. Get it down there, hit a wedge to this back pin. It's the only way you're going to make three. This is an aggressive play, a statement of intent. They've been hitting irons here all week. Just the two bunkers up the right to miss. Jamie said it is aggressive. He's trying to play them there. It's only 27 yards wide. Short of the bunkers is 36. But the ball fits. Not a problem for speed. It's a lot easier to hit an aggressive drive after you made eagle. You feel good about yourself. As the penultimate group walks off the eighth tee, the final group has yet to make an under par score on any hole they've played so far. Johnson at 15. That was a terrible position. He made it look pretty easy. Landed right on top of a mound. It 
fed the ball down the hill. Brilliant shot. Some of the little pitch and chip shots he's played this week have been absolutely outstanding. McIntyre to get to eight under and within three of the lead. Well, what a move this is for Robert McIntyre, young man from Oban, desperate to make it into the Ryder Cup, and that's birdies at 12 and 13 for him. Ram with a par putt at eight. And his only other Open Championship uh, did pretty well at Port Rush two years ago as well. Very comfortable on Lynx golf courses and the big moment. A bit left to right here for John Rahm. These are always tough putts. You know, momentum is so important. He just gained it on the last. It's just another one. It just slips by the hole. It's really been a frustrating week for him on the greens. He's hit so many good putts. So many good parts and it seems like just nothing will drop in. Four shot off the lead and he must be thinking I could have had one there, one there, one there. He could have probably found 10 or 12 that could have gone in. So it's going to be Louis Tazen first to go with his second into number seven. And down the right hand side so that's just the whole probably 10 yards, 15 yards longer than Morikawa. I can take it on with a four, but I can just see it turning and drawing, and it's just going to do that, you know? Okay. I need to take this, this front one out so that I can okay. pitch well, it more up to the if right. If that's what you want to do, that's the right shot. Perfect shot, okay? See your shot? Yeah. And even if you go a little long, something yeah. at the end of the world. Okay, just 100% commitment. That's the right shot, okay? And looking right, who says, and really no. Yeah, it's helping an awful right. No future left. And mentally, you're thinking at least four, like a birdie four and run and get out of here, keep up with everyone else after a perfect drive. Just trying to get it inside the green side bunkers. Carry it over that first bunker there and just kind of roll it onto the green. Just stepped up and out of it a little bit. It's not the most difficult bunker shot in the world coming up for Louis Tyson. As we move up to the eighth green, Scotty Scheffler. Oh, power. One slides by. Just got one back on the last after those two bogeys in the first four holes. He gives it back to the course on the eighth. Need some good stuff happening now. Yeah, absolutely, Thomas. Got a little bit lucky, Morikawa. 229. Just sitting down a fraction. This should have quite a bounce on this. Bunker 20 short is his only real issue. Expecting a little bit of heat with that shot, and it never came, so it just come up short. That's the difference between being on the fairway and the first cut. Oh. It was a high quality little chip shot from the back of the 15th, but it's going to cost Dustin Johnson a shot, I'm afraid. Connors on the eighth, poor tee shot. And he's not got a good lie here from 195. He's got to dig it out and run it down there. This is dangerous, this, when you're in the rough, because there's so much to carry to get down there. But he got it there easy. He must obviously have thought, well, this is going to fly. Is it going to come back off? This is also a tricky one with the thick rough behind in the backswing. Let's see how he manages that. Thomas, I know you hit a great shot here in the open, and it's time for one here for Spieth, I know, and he's just got... When you walk down there, you think, well, I've got a bit of light, and he's got a great light. Right. He's on the upslope, it's sitting up like a coconut, 174, wind off the left, flag back right, it's all in his favour. He'll fly this all the way and stick it with an eight iron. Yeah. I hit one like all 
long-time favourite golf shots I had about a five iron, about two feet off the ground and into a three-shot wind. To about a foot. Camera clicked right at the top of his backswing. That's what he was saying. Wonderful timing. Wonderful. Oh, that's a bad break, isn't it, for Jordan Spieth? was an excellent drive there, setting up a good opportunity, and then he's in a bit of trouble. Yeah, as a player, in these conditions, it's sometimes you're just almost looking or listening for something that can disturb you, and when it does, it just puts you off so much. That it's hard. And these players haven't played with crowds and a lot of things going on around them for, for so long. Um, they're still getting used to having everybody back. Quite a lot of sand in the back of this bunker for who stays in here. This is not as easy as I thought walking up. Very easy to leave this one. Oh, no. Oh, no. That was the danger. It just felt like a lot of sand in there. Easy to duff it short. This is not good. That one's up against the back edge of that bunko on the other side no trouble here he might not be able to hit the next one towards the flag well as Anthony said there was a lot of sand so then you sometimes try and hit a little closer to the ball so you don't get too much and he caught very little if any sand before the ball just went sailing over the green. Up on the ninth green, Dylan Fratelli for birdie. It's just a left to right pop. He won't really be able to see it. He was right in the line himself. He's giving himself a lot of chances. After a slightly slow start, back over to seven. Anthony. Yeah, indecision, Dom. Putt has been out for a good couple of minutes, changed his mind. Putting, I'm, I'm pointing so much to this. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Oh. Just coming up and over the ridge, that's quite a tricky one. He's the five foot further left. It was almost impossible. Five foot further right, it was actually really quite easy. So, in a nasty little spot. Picture the shot, huh? Pitching on the lower tier, really, and just trying to hop it up into the little bowl. Played a very nice one at the par three thirds, so clearly quite happy on these tight links fairways. All about visualization, seeing where that first bounce releases to. Perfect strike, pitch just before the hill. A little bit of check into the upslope, and then it releases when you get out over the top. Jordan Spieth has this bunker shot. Pretty good lie here. Green facing him, shouldn't be overly difficult. A reasonable shot. Still unlucky about the camera shutter going off in his backswing. Yeah, plugged up the back here. This is a hit and hope. Just try and really break the wrist early and just try and splash it out onto the green. Not at all what Louis Ustazen was looking for. Good as he could do. Had nothing there. Things there in four at the par five. Morikawa will have a tap-in birdie. We're going to see some changes here at the seventh. Just a wicked lie in close to the back revetted face of that bunker left of the seventh green, as Anthony said, did well to get out. It was a complete defensive shot, as is most likely this one for Corey Connors. Well, he's elected to go with the putter. I think he thinks that if he takes a wedge, he'll get tangled up in that thick grass. That was awful. That was 
just so difficult and there were so many things against him there, the slope and everything. Dustin Johnson at 16. Have to get it up the slope and he does. Brilliant shot. Fantastic shot for the world number one. Fighting to keep that position. 40 feet for his par those days and just trying to get out of here with a bogey up and over the ridge into the bowl. There's a lot of thoughts in Louis Oosthuizen's head right now. A few things going against him, a few poor shots. It's a time to collect your thoughts and get back into it. Yeah, that's the easiest hole on the course, and he's in trouble, so that's not good for the overnight leader. Spieth for par at eight. Yeah. Right. No problem at all. So no damage done. And he has tapped in for his six. So... He had been leading wire to wire. Oosthuizen is now two shots behind Colin Morikawa as they head over to the eighth tee. When we get to the 14th, sole Scotsman in the field is on the tee, Robert McIntyre. Slept. Oh, no. oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, dear. I slept. He says he slipped. And that's not good. Well, it's out of bounds, isn't it, Thomas, down there over on towards Prince's? Ram second into nine. Another glorious iron shot from John Rahm. Yeah. It might just turn out to be that kind of week, what could have been, but it's lovely to watch him hit those shots, though. That was a bit tentative from Corey Connors. He just kind of quit on it, blade closed. And then they tend to just touch the left lip and s slide by. Yeah, that's going to be his third drop shot of the day. He's going to slide back to eight under par. Let's go up to ten and Fratelli. Leave it. Leave it. In the fairway and nicely done for Fratelli, who is moving in the correct direction. Bogey three and is since two under par, starting with the fourth hole. Spieth has reached the ninth tee. Straight par for the ninth. Just, uh, well, he's got the driver out quite aggressively. Driving a pitch, that's all. It's called corsets, this hole. It's pretty tight. Bunker down the right, but that should not be in play with this club. Just sail it past that and just pitch it in. It's a valley fairway down there on this ninth. A couple good tee shots in a row now. Could things be turning around for speed? Let's not forget on Friday he drove the ball great. It was Saturday where he struggled. His putter, if he starts hitting the fairway, he could be dangerous. And Connors on this ninth tee. Three wood for him. It's a good play. Slightly down breeze off the right this hole today. as well go back to 18 Morikawa oh. oh. 
bird of this hole every day. a little bit of a look of a Tiger Woods stinger over this one, the way he comes through and holds it. He really had that butt of the grip in front of the club head of the impact, just kind of leaning forward. Hard to hit a shot very far off line like that. We go to Rom at nine, playing for a little left to right. Can he finally hole one? No, oh, again, the frustration mounts for the Spaniard. Back with Robert McIntyre on the 14th. Saw him go out of bounds with his first tee shot. So this is unfortunately his fifth into the green. That would have been some tar, wouldn't it? What would you make a 14? Shot. I just made, made five. That would have been a heck of a five. It's going to be a good six in the end. Who stays in going with the iron, laying up short of the two bunkers that guard the right side of the eighth fairway. Playing percentage golf, that part of the fairway is 36 yards wide. So playing catch up for the first time this week, really, Louis Eustace. There he is, two over par and two back of the open debutant, Colin Morikawa, last year's PGA champion the way at Royal St. George's. Four major champions right at the top there. John Rahm tucked in the US Open winner. Dustin Johnson. Two under par today. Shane Lowry defending the title. Good defense as well. Former Masters champion in Sergio Garcia. A lot of quality towards the top of the leaderboard. Webb Simpson has won the US Open. Excellent 65 to close out the week for Xander Schofley. For Taylor, we saw his tee shot on the right side of the fairway here at 10. Hitting up to the highest point on the golf course, the 10th green. And not a shot he'll be particularly happy with. Going to have a difficult mound just to the right of his direct line to the hole. It's going to interfere with his putt, make it a little bit more difficult as we look down where the balls have finished on the eighth. Be Ustazen to play first. He's got a long second in, hasn't he? He certainly has, Dom. Yeah. On the upslope as well. It's not to, ideal. It's, not, you know, it's just a fraction. Plus, I just caught the tee shot a little bit heavy. I mean, can't imagine he wants 227 left here. Especially after making six and a par five. Not the time to make a relatively simple par four quite difficult. I like it 100%. Okay. He's good swing. Get into it. Time to settle down. Just find the middle of the green. Get back into your process. Wind is quartering off to his left. So plenty of room down the left side just to drift this one in. Now looking forward to release, and it did. A little bit of a bowl back there, but not going to get up there far enough. Difficult hole today. Only seven birdies in the final round to this point. Just a, a tap in for Robert McIntyre. But it is a bogey, I'm afraid, at the par 5, 14th for the Scott. Just at the wrong time, really, wasn't it? He got things going. He'd made those birdies at 12 and 13 to get to 8 under. Connors. Nice flat line, left side of the fairway at 9. Only a hundred yards to go. He would be expecting to give himself a serious birdie opportunity. Oh. That's about a three out of ten, I would say. 
he'll be seriously hacked off with that. Rom's tee shot out to 10th. Oh, that's good right there. That's just money right up the fairway, playing his stock shot, the one he's most comfortable with. If the putter would just start working, Jay, I mean, he is flushing it, isn't he? Nobody if, hitting it better than he is today. If he would putt John Rahm average, he'd be leading by about five. I mean, he's struck the ball incredibly well. Back to eight, Morikawa second. He had two clubs out for quite some time, Morikawa. He's finally settled, 195. Quite a narrow slither of green at pin high. How about this? How about this? What an unbelievable goal play. That's some kind of special. It is his strength, isn't it? The iron shots. As he's shown us so many times. Remember, he's only been a professional for a couple of years. He's already a major champion. He won the PGA on debut. This is his first appearance in the Open. And with that swing, he's really comfortable with the whole cut on the right side of the green. Just fits his natural shape. You won't see how close that came to going in from where he was back there in the fairway. But as he walks up there, he's going to be very excited. Fantastic shot. Let's go to nine and speed. He's got to make a better effort than Connors, certainly. Oh. That's fine. Give him 20 feet, give him a birdie. He's a freak of nature. There's a tough putt here, about 10 feet off his putter right here. There's a mound that affected that, pushed it to the left. Is he going to come back to the right? He's trying to. It's trying to. Whoa, sneaks in the back door. Look at Dylan Fratelli go. That is three birdies in the last five holes. He's nine under, three shots behind, only two players in front of him. And remember, he only got in on Monday because his fellow South African Louis de Jaga pulled out. He was 11th on the reserve list. De Jaga tested positive for COVID. And here he is on Sunday, right up there, three back at the open. Connors. Such a dis disappointing second and to be honest, a disappointing putt. You know, from, you're 100 yards from the flag, middle of the fairway. You, you just cannot make a bogey. You can't. Dustin Johnson at 17. Trying to pick up a birdie, get it to seven under par. He was going really nicely until that missed par putt after a brilliant pitch at 15. So he'll go to the final hole of the championship. Six under par. That's pretty cool right there. Look at that. In formation. A couple of spitfires. Those guys are out having fun. Listen to that throaty sound. I love that. There's not too many of those still in existence. The old Rolls Royce engines. What a great sight. Awesome second shot from Louis Houston. Wow, he looked focused walking onto the green. I think this is a huge moment if he can roll this one in. There's not much in this one. Don't go in if you don't get them to the hole, do they? Still looking for his first birdie today, Ustazen. Spieth at nine. Play that nice pitch shot in. This is his range right here. This to get into double digits under par. How Told can you, you doubt him? Told you. He makes them all from that range. <laughs> he <laughs> is <laughs> just a special putter. I think I'm, I'm now expecting him to make it. He climbs alongside his taste at 10 under par. Two behind his fellow American, Colin Morikawa. Game on. Well, a year ago, we didn't expect to see this happening again, maybe for a while. He's back in business, Jordan Spieth, and nobody in the golfing world is not happy to see it.
Unusual to see a pro split a slight footer in half, so clearly just slightly concerned, maybe putting through his shadow, not helping. Again, so little in this. Have one of these early on, they're difficult to read, they're quite subtle. Just a hair down the hill. Been rather informed there's not been many threes. The box will be able to tell me, but this is a great moment. Back to back birdies for Colin Morikawa. Seven and eight. And he extends his lead to three. Things have changed, haven't they, over those two holes? And very much in his favour. Emiliano Grillo. Birdie putt at 17. Nice looking stroke, nice pace, nicely hold. He could sell that later on this afternoon for a lot of money. Maybe a trophy. Is he enjoying watching the Spitfires? Rom up the hill at 10, 104 yards. Can't see the bottom of the flag stick. Most uphill second shot on the golf course. Wow, what a surprise. Right on the line again. He, he hits it in makeable range. It seems like every single hole. Those Spitfires are doing a, a bit of a loop the loop up there. McIntyre into 15. Hard second shot for a left hander that likes to move it right to left. It doesn't really shape for the green shape. It really calls for a left to right shot, but a good one nonetheless for McIntyre. Spieth on the 10th with the Spitfires buzzing around. Brings the hairs up in the back of my neck, as is Spieth's golf. It's amazing nine holes. Four greens in regulation. Uh, another fairway hit for Spieth. He's starting to strike the driver. Ooh, a bad bounce. Okay, though. Just a little bit concerned about the bunkers. Well, at 3.32 for Morikawa. But you don't have to be. Just a superb drive. Just trying to whip this one down the right, Tony. Just catch the camber. Mm. You're looking at the right-hand bunker at 270. The far one's in the distance. So it sets up well for these two, a couple of three woods. Try and get one chasing, just nestled underneath that set of cross bunkers. Well, that doesn't look like the really long, thick stuff. Ustazen might get lucky there. luck when you start missing the fairways here at Royal St. George's. Rom at 10 for birdie. He needs to get this putter heated up a little bit if he's going to have a chance. How frustration, oh. frustrating must it be for John Rom to play so well and to keep missing McIntyre for the bounce back birdie. A decent try. Dylan Fratelli, what an awkward stance this is. Ball below his feet. He's just got to be careful it doesn't bounce off the heel of the club. Which is exactly what's happened. Just, I think it's zinged over the other side of the green. 
Coming down the 18th, Grillo. And that's in one of those bunkers down the left-hand side. Beautiful stretch of Lynx land down in southeast England. You've got Prince's one side, you've got Ross Sinkports over the other side. We're at Royal St George's for the 149th Open. And uh, what we are approaching the midway point of this final round, and Colin Morikawa has forged himself a three shot lead at the top of the leaderboard. Louis Eustace needs something to happen, something positive to happen pretty soon out there. Two over par, hasn't made a birdie yet. And Spieth, well, we've had a little bit of everything, haven't we? As you do with Jordan Spieth. And he's right in contention as well for a second open title. Shambo earlier today, that round of 65. 66 from South Africa's JC Ritchie. Well done, both of them. Good tee shot at 14 for Daniel Berger. Going for the par five green in two. You can tell the way he went through that one. Trying to hit a scuttler up there. Out of bounds, lurking just right of the green. It's looking very good. Holes cut over the right side of the green. He'll climb the ridge at will. Berger with a short eagle putt to come. He's currently at five under par, even par for the day. Hasn't really gotten anything going, but that will help. Oh, look at this for Dylan Fratelli. From the green side bunker to here, and this is hidden hope. Ah. Didn't hit it hard enough, didn't hope hard enough. That is just underground. Up to 16, McIntyre. <laughs> Holes cut in the right side of the green, just to the left of that slope that leads down into the bunker. Tough shot for a lefty because he's going to have to draw it in there. It's going to come in with a little bit more heat, and he had, because of his shot shape, to get close to that hole, he had to play a little bit more margin for error. Which didn't suit the lefty. 124 for Connors Pin, right at the back, in off the left. Long is a no option here. Yeah, he knew that too, didn't he? Playing it rather cautiously. There's no future over this green, yeah. Tony. Nothing, Jamie. None. Yeah. None. What about this guy? He's something else, isn't he? Four greens here going out. 13 putts. It's and fun to watch, Jamie. You've oh, got front row seat. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. But he's on a severe upslope from 116. At the rough might help him just get a bit of release. Get it back there, maybe. He'll tell us all about it. That was a great stat on the screen there. Only two Americans have won the Open twice before the age of 28. Two pretty good ones, Tom Watson and Bobby Jones. I wonder if we can add to that. I wonder if he can add to that. Louis Hazen has come up with an extremely good lie, considering how far left it was. Oh, could this be the East Hazen resurgence right here? He pitched it in the perfect spot into the bank, killed the momentum. Brilliant shot right there, and Lou East Hazen needs something, has yet to make a birdie through the first eight holes. Just stepping off it, just getting himself ready. 89, a lot of noise. A lot of people willing these golfers, these fine golfers to this amazing trophy now and 89 yards is a tough one to get close needs to really get some grip on this ball on the upslope <laughs> pretty good shot he is extremely impressive isn't he for a car oh my goodness i don't think he can even see the ball He's just put the club down in a position that he hopes is near the ball. Done very well, but he's racking up a number. 
Yeah, it's going to be five at best, isn't it, for the South African. Here's Argentina's Grillo at 18. Remember, he drove it into the fairway bunker. This is his third. <laughs> and have that for a round of 67. Saw the approach shot of Daniel Berger. Can he apply the finishing touch for an eagle three? Straightforward putt here. You don't want to give the hole away. He didn't. And a nice eagle three for Daniel Berger. Struggled with his left wrist, had an operation. Really has gotten back his world ranking stature in the game. Two under par for the day. He's at seven under par. Ram. 53 yards. Nobody better qualified to hit a long iron in. Oh. Yes. Please. <laughs> he didn't look particularly happy there, Jab. I don't know if something had sort of disturbed him off to the right, but what a shot. Tony, I've seen you putt like him, and you never looked happy either, even after a good shot. Connors. Side chance of a birdie at the tenth for the Canadian. Well, I have to say, I don't actually think you get much closer to this pin at nine. It's right on a little thimble. And these two putts. Hayes and Amore Cow, not much easier actually. We're all sort of double breakers. They're quite a good look, and I'm still slightly puzzled. I think I might need some help on this one. Well, we're looking Just running across the ledge. Yeah, we're looking from kind of the uh, bird's eye view here as you would be standing next to it. And there's a lot of slopes up there. It looks fairly flat where he is. Back into the breeze, what there is. Oh, he pours it in. It's a third straight birdie for Colin Morikawa, and he is turning the screw. He moves to 14 under. Oosthuizen has to hold to stay within three. That's amazing golf right there. He's going to be four clear with nine holes to play. That's that's a big lead right there. Spieth won't know that. He'll have heard the roar. You have to always assume he needs to start pouring these in. Are you surprised? No. He's like clockwork. They go in the middle. They go in with perfect speed. Spieth. I guess the lead was only four for a moment. It's three now. I wish we could tell you up how many putts he's hold this week from 20 to 30 feet. It's supernatural. 16, McIntyre to get to eight under. Remember, he's hoping to pick up some Ryder Cup points this week as well. He's outside the top nine automatic places. Oosthuizen, it's just not happening, I'm afraid for the South African, the 2010 Open champion. Two over par to the turn. One shot ahead at the start of the day. He is four behind with nine holes to play. Yeah, it's a long climb back up from there. Grillo for par, he birdied 16, birdied 17 to get seven under par. This to stay seven under. Driving it in the fairway bunker up the left side was his undoing at 18. Still a good week for the Argentinian. And there it is right there, Morikawa with a three-shot lead as he heads to the 10th tee, the back nine on Sunday. The strength of three birdies in a row, seven, eight, and nine. Spieth giving chase. 
two under through 10, three back. Who stays in two over through nine, just cannot get anything going. And Dustin Johnson, couple under par today. He's at six under par on the final green. Let's see if he can make this for birdie. In a fight for the world, number one has to beat John Rahm, and that's going to help his cause right there. A good round of 67 for this week's world number one. Who will it be tomorrow? Well, whoever scores better this week between Rahm and Dustin Johnson will be the number one player in the world tomorrow morning. And they tied at seven under at the moment. <laughs> Great galleries out here. Fantastic atmosphere. See the grandstand in the distance. Mm -hmm. Your right is the center of that. Okay. So your left is set center of the bunker, and your, your middle is finishing just right of the tower. It's like right edge of the bunker, the green side bunker. Yeah, see that third chimney in on that white house? Right, yeah, right edge of the green side right. bunker. That's correct. Yep. In out of the left, quarter. Mostly out, quarter. Yes, quarter. I mean, I'm going to start it barely left of the tower then. That's perfect. Just hitting the cross. The fairway at 10. What a time to have three in a row. 13 putts to this point as well. So he is on fire, Morikawa. Got to find this fairway if you want a birdie, though. Tabletop green. Super lucky kiss. Don't know if he has. Oh, just in the semi. It's okay. Uh, it's pretty close to where Jordan Spieth was. And let's have a look at the Morikawa putt at nine from about 20 feet. Poured it right in the middle. There's leaderboards everywhere. Look at the fist pump. He knows, and he is certainly well aware he has a three-shot lead with nine holes to play in the Open Championship. Okay, Louis, driver in hand. Time to go up a gear. Show us what you got. Short grass. Yeah, it's time. If Louis going to turn things around, it's got to be soon. John Rahm. A good tee shot at 11, wasn't it? A beauty. I mean, it's almost unbelievable, Jay, how many superb putts he's hit in the last two days, and they just won't go. His, his ball's in the scared last two of heights. Weeks. In the last, last two, two weeks. weeks. You're right, last week was the same. Good stroke, close shaves all day long. You can just see the frustration. Mm. He's taking him over, shaking his head. He's doing everything he can to give himself opportunities, and the putter is just ice cold. This man's putter's not cold. Jordan Spieth, he's rolling his rock. Yeah, just waiting for the bunker to be raked. The Scotty Scheffler was in, so just hold on to your horses. Just hold on. He wouldn't have wanted to wait, would he, Speeth? He'd have wanted to gone straight in this tee and hit it. However, he's been there for 10 minutes. It's all clear now. It's a good picture. 2.53. Those guys, they're going to walk right behind the green, right? No? Yes, Got one of those driving irons in his bag, Spieth, and need all of it here. 253, slightly into the breeze off the right hand side here. Played shot right there for speed. 11 is a danger hole. To do the 15th. And Shane Lowry with a chance, albeit from distance. If 
had a look. Fairway metal for Connors on this beautiful 11th hole, this par three. It's an absolute beauty, even though it's 253 yards, it's playable, it's amenable. slope from right to left on the green which it leads down to the hole not a terrible position for Connors nice base to that swing right there his feet stay nice and quiet like we were talking about earlier Tony's left foot doesn't spin out that's why he's a good consistent ball striker Tazen in the fairway, Morikawa in the first cut of rough, and I wonder what his lie is going to be like for this demanding shot up the hill to 10 green. Two different lies, Jay, and probably two different mindsets for these two. Four behind now, Ustazen, he needs to find something to this back pin location at 10. He's got the control up the hill. Can he find the distance? need to pitch this somewhere close to pin high. I don't think he's got an awful lot of bounce into the breeze. Big engine. It's just a little bit of an upslope also. Good line. You can't be overly aggressive on that shot up the hill. There's a bank that really feeds off if you go too far. Hughes. Well, a birdie at the short par. <laughs> no mistakes there. So after a poor start, he's managed to get it back into the red numbers for the day and eight under total. Yeah, it's his open debut as well. Two yards close, 116. Good lie up at the semi. But as I say, a different mindset here. Just wants to cozy this one up. No need to take any chances. Oh. Three great birdies in a row. Doesn't like it. Unsurprisingly. Well, that was an unforced error right there. You can't go over the green or long right of that green. You're down a bank. Talk about another difficult position. A wide one off the tee for McIntyre at 17. He's strong. Go, 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 go. Is it going to run up? Go. It's trying it's to best. try, but it's going to come back down the hill a little bit, most likely. You can see it reversing course. It's a lovely line in the bunker for Connors here at 11. Quite a bit of green to work with. You have to get it up a bit quick. Try and come out nice and soft. Beautiful sand here at Royal St. George's though to play out of. club enters the sand bounces through so it doesn't dig too deep splashes the ball out Daniel Berger remember made an eagle at the 14th he's got a chance here at 15 he hasn't hit it pretty because he did have the line Electing to put this off the fringe. This is slow. OK, 
Look how hard he's hit that. And look how well he's judged it. Beautiful putt. Six birdies, three drop shots on the card today for McIntyre. That's the sort of brand he plays in golfing terms. Oh, look at this for Morikawa. And only probably 10 or 12 feet of green to play with. So not nice, sitting down. And just try and get some elevation into the breeze. It might just help him a little, but six or seven feet would be mightily just fine. Big parachute shot here. Just, he could not afford to get too cute there. Could have rolled all the way back down to his feet. He's done the smart thing. Long range birdie putt at 11 for Spieth. It is an uphill putt. He's walking early, asking it to slow down. Bit longer than the camera angle tails right there. That's a good four feet, if not more. Unfortunately, third shot for Ram after finding the fairway bunker. Knocked it out to here. And that is terrific. He is just, he hasn't given up, Ron. He still thinks this is on the cards. If something special happens. Ustazen will not make birdie at 10. Robert McIntyre going with the iron, going to hit the stinger, the chaser here. Trying to push it down there, short of that right bunker. Should have that a little bit more than I thought. Tony, that's a very high shot. And hence doesn't get much roll. Leaves himself a fairly long second shot in. Oh, oh, oof. Rolls between the two divots. Par putt for Connors, remember, came out of the bunker at the 11th to here. Good save. There's actually a real mismatch in his game, according to the uh, stats on the PGA Tour. Top 10 in strokes gained off the tee and approaches outside the top 100 around the greens and on the putting surfaces. Breaking more in the last third for Maury Cow. This will feel like a birdie three, I can tell you. And just to give yourself a good chance after a, a pretty poor pitch, has to be said. Fair play to the man. Green's just starting to come up a little bit. This is not easy. It will definitely break. Just trying to drop this in the right side. Oh. The man's made of tungsten or carbide. Just as tough and hard as they come. That was pretty impressive, as Anthony said. That's as good, if not better, than a birdie as we go to Spieth at 11. And this is not a straightforward par putt. Every bit of four and a half feet. Once again, just grabs it up for the cup. And he does make his pass, so Spieth stays at 11 under. Three back of Colin Morikawa. Just a little bit of breeze out there. Impressive stuff from Morokara with that hat trick of birdies to the turn, giving himself the lead over his fellow American Spieth and Ustazen. Canada's hopes still just about alive, although they are both six behind the leader. Got a little more room yep. left today, right? Yep. Just a fairway metal for Spieth on this 12th hoist down bridge. Could give it a crack, you know, with the driver here if he wanted to. He's playing for position down the left. 
Bunkers down the right to be careful of. That's a good looking line. Did Jamie Spence just say give it a crack with the driver with those five little round one shot penalties guarding the green? I did. Wow, that was aggressive from you, Jamie. That's just in the left rough for Spieth. Might not be a good angle. This is awkward. Got that steep slope to get over. Had to carry it literally to the crest of the ridge and did exactly that. Fantastic shot. Ram for par at 12. Seems like sometimes, Tony, when you're playing, you miss all the birdie putts, but you make the par putt. Can he? How does that happen? How does it happen? Why does that happen? <laughs> Can never make a birdie. You get a par putt. You might think, it. why? <laughs> it's dark, isn't it? It's just crazy. But well done to him. Back on the tee at 12. Connors. Hybrid club off the tee. Just playing for position. You're better off to lay it back. Ooh. There are two bunkers over there. I don't, I think that's just a hollow. I don't think that's a bunker. We'll see in a moment. Well, what an up and down on Sunday of a, an open championship for Morikawa. Now, the pin's been back right and back left all week on 11, 253. So he knows what he needs to do here. Almost got to just try and cut this one into the slope up the back of this green. Well, that was right on line and just barely stays up on that top ridge, so he's on the right level. Don't want it over. What a turnaround from last week, Jay. I mean, last week, it was the most abysmal display of putting I think I've ever seen via a, a top quality tour pro who didn't have the yips. And this week, I don't know, it's just like a different man in his skin. Drive an iron for Mr. Hazen. Powerful flutter of the ball. Looking down the right, just trying to chase it up, maybe just a fraction. Needs to grab this round and get going. And that's a good start. Oh! My word! Hits the flag stick. Well, that would have been some way to get it going, wouldn't it? Worth a look. Our overhead shot from the plane. Look at this. I mean, it's always dead on line. Oh. Clearly, that flag stick knocked it out. The flag was out, and we're going in. <laughs> That's our story. We're sticking to it. Oh, maybe that will turn Hustazen's round around. Go to 18 fairway, Robert McIntyre. Beautiful. He's given us a lot of pleasure again, McIntyre, watching him. This lad has got a huge future in front of him. You would have to think some Ryder Cups, but will it be this year? Hughes for birdie at 13 to get it to nine under. Just slides by on the right side. From the bunker up the face, just playing it out. Connors, he had no chance there. Back in position for the Canadian. Yeah, so he's going to have to do a John Rahm, isn't he? Get up and down from there to make his par. 
to remain in the group at eight under alongside fellow Canadian Hughes and Brooks Kepka, who leads in the clubhouse at eight under. It's weird on Lynx golf, isn't it, Tom? If you stood on the tee and aimed at those bunkers all day long, you can't find them. No. Try and find the fairway. Bunker after bunker. He's got a good lie speed. Grass is with him, which is great. Pitch it about 10 yards short, just let it trundle down the green. This pin is just at the bottom of a little slope, so he's going to have to be really precise here, Speed. But I think he's going to let Connors go first. He's just going to gather himself. Desperate to get on with it, actually, Speed. Connors back in the middle of the fairway. Let's catch up with Shane Lowry. Got off to a pretty good start. Shot 33 on his opening nine. Bogey 10, and since 10, it's been all pars, and it'll be the same at 17 for the defending champion. Slightly disappointing opening 71, but he's been good since then. Here's Connors. Yeah, just a pitch shot. Should be able to get quite a lot of spin from this light. Connors, get it all the way down. Let's spin it up. Oh, what a bounce. Yeah, you can hear the firmness, can't you? On these greens. Left to right. Once he gets on top, Morikawa has a good chance actually, just a steady one all the way. Pretty easy one to read. Okay, he'll mark that a little bit of work there. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have any nerves. Speed from a bad angle and a grassy lie here. He knew it as soon as he hit it. Got a lot of grass between club face and ball. No spin, releases down the bank. The good news about that is we've got to get to watch some more speed magic. Funny enough, it's almost exactly where he was yesterday, albeit the hole was in a different position on that green. Big moment for Louis Oosthuizen. Brilliant tee shot at 11. Can he convert? Anthony. Just on the right edge, Dom. You almost think at this point in his round, the way it's gone the first 10 holes, this is a must make. And is that the spark for the South African? Back within three, and Morikawa still with a little bit of work for his part. Colin Burner just trying to keep the mood light-hearted, keep him focused. And the top three in the leaderboard, Morikawa 14, Spieth and Oosthuizen at 11, have separated themselves from the rest. It's a further three shots back to Kepka in the clubhouse, Hughes and Corey Connors. Important putt here, nearly three feet for par to stay at 14. Beautiful. She simplified his whole process, his routine from last week. It's uncomplicated. A lot of that just to do with pure confidence. Uh, speed from over the green. Once he reaches the green, there's not a tremendous amount of undulations he has to deal with. But he has to pitch up to get to the green. Could it? What a brilliant shot right there. He is so exciting to watch. Up to 18. McIntyre for a closing birdie. Well, it is exciting for Scottish golf, isn't it? For European golf as well.
Yeah, nicely done. And McIntyre rounds his week off with a three under par, 67. And seven under is inside the top ten, just as he was at Port Rush. Is that a Ryder Cup grabbing moment right there? Ooh, you have to think. Two bunkers down the right here at 12, just trying to fiddle one and open up the green. Three wood. Bruce Hazen. Yeah, it's just again yeah. low, you know. I want to try and loft it up and try it has, and This has to finish inside the right edge of that tower. Or in the right, inside the edge of that house for sure. He's got the look back in his eye, hasn't he? Corey Connors, who did take a trip to the fairway bunker off the tee at 12, has this for par. He hit it, he had it. So he falls back into the group at seven under, which is seven behind Morikawa. Also at seven under, Ram, here he is at 13. Exhibition iron shot from John Rahm. Perfect, that's it. Got it. Well, it's been a couple of years since he had that glory walk down the 18th fairway at Port Ross. Shane Lowry's coming to the last hole. It really has been a nice attempt to defend your title. <laughs> a bit unlucky with that one, just catches the bounce lock. A good shot. It looked as though the responsibility, if you like, of being the defending champion was weighing on him pretty heavily on that first day, but then he's kind of relaxed a little bit, and now he's playing the sort of golf we know he's capable of. Here is our leader at 12, Morikawa. to go to get over those knuckles he actually just didn't quite get over the last one he's right on top of it that's okay though One of the most simple of birdies for John Rahm on 13. I feel like he's gonna need pretty much to birdie in from here to have a chance Yes, and even that might not be enough. We shall see. As Shane Lowry strides down the 18th. This walk he will have for the rest of his life. reception there are no reason they call it the greatest walk in golf Surprisingly today, but a good tee shot for speed. Seems to have found his driver consistently putting it in play now. <laughs> a 
It's a full flourish, isn't it, from Jordan Spieth. This is Morikawa, and he's second to 12. And by no question, the highest point on this 12th Morikawa, the best seat in the house. I want to, I'd rather hit a okay. little mini draw with it. Okay. Just because I, I feel like I got to choke up on this, and that's not enough. So, okay. just knowing we're trying to, if we do that, we're trying to pitch the ball on the first guy in the white shirt. Yeah, it's an interesting one, this. Okay. You see that? Because um, normally you, see you can't see the green on this the the second shot. He's just standing on top of the knuckle, so you can see all of the green. Used to in the week. Straight right to left. So I'm starting it at just right at the last one then. Yep, so if you're going to ride it a little bit, it's like a, to go 14, it's like a 10 or 11 feeling? Yeah, I was thinking 10. Okay, perfect. Love it's that. Solid I love that. Good committed shot. And like I said, just trying to ride the wind a fraction, probably playing about 8 to 10 less. So around about 110 yards, so just pretty much a normal sand iron. Loads behind it, so you can be aggressive with this one, Morikawa. Daniel Berger at the 17th. What a great little move that is with the uh, eagle at 14. A birdie there at 70, 17. He also picked up a shot at the 10th. So eight under is well positioned. Just inside the top five for Berger. For the defending champion. Will this be his final putt in the 149th Open Championship? Certainly the grandstands would love to see it. Three birdies, couple of drop shots, and a closing 69 for the defending champion, Shane Lowry. All in all, a very good defence of his title. at 13. Great angle here, you can see the flag stick. The flag just hanging limply, very little to no wind. This is good. 49 yards, green light special here, and that was right on line. Go in. <laughs> Everything is so flat out there, he thinks it's right next to the hole, and it's about 15 feet short. On the 12th fairway, Louis Jason. He's going to start attacking a few of these now. Great control, great spin control. He's setting up another chance. Speed not as good of an angle here, 124 gap wedge. Trying to draw it in. It spins in. Very good shot. A chance to close within two if he can hold that putt. Up to 18. And Berger with an iron. Okay, that's, that's the lowest one. apex we've seen all week. 36 feet. That's the low, lowest thing we've seen. I mean, we're used to seeing them. The weather's been so good this week that it's been a little bit more through the air than normal. Yeah, that was the stinger, wasn't it? Morikawa for birdie to get to 15 to stretch his lead to four. It was four when he hold his birdie putt at nine. Can he do it at 12 as well?
Right street, wrong address, came up short. Right on the line. Three shots in hand. A par on the card, moving closer to the clubhouse, but a lot can happen between now and then. Up and down day for Connors here on the 13th green. Good chance for birdies. Quite a bit of swing here from the right-hand side. He gets on with it, Connors. Oosthuizen for a second straight birdie. And to climb back within two. This would be a phenomenal birdie, too. Oh. Just too much pace. Gave it a good run right there after a brilliant tee shot. And up to 13 and a chance for Spieth. Bit of right to left. He's got a par five coming up. Knocks us in. Birdies are next. We've got a game on here. Just outside the hole, this one. Maybe a ball, ball. Depends how hard he hits it. journey and Jordan Spieth is not going away and we all remember how he finished off at Royal Birkdale five under the last five holes off he goes to the 14th tee we'll go up ahead on this par five to Ram this has got to be all the way flown into the middle of the green be aggressive right here. What a beautiful golf shot. And there you go. Just magnificent from John Ryan. The iron play this week has just been first class. It really has. Two bunkers, Ryan, two left. Big moment here. A bit like that putt for Hussein. <coughs> Trying to belt it down the right, let it camber into the middle. Caught that bunker. That's a splash out. Can't go anywhere forward with that one. He knows it. Even the bad ones look good with that swing. You 100% on this? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I am too. I need to know my lines though, okay? I'm going to hit that like kind of draw, draw. 554, 14, driving iron for speed, yeah. aiming down the left, winds down off the left. Left is. Go on. Go on, Jordan. Excellent. Excellent tee shot. Your target. Yeah, I got it. Just left of the bridge. Perfect said earlier this week how much he loves Lynx golf thinks less about his swing and much more about shot making yeah a, a, a hole here also you need to shot make Morikawa hits this fairway just a little bit of a gap appearing 13 and 15 both very demanding tee shots oh. To, but it skirted that first right bunker and he's okay. Good miss, as they say. Yeah, good bat. Morikawa. Two shots ahead of Jordan Spieth. It is California from Texas. Now at the top of the leaderboard of the 149th Open at Royal St. George's. Liu's taste not done yet, but problems for him down the 13th.
and your burger's having a nice look at it here on 18. Just beyond Duncan's Hollow, it'll be a weird one for Berger. Let's go to 14, and Rom has to put up the slope. Pretty good slope to get to the level where the hole's cut. He's eight under. Just to get to 10, within four of the lead, with four to play. Looks like he thinks the ball moved. It did move, and still moving. Well, let's hear from uh, one of our RNA referees and find out what the situation is here. Thank you. OK, so uh, Ram's ball has moved there and uh, there's no problem. He can just replace it with no penalty. <laughs> Eagle three. Oh, not only did he miss it, he ran it four feet, four and a half feet past the hole. He certainly wanted to make it, but if you hit it that pace, even if you hit the hole, it wouldn't have gone in. Yeah, I think it might just have unsettled him a little bit in the mind. Up to 18. Uh, Daniel Berger for unlikely closing birdie. Not a ton of wind, so where are we starting? Um, see the group of guys that are like on the inside or whatever? Yep. The last guy there. Where the bicycle is? See yes, the bicycle where the bicycle is. Yep. Start there and finish it. Three guys in? Yes. Right. Halfway in between. Perfect. Kicks left. All right, let's see it. Good for them. Yes. Playing the game how it should be played. Just hit three wooden. Just took three of the four bunkers out of play. Morikawa here at 13. 187. Plenty of room down the right. Hold. No need to take this pin on. Hold. Hold. Well, that was a nice bounce, wasn't it? Wow, that was close to the edge of the bunker there. Fed would have pitched maybe a yard short and left. It would have hit the bank and potentially rolled down into that bunker, but all is forgiven. A couple of good breaks on 13. Let's go to Rom for birdie at 14. Ran his eagle putt well past the hole at this point. And he makes his birdie, two in a row for the Spaniard. Nine under, five behind. Four holes to go. He's going to have to do something very special. Biggest shot of the week here on 14 for Speed. He's a long way back, 304. T shot only went 250. He's got that driving iron out. He's going to have to hit this out of his sock speed. This is tough because he's sort of aiming more towards the out of bounds here. Down the right hand side. So he's got to flush this. Of course, I took it at the furthest carry. Go, go. That 
was but maybe a little bit too much to take on but that's okay there fairly simple pitch up the green third shot for Oosthuizen I'm afraid having driven it into the fairway bunker Smooth and nice. Feel like he's got to have to make a move and knock that one in and then do something up 14. Second shot for Fratelli at 15. Who lost his momentum with the double bogey at the par 3 11th. But that is a beautiful shot, as good as we've seen all day. Daniel Berger finishing off straight up the hill. Oh, just come out of it a little bit. Disappointing bogey on the last from the middle of the fairway. It's around the 68, minus seven for the tournament. Tied in seventh position at the moment. Good week. Yes, indeed. Dustin Johnson ran in 67. Likewise for Robert McIntyre. That wonderful 65 bogey free for Brooks Kepka a little earlier. It's between those men at the top. Those four major champions. Ram with only an outside chance. Ustase and Speed and Morikawa's hopes all alive. And it is Morikawa in charge at the moment with that two shot advantage. Here's Ram. At 15. Very good. He was looking at it pretty intently as it was drifting right, but it's good now. From 15 back to 13. You've got to love the calmness Morikawa shows. Or is he going to wake up in a minute? He's playing in the Open Championship and he's just playing flawless golf. This is left to right, up the hill. Maybe got a little bit lucky with the second, but again, pin high. Makes such a difference on Lynx Greens, you get them pin high. wonder when you look into his mind is he just trying to stretch that lead every birdie someone's got to make two to catch him just a hair up the hill excellent chance for a birdie three Good from where he was. I think he thought he hold it. Spieth just short of the green. Good lie. He's trying a low skipper and spinner. Grab and get up that slope. Oh, is it going to stay? Yes, it is. He's got that to go 13 under. Just a par putt, just a, a little bit from his right. Right to left breaker here for Louis. Nah, it's just not quite the day for Ustoysen so far. He falls four behind. Start feeling it's between Spieth and Morikawa right now. Great lie for Connors and this bunker, but he's got to contend with that ridge. And he's got it up on top of the ridge. From one Canadian to another, Connors to 
Mackenzie, Hughes. of birdies and bogeys on the car today for him on his open debut. As Morikawa and Ustazen mount the tee at the par 5 14th. Out of bounds all the way down the right hand side. Yeah, yeah, took your words right out of my mouth. It's the first time the wind really has not been pushing everything away from the out of bounds. There's no real wind now, it's flat calm. But when you can't see the fairway, it's certainly in the player's mind. See your shot, bud. This is all about. It's all about the mental strength of the player in the moment. Three would really just looking down the left. Hit a win. Hit it. Hit it. That's good there. That's a great shot. That's good there. No problem at all. First cut of rough, a little flyer, get extra run on his second shot. As we go to Fratelli, 15 green. We saw the brilliant second shot. Still smarting a little bit from the double bogey at 11. Yeah. Takes some of the sting out of it. So Fratelli gets to eight under par. And it's a tie for fifth alongside Kepka, who's been in the clubhouse for a good hour and a half at this point. Connor's for his birdie. Strange way that Spieth has played this hole. It's not easy on this top shelf at 14 to hold parts. Down this 14th hole, Ustazen. Yeah, going with the three wood, aiming left, and you just kind of lean left and squeeze it out there. Slide. Slide, slide. as you just said. Did it slide enough? Come on, Come on, aggressive right there. Touch a break from the right for Spieth. Not much, though. Just to go one behind. Listen to the roar. Third birdie of the back nine for Jordan Spieth. And he is within one of Morikawa. He knows. He knows he's applying the pressure. He couldn't run as fast as he's walking at the moment. It's not like they lip in either. They just go right in the middle. Marcel Seem at 18 from the first cut of rough. It's been a great story this week for the German. A couple over par today, but four under on the championship. Had to win last week on the challenge tour to get his spot in the open. And what a finish. I can't wait to see him make that putt. It will be a celebration of note. Oh, it has been lovely. He's been a breath of fresh air, hasn't he? Fratelli at 16. Well, Fratelli is, might not win this golf tournament, but he's playing for a top four position at the moment as well to get them in the Masters next year. Those extra bonuses are there. Here. That is. If you have a good week. Four ninety six today, the fifteenth. It's a bit of a brute. Into this breeze, club of breeze. Bunkers left and right for speed to contend with. Right there, right there, easy straight kick. It listened, it did, in the fairway again. He's acting like
like he didn't hit it very well, but I think you want it over on that difficult tee shot in 15. Back down the 14th. 301. Reasonably interesting play. Bunkers galore. Yeah, now we're directly on quartering, quartering down. Like starting it up at one. Carries a three and a five wood. Good golf swing. Looks to be taking it on. Got to admire that. But he does need to carry the bunkers about 60 short. Hitting towards the out of bounds. A brave play. Got some flight on this. Well, that looks like a rerun of Jordan Spieth's second shot. Pretty much in exactly the same place. And Marcel C makes his way down the 18th, and I'm sure he'll get a warm reception. What a thing. Playing the Challenge Tour last week, and now you're doing this. No wonder there's a big smile on his face. It's been such a great week for him. It also shows what you can do when you come here and you take it in. Fratelli for birdie at 16. Safely played in the middle of the green. Just to get to nine under. I never really threatened the hole, but had a good par chance coming. And to John Rahm at the 15th with a chance is to get to 10 under. And this is for three birdies in a row. Some dangerous holes coming up for those behind him. Ron's going to keep him honest right there. Big birdie from Ron. Joins Luke Hazen on 10 under par and a tie for third. Well, he's making a run. Look at that. Three birdies in a row. Is it going to be too little, too late? As you say, it ain't over till it's over, especially on a course like Royal St. George's. And up to 18. And seam for the closing birdie. Well, it's his first birdie today. And Marcel Seam has provided a lot of entertainment out there this week. Five under par. And he's just outside the top 15. Who says golfers are boring, huh? Well, let's hope it's been it's the inspiration for him what happened last week and this to get back onto the European Tour. He's clearly got the game to do that. Ram at 16. This whole location should suit his shot shape. Right side of the green. Aim it up the middle. Let it work to the right. How aggressive do you want to be with that slope just to the right? That aggressive. He is taking dead aim. That is an incredible shot and a brave shot. And how good would that have looked through the air? He must have thought this has got a chance. Well, this is what it's all about. Great course with great players with the Open Championship on the line. 2.20 for Spieth into the breeze to this difficult 15th. Please go. Please go. He did get just over the bank, crept up 20 feet. That's Jordan Spieth range right there. Back 
to Louis Oosthuizen at the par 5, 14th. And his third. Brilliant. Brilliant. Very nearly an eagle three. Let's have another look at this. this is a brilliant shot, Thomas, up that ledge. Yeah, it's an amazing shot. I thought he was, he was just going to check up and short of the ridge there, but he's obviously just taking the flight down a little bit. Morikawa. This is straightforward. Has he hit it? Up that hill, has he hit it? Oh no, that's going to come back down, I think. That yeah, just goes to show you how good Spieth's pitch shot was from a very similar position to get it up there in a makeable spot on the correct level. He wasn't far out, was he? When he needed an ounce more, and it would have made it to the top of the slope. And uh, nestled in close. Three birdies today, no drop shots for Colin Morikawa. Remember, on his Open debut. Mind you, he did win on his debut in the PGA Championship. Jordan Spieth just one behind now. And then it is Oosthuizen. And assuming he taps that one in, 11 under par. And John Rahm at 10 under. And he's in close at 16 as well. Polter finishing off with a round of 68. He enjoyed himself out there today. Alongside fellow Englishman Matt Fitzpatrick. The ever entertaining Bryson DeChambeau. Round in a bogey 365. Danny Willett step backwards on Sunday. A little bit surprised, Morikawa didn't quite get on top. He's left himself a reasonably straight one coming up the tier, and it's only probably about a foot. So it is a chance, but not easy at this stage. Well, just when he needed it, Morikawa pounces again. Moves to 15 under, two ahead of Spieth. Oosthuizen has tapped in, so he's four shots back. This is pretty convincing stuff from Morikawa. Remember, he doesn't turn 25 until next February. Look at the speed this one goes in with. That was going a good four to five feet past the hole, but the hole just grabbed it went right in the middle. Jordan Spieth will have heard that. 14th green isn't that far away, Jamie. You can hear everything out here, Jay. What a thrill it is to have the buzz back. All the spectators back. Packed behind me on 16 and on 15. Connor's had a terrible lie left of the green. Couldn't do anything with it. He's got it down to about 20 feet, 15, 20 feet. He had nothing. Big moment here. Speed. I've, got, I've got this off the right. There's a little ridge where Corey Connors is standing, and it just throws it a little bit that way. Like so many of these greens at St George's, it sort of looks like double breakers, like roller coasters, these greens, but I'm going with right edge. What a moment, eh? to the point that we expect him to make these. Makes He's waiting for Ram to putt for the roar. He's waiting for the roar. 
Brahm is over on the 16th, remember, after that superb tee shot. Four birdies in a row for the US Open champion. It may not be enough. But it's been great to watch. Spieth, can he? Well, he missed, but he gave it a good effort. As we were saying yesterday, when he does miss from that range, it looks like they're going to go in until they don't. It seems a tough hole. Four is a good score. Three holes to play. Two behind Morikawa. Pretty sure he thought he had it. So did the guys behind. Beginning to look like a two horse race. I'd prefer to be more a cow with two shots in hand. <laughs> That's for sure. Fratelli, second to 17. Tough shot. Holes cut only five yards over a steep bank that goes down short of the green. No problem at all, right there. Very good shot. Fifteenth tee, Morikawa. Big tee shot this one. Start and run those bunkers down the left. Has he overdone it? Oh. <laughs> Goes past one and then flirts with the other one as well. That's okay. Now it's a nice angle, ang angle into this green. Ram at seventeen. Drills it forward. So they were driving it up here to this position when it was wind assisted. No wind assist right now. Rom just smoked that thing out there. One fifty five to the sixteenth. Off the left, it's slightly hurting. If anything, it's sort of switching a bit for speed. Got to pitch it minimum 145 here. We know where the trouble is. Come on, ah. yeah, about the only person in the world I think that's okay. Trouble right here, Thomas. <laughs> yes. Just to give you uh, out there context, Thomas had the lead, and, uh, hit it in the right bunker, and had some troubles. Thomas making fun of himself to some extent. Connors, and uh, just a bit of breeze coming up. Slightly into him. That's probably why he came up short there, Speed. It's hard to get to this bin. That's a decent effort, but it puts into context the uh, tee shot from John Rahm a short while ago. And just how brave that was. Remember, Jordan Spieth today was two over par through the first six holes, and he was going backwards and really struggling. Then he eagled the seventh, and that was the spark. He's made four birdies since then as well to give himself a chance of winning a second Open Championship.
Back in the winner's circle earlier this season at the Valero Texas Open. That was a big moment for him. He'd been shaping into form, it was coming. But this would be another huge step. To win a fourth major championship title. Susan in the middle of the 15th fairway. Uh, yep. Gold swing has not been with him today. Okay. Fortune bounced that one. Actually, pretty short. Not the time it just lands into that slope and campers down to the right, but that's it. Okay. Finishing it on the gap, just left of those two guys in the green up there. Yeah, just like a step right up in. Started up again. Love it. You got a good picture? Yep. Flying 91. Okay. I like six, 200 yards for Murray Cow in the heat of the day. Just a wonderful par 4, 15. Just from about the perfect spot. Is that a hard bounce? Whew. Well, that's not good over there, is it? Not ideal, that's for sure. No, that's really tricky. That's a little bridge that runs across, so you have to chip it into it and then down on the green really fast. Pin cock on the left there as well. So it, it's a it's a tough one. No, it doesn't matter where this man hits it on the green, Thomas, does it really? With this <laughs> club in his hand. This will raise the roof. This will be the loudest cheer of the week if this goes in. Come on. Jordan Speed, not this in. It's just a little bit of left to right. Just a gentle one up the green. Might hold its line at the end. Oh, my goodness. I think he believes he can hold any pack from any angle on any pack in there. And I'll tell you what. A lot of the time he proves us, he proves himself right. It's astonishing how good he is with that thing. Car there keeps him at 13 under, he's two behind Morikawa, but... Morikawa with problems at 15. Find out more about that in a moment. First of all up to 17 and Dylan Fratelli to get to nine under. Beautifully hold. Takes him into fifth place. Quickly to Connors. Hmm. Not his very best. No, Canada's wait for a second major champion is going to continue by the looks of it. Both those guys, Corey Connors and Mackenzie Hughes, will certainly be there in the future again. Talented players. And now they've got a taste for it. Sitting down, Morikawa but it has got some grass under it, so if he wants to get this one in the air, I think he can. And we'll come back to that. Let's go overhead to the 17th of John Rahm. Four birdies in a row. The man's on a run. Very much looking at a fifth one. Right. Good shot. Back over to 15. Marikawa and his caddy just taking a little time to work this one out yeah and rightly so have a little wander just calm yourself down as i was saying there's a bit of grass under it it is sitting down but i think he i do believe he can get under this and get some elevation just pitch it on the top maybe on the upslope possibly 
and then the insurance policy just releasing all the way down. He needs to hit this pretty well, though. Any slightly duffy, it's not going to get up and over. Bad miss at this time of day. That's an excellent shot from where he was. He took all the risk out of it and played it beautifully. I think that's about as close as he could get from there without being silly. Well, if he was trying to get closer, he brought in the, the equation of leaving it short of the green and having a similar shot again. So that was a smart shot. Yeah, don't be cute. Be smart. Get it to eight, ten feet. Take your chance from there. Spieth, driver, 17, 420 yards. Must hit fairway with this pin down there, just over the ridge. Void the divots at all costs. Oh, it might just be in a shallow one. Putting over a little bit of a ridge. Who stays in here for a, a timely birdie three at 15? Bit of a double breaker might just feed back at the death. Come on, Louis. Go south. Fifth birdie in a row, John Rahm. Oh, that a couple of times along the way there. Really got a smooth roll on it. And you fear that that's the end of John Rahm's chances. He's four under today, Thomas. I mean, if the putter had behaved half decently, he could have been eight or nine, Rahm. It's been an exceptional performance, tee to green. So Morikawa for par at 15 and to maintain a two-shot lead. This is a huge putt right here. The 16th is easily the easiest of the three remaining after the 15th. You would love to have two rather than one shots in hand heading to the 16th tee. Looks like they're a little unsure about the line here. Certainly, you would think it would come a little from the right. Has not dropped a shot so far today. Fantastic, just fantastic. Last week he putted like a Model T Ford, and this week he's a Rolls-Royce. What a difference. He is a young man who wants to travel the world. He wants to come over and play in Europe. He wants to test himself in all sorts of conditions. And he seems to be making the adjustment pretty well. Yeah, I think that makes you a complete golfer. I think that, uh, you know, go and play down in Australia, come and play Lynx golf courses, and obviously all of these guys play their main part of their golf in America, but you want to do it all. Fratelli's 32 out of the last three holes, perfect position here at 18. Just a wedge in hand. Should be dancing this around the club, the hole. Pretty good. Pretty good, Jay, huh? He stuck to his guns after 
That double bogey at the par three eleven. He was a little derailed, but he's fought back bravely. Seventeen. Spieth. Yeah. Right second I shot. That's why I think it's perfect. I think it's yeah. a thirty shot. Adrenaline. It? I agree. I think it's a thirty shot. I agree. Just right. It's of miss it. hit. It may not get there. I just got to stay down on it. Yep. Um, yeah, east is off strip for left. It doesn't really matter with this. It's more dead aim with this club, isn't it? Uh, still a little right of it. 12 feet right, I'll knock it in. That's like straight south right now. It should be. It's supposed to go to the southeast, which would be a touch of her. It's only got to get 22, right? 22, yeah. Right. Let them tee off while we see if we can get yep. the wind will change for us. Yep. Man! That's where it's supposed to be going. I know, but I wish it was just right there. I feel like that one here is taking more time. Tee off. Scotty, right? Yeah. One twenty-six. He's got, but they reckon there's some hurt there. These two, they're not sure. And we're talking about building in a little bit of adrenaline as well. Yeah, well, you're pumped, on you? You're, 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 and the lie's a little bit jumpy. It's just at the back of a dinner. But it's just time to look at the flag and take it on. They were talking about 122. They had to carry it. Did more than that, but stopped it quickly. Well played shot. To 16 and Morikawa. That's in the hole! Forcing the issue at the moment. John Rahm on the last. Just with a driving iron. That's about the straightness you can hit it that. Back to 16 and Ustazen. Just the right time for a hole in one, this. Can't say I'm not trying for him, Thomas. Morocco has just been sensational, though, hasn't he? I mean, he's just been fabulous. Ever since those three birdies in a row, seven, eight, and nine, he hasn't really given them the sniff, has he? Adding the bonus birdie at 14, Spieth is hanging in there, and he has a putt at 17 to get within one. to use this is for birdie on 18 as we break good bit right to left there you go there you go excellent week excellent putt yeah, what a lovely way to finish round of 69 for the man who went to the same university as ben curtis who won the 2003 open here at royal st george's Good shot from Spieth into the 71st hole of this brilliant Open Championship at Royal St George's on the Kent Riviera. And he's got a right to left to down the hill here. Spieth must make, guys, must make. It's a bit like that putt he had on 13. He rolled that one in. It will break this right to left. He's 
made these putts look easy all week, but it's a little bit bigger moment now. Yeah, he's allowing him for quite a bit of break, isn't he? That was clearly just a misread right there. Nothing wrong with the stroke. Two behind. And he heads over to 18. Brief autopsy before he does that. This one's right to left, 40 feet. Quite a slow one, actually, the last six feet. Just tends to rise. So needs to give this one a little bit more. Eight one putts today. You never know from 40 feet once more. Ooh. Ooh this one will make you think. Fratelli on the last. He was one of the last guys into the tournament he's certainly taken advantage yeah the familiar routine where he keeps his head down until either it's gone in the cup or he thinks it's finished rolling out and it is a closing 68 good comeback really after the double bogey at 11 which could have derailed him Tazen. This would have to be hold to stay in it. It's a pretty good try. Up to 18. Ram second. Ball below his feet here, but just a wedge. In. Oh, no, not a wedge. He laid it way back, 197. One so. Come on. About 50 yards, 60 yards longer shot than what many have had, but a brilliant shot from the man who will be world number one again tomorrow. 30 putt to come. What would have happened if his putter would have just been warm? Forget hot. Now, how far is this for Morikawa? Uh, three or four feet. Well, it's far enough under these circumstances. That's for sure. A little bit of extra effort goes into it right now. This is all about picking your point halfway down the line. You just hit it straight over it. You want your routine to be quite quick at this stage. Not to think too much. Beautiful stroke. Beautiful. Under the circumstances, that's all you can do. Put a good stroke on it, and those kind of pots often go in then. Up to the 18th, and Jordan Spieth. 457 with the driver. Poor Spieth. Bunkers down the left. He can hit it at that right hand one. Don't think he can reach that one. Must make birdie. Come on, Coming back. Right of that. Is it? Now it's got to stay short. Ooh, hard to tell on the angle. It has it got into the thick stuff. If it isn't, it is just safe in the semi from the 18th tee up to the green and John Rahm for a closing birdie to come home in 30 and to jump clear of Oosthuizen And that to 
B for John Rahm this week. It's been a great performance again in a major championship. And as Jay said, moving to world number one. I guess a decent prize as well. He's here for the long haul. And I'm sure one day he'll be lifting this trophy a higher high as well. Now, Thomas, that's fair that he goes back to world number one because he is the best in the world at the moment, isn't he? Absolutely. Morikawa with the driver on 17T. If he can hit two fairways, you'd have to think he'll be the champion. Oh -ho! Well, that was the first golf swing I've seen him re where he reached for it a little bit. It's out of sorts, but it's not too bad. Well, you couldn't blame him, could you, if he was starting to feel it at this stage of the championship. Up to 18, playing with John Rahm. Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> Another young star and one to watch for the future he's only 24. two good weeks played nicely up in scotland last week he's had a really good open debut as well and that will be a top 10 finish for young scotty Shefflet. Out with a big stick, and it's a bullet. What do you make of his performance today, Tony? Uh, you know, he just got off to that slow start, two over after nine. Hasn't really made many mistakes, but hasn't quite been as sharp as he was the first three days there's no doubt about it but you know he was you'd have to say Morikawa has sort of he's f sort of forced him not to be as good as he was <laughs> yesterday Morikawa has been sensational but I think it's a great example of like winning when you're leading every day it's extremely hard in golf because you're always under pressure you're doing all the extra work you're mentally being pushed all the way and you just run out of energy a lot of times and i think that's mostly what i've seen with louis just run out of energy big moments coming up for spieth He's got a lie, sort of. He can get to the back of the ball. It's thick, but he can hit the ball first. That's the main thing. Can he make Morikawa think a bit? Anyway, Corey Connors, not the day he was after. Couple over for his round. Good lie out of the semi rough from 157. Down breeze. on everything came a little firmer out there hot day today dried out it's got down a little off the left what is it to the hole uh 51 hole it landed at anywhere between five yeah it's got to split the five minute bunker right yep exactly what's weird is i'm going to get on the ball first I still think it's going to kind of tumble. All right, that's your feels. Pitch at 25? 25, yeah, that's a good spot. I like it with this club to get some of the They're playing for 25 yards of run here. Don't blame them. It's going to jump out of this light. Can he control it, Spieth? Miss it, miss it, somehow miss it. Get left. Good 
the death of that out of there. It really was. All down to his favourite club in the bag now. Can he roll in one more long pop? 17, Morikawa second. Yeah, just sitting down a little bit in the thatchy first cut. This is not a pin to take on. He's trying to bump it. Needs a bounce, needs a bounce. That was an incredible shot when you think of all the pressure on his shoulders trying to win his second major. There's a man that has three majors in his back pocket. Could his putter put pressure on Morikawa? Who's Tyson? Just on a slight upslope, which will help him if he decides to have a go at the flag, but he doesn't like this as it come out dead. It has a little. No, I've got to sit on the edge of the green now. So close so many times to adding that second major victory. Lost out in a couple of playoffs. Remember second in both the PGA Championship and the US Open this year, Louis Oosthuizen. What a beautiful evening, look at that. And what a wonderful arena it is. The 18th hole of any Open. Jordan Spieth going to provide us with something of a grandstand finish and apply a little bit of pressure to Morikawa. Potentially get a little bit of a read if Connors hits a good chip shot. He might be able to see the way it reacted around the hole, but that not to be. Connors did not help Spieth out by hitting a good chip shot. Slightly different angle, but would have given a little bit of idea. Bit of right to left down the green here for Spieth. Gotta give it a go, gotta give it a go. There's quite a bit of break here. What an entertaining round he's put together for us. Just some brilliant stuff from the American. Entertaining week. Yeah, we need one of those moments now. Costantino Rocca, St. Andrews, Nick Price at Turnby, that, those long pots that went in over the last few holes. We need one of those moments right now. Great entertainers in the game provided. It's amazing, Thomas, that we're even considering he could hold us. Shows how good he is, doesn't it? And if he did, the lid would come off this entire stadium. There's nothing in his mind but just trying to hold this. No doubt whatsoever. Just asking a heck of a look. Pretty good putt there. Back on 17 green, we saw that very good shot from Morikawa. This for birdie. This to stretch his lead to three. Very 
good effort. Perfect holding speed, no stress, easy tap in to come. Last thing you want to do is add stress, and he didn't. Connors for par. Well, it was a, a pretty poor start. Remember, he dropped shots at the first and second. And another wonderful back nine. However, it's been a good week in totality for Connors with those three rounds in the 60. Well, Jordan Speed. This is about the length he missed last night, so we'll be taking a little bit extra care. No mistakes this time. A closing 66 for Jordan Spieth. And it is good to have him back and contending at major championships, no doubt about that. Who's Tazen? He will have watched Morikawa's. Just a par for Louis. Stays at 11 and under. Tied for third. No stress there, and he will take a two-shot lead down the 72nd hole as he looks to win on debut at the Open. He's got a lot of composure, hasn't he, for someone who has only been professional for barely two years. He most certainly has. I would like to know what went through his head between the Aberdeen Scottish Open last week and this week. What he changed, what things he addressed in his stroke or mentally, because watching last week you thought, well, how's this poor lad going to make the cut at the Open? He's not making the cut, he's leading. In all likelihood, going to win it. Amazing strength of character. Just the fairway wood for Morikawa at 18. He's not put a foot wrong with this club on this back nine. Just down the right-hand side, it shouldn't reach that right-hand bunker. Perfect links ball flight, nice and flat. Oh, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Bit of tension, understandable. <laughs> He's not the only one who's nervous. <laughs> yeah, nice to see Louis helping out there, knowing all of the pressures. Time to refocus. <laughs> Don't think it's going to phase him in the least, Thomas. Little smile there. Palmers could be. I think we get more nervous when we drink a cup of coffee, Thomas. A fantastic demeanor. Beautiful. Stand still now, please. Three wood for Oosthuizen. Just come up against a better man today. He's tried his best. One good swing. Oh, 
Two good tee shots for the final pairing on the final hole. Certainly have to think history awaits this man. Tony, I can tell you what he changed. He changed quite a few clubs in his back since last week to adapt to the Lynx conditions. And he's been putting with a conventional putting grip from outside 30 feet or so, sticking to the claw from close range. Boy, talk about a guy with a lot of confidence. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Arnold Palmer made double at Augusta to lose on the final hole. He's in the middle of the fairway, but I think I would have marked it out with marker, but not start carving yet. I don't like the way you're thinking, Jay Townsend. You know, there's a reason we play 72 holes and not 71. The reason you don't give the trophy away after 71 when it's a 72 hole tournament. It's not over. I mean, it's probable, but. That was some stat there, wasn't it? Absolutely. History. For Oh, it's history that first player to win the PGA Championship and the Open Championship on their debut. What a player this guy is. What a future ahead of him. With two major championships already. I don't think he can believe it. Well, he would be just the second player to win the Open and the PGA before the age of 25. I think we can guess the other one, Tiger Woods. And when you're putting yourself in his company with records like that, you are doing an awful lot right. Thank you for everything this week. I appreciate it. It was awesome. Thank you. Paul Larson, the uh, course manager here at Royal St. George's. What a, a great job they've done. Yeah, I'm going to get these guys first. No problem. I'll just be at the... Uh, where we eat, Jordan. He was planning this last week, Tom. You mentioned putting with a conventional grip outside of 30 feet. In the last round last week, the last nine, he started to think about that. He was already planning this week. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So the minimum is 15 short of that. 20. We'd like to fly it. We'd like to fly it. 63. 61? Yeah. 63. Yeah. 63. Even, even. You don't know. So we get. 68. 63 is up to 20. Oh, okay. Five 68. More. Five more, right? 68. 68, 70. One seventy eight for Morikawa into the eighteenth, just trying to keep this up the high side. One trusty golf swing. Took the bunker out of play very cleverly. Two cuts from there, and it's all yours. Bruce Tyson, Birdie Hutt would grab him third place all on his own. Oh. 
and maybe another new tractor or something like that, Tony. He's a farmer at heart. But he's some golfer along with it, isn't he? No traditional following of the fans down the 18th because of uh, obviously what's happening with COVID. But he will enjoy this walk all the same. Remember, no fans when he won the PGA, so what a treat for him. Finally show off in front of spectators. What a reception. The big question is how many majors is that lad going to win? He's calm. He's calculating. And he's awesome. I really do feel for, for Louis Oosthuizen. Led from round one to the end of round three. Desperate to get that. Second major in the bag. It's not too late, Louis. There's still time. I think he can start digging now. He's safe. You're happy now, Jay? Fine. You're happy? Yep. Well, that was actually the gold medal he was digging into there. The medal for the winner. Wonderful week we had here at Royal St. George's. This would be a very fitting champion. A big congratulations from me to the RNA. Back with fans, back playing the Open Championship. It really has been a remarkable week for all of us. He won the PGA Championship at a young age, and you wonder, well, He's talented, but this win will really solidify things, and you would have to think would really push him on. He's so young and clearly knows what it takes. He has looked unflappable today. What a great try that was. Uh, he'll just mark it and let the East Hazen do his business. We'll have that tap in for one of the car round of 71. We'll be left to contemplate. Once again, another great effort, but not what he wanted. He was looking for a second clear at Jug. It's not going to go to him. And he can look forward to going back to St Andrews, where he won in 2010 and came close in 2015 for the 150th Open. And with a power at the last, it is a nerveless, it is a faultless performance from 24-year-old Colin Morikawa. Who wins on his open debut.
writing his own chapter in major championship history. Closing 66 for Morikawa. And he wins it by two from his fellow American, Jordan Spieth. Was that five under? Was that, uh, sorry, 15? Was that 15 under? Yes, it was 15 under, yeah. Of course, they put the score as well as the champion on the band, on the claret jug. Apart from anything else, he is a lovely young man. He's got time for everyone. Yep, a delightful young man. He's a special talent, you know. He's got it, hasn't he? There, not that wonderful? That's what the sport's about. From the US Open champion to the Open champion, John Rahm to Colin Morikawa. Emotions bottled up so well all day. Calm, cool as a cucumber. And now the joy just exudes. <laughs> Stress free. Almost. Lovely, lovely scenes here down in southeast England. A different view. And pictures that we all want to watch over and over again. Two major titles in eight major starts. It's not a bad ratio. No, definitely not. I just think, you know, to sum it up, four birdies, no bogeys, 66 on a Sunday in an Open Championship. And that's how you do it. Because these pins and conditions, even though the weather's been nice, haven't been that easy, so to go out and play golf like that, stunning performance from Colin Morikawa. As we've been saying, nice to see Jordan Spieth back in the mix at a major championship as well. John Rahm in the end not too far away. His putter had behaved a little bit better, and he definitely would have been closer to the lead. Boost Hazen, I'm afraid it's another near miss. Good defence from Shane Lowry, 69 on Sunday for the man who won two years ago at Royal Port Rush. The ever entertaining Marcel C. Challenge tour last week to the Open Championship and being in the mix on a Sunday. Excellent stuff. Bryce DeChambeau made the halfway cut and he closed out with a bogey free 65. Tommy Fleetwood with a level past 70. Well, let's tell you the story of this final day at Royal St George's, and we begin with the US Open champion, John Rahm. Well, let's go to the seventh. He bogeyed the second. It 
given himself lots of opportunities to make birdies. Hadn't made one to this point. This was a brilliant shot into the par five. Nearly hold out for a two. He would go on to hold out for an eagle. And on 13, second. This is the way we've been watching him all week. Just great iron shot and grand iron shot. He will go on to hold that putt for birdie. Yeah, he got on a bit of a tear at this stage, Tony. Yeah, he certainly did. 14. In she goes. He wasn't finished. Good shot into 15. This one was going to go in as well. It was really the par putt at 12 that got the putter hot, at least for a few holes. And then this at 16. How about this for bravery and aggression? As good as it gets. Best of the day right there from the number one player in the world. Ron closing out with a round of 66. A little more difficult, I'm afraid, for Louis Eustace. Two over part of the turn. Part the tenth. However... Oh, how about this one? Been a little bit softer, would have gone in. What a goal shot. Bogey 13. And at 14. Third shot. Mm, short, so close. This man played some exciting golf today, Jordan Spieth. This was for Eagle on seven. He started believing, the fans started believing. He needed that one as well. He was two of a par through the first six. He parred the eighth and then at the ninth. Good drive. And that led to a birdie at nine. What was it come at 10? Shot into the green. And once again, Spieth magic with the putter. Pass at 11 and 12 would follow. And then another good drive, this time at 13, another wedge in. A complete spin control there from Jordan Spieth. And that was set up another birdie. Picked up another shot at the 14th and Spieth round in 66 on Sunday to Morikawa, our champion, who started with six straight pars, had to scramble quite well to start with. And then Great. made his first birdie there at the par five. And the very next hole, laid up short of the bunkers off the tee, playing percentage golf. This one just lands at the top of the ridge, nearly goes in for a two, and that led to his second birdie in a row. Now he was flying into the 19-2, 30 feet away, in she goes. I think this was the most important putt of the day. He had a poor pitch shot into here, but there you go, confident, in a pace. And that was a bit of a bonus for him. Two shots clear, coming down the final hole. He had three putts to win it in the end. He just needed a couple. Four birdies, no drop shots on the card for Colin Morikawa. OK, guys, well, if you're ready, we'll start to move over to ATP. Yep. I love you. I gotta go. I gotta go. I love you. <laughs> I just gotta do Wi-Fi. Hi. I love you both. I love you both. I know, I know. I'll call you guys later, okay? I'll talk to you later tonight. Love you. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, family. I've got to go and get the carrot jug. Uh, amazing, amazing composure from a 24-year-old man. Well, as usual, the official prize presentation ceremony taking place down on the 18th green so let's throw you down there and hear from the CEO of the RNA Martin Slumbers.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the presentation ceremony of the, for the 149th Open Championship. My name is David Meacher, Chairman of the RNA's Open Championship Committee. We missed you last year, we really did, but the Open is back. We are absolutely delighted to have so many of you back with us this week. You have contributed so much to this championship, and my goodness, what a week we have had. My sincere gratitude goes to all those who helped to stage this championship, staged it under very challenging conditions, and yet staged it so successfully. And there are 7,450 volunteers who helped to deliver this Open. What a magnificent team effort. This is a wonderful Lynx, and it has been presented in magnificent fashion. And I would like to congratulate Paul Larson and all his team for what they achieved. I would like to thank Mark Batten, Chairman of Raw St George's Championship Committee, and all at the club. We could not have been made more welcome. I also want to acknowledge the tremendous support we receive from our patrons and our suppliers, and all the multiple agencies who have played their part in ensuring this championship has run so smoothly. And finally, the players. Oh, my word. We have all looked forward so much to seeing you back at the Open. And what an incredible show you put on for us all. I will now hand over to Martin Slumbers, Chief Executive of the RNA, and Tim Dixon, Captain of Raw St George's, who will present the claret jug. Thank you. Thank you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, the leading amateur and winner of the silver medal, Matthias Schmidt. And with a score of 265, 
the winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Colin Morikawa. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Matthias, great playing. Um, it feels like literally two years ago I was an amateur, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, you're you're going to make a journey. You're going to make a step into your future. Um, I see great things ahead for you, so keep it up and enjoy this moment. Okay, everyone. Matthias. <laughs> This is by far one of the best moments of my life, to see everyone out here. Look at all these fans. Let's hear it for you guys. You guys have been amazing. I'm obviously very biased being from the US, but to see some of the best crowds I've ever seen out here, I look forward to making my trip every year to the British Open and see you guys cheer us on. Thank you, guys. I wouldn't be here um, without my family, my friends, my parents, my brother, Kat, my girlfriend. Um, they, didn't, they weren't able to make the trip, and normally they make the trip to uh, majors, but I know they've been waking up really early to watch me play, and um, I can feel the love, so I love you guys so much. I hope I get to see you guys really soon. I know I'll see Kat really soon, um, so thank you guys as well. Another key person, I don't know where he is, JJ, I see him now. It's his 39th birthday. Everyone wish him happy birthday. <laughs> oh, we're way off. <laughs> happy birthday, JJ. I touched on this on my last win in WGC earlier this year. Um, it was about giving thanks. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out here with friends, family, whoever may be, someone close to you, um, just look over to them right now and just say thank you. Uh, we are all so honored to be out here, to be out on this beautiful golf course. Royal St. George has put on a great, great major championship. And um, to be called the Open Championship winner, to be called the championship winner of the year. Um, it gives me chills. It's giving me chills right now. So thank you guys to everyone, every single one of you out here, every single one of you guys watching. Um, let's keep this going. Thank you guys. That ends the presentation ceremony. We look forward to seeing you in St. Andrews next year for the 150th Open. Now, please do stay to greet your champion as he celebrates with you all. Thank you very much. moments to savour for Colin Morikawa. What a lovely speech. Isn't that fantastic? 24 years old, and you make a speech like that. And he, he's smart. He's a smart lad too, isn't he? And that was quite inspiring. Yeah, I, I take away from that. He's not only grateful to have won, but the fact that he wants to share it with everyone and the fact that in such a big moment for him personally, he's thinking about everyone 
that you can see in your pictures, but also everyone at home as well. And, uh, you know, to be thankful, as he said, pretty amazing. I think he's made a huge amount of friends in that five minutes, Tom. That was special. Yes, and my apologies <laughs> to David Meacher for introducing him as Martin Slumbers. Uh, slightly early promotion. Basking in the early evening sunshine here in the Garden of England and enjoying his moment. As grip and grins go, that's as good as it gets right there. Look at that picture. That is just amazing. The greatest golf trophy and someone so deserving. You cannot think, but how many more times will he be holding trophies like this? Confirming that two shot victory with that uh, bogey free closing 66 for the Californian Colin Morikawa. Jordan Spieth in the end just coming up shy, but uh, plenty of excitement in there. John Rahm got it going on the back nine. Lou Yu stays in sadly just fading on Sunday, having played so well over the first 54 holes. And another South African right up there, Dylan Fratelli, taking full advantage of his very late call up to play in the open. Splendid performances. Shane Lowry back to defend the title. Good finish from Xander Schofield round in 65 today. Ian Poulter entertaining as ever, as was Marcel C. 65 also for Bryson DeChambeau on Sunday. Tommy Fleetwood, runner-up to Shane Lowry in uh, Port Rush. His wait for a first major championship continues. Rory McIlroy just couldn't really get it going out there this week. And a disappointing Sunday as well for Justin Rose, the 2013 US Open champion. Ricky Fowler, who played so well here a decade ago, finishing off nicely. Matthias Schmidt, the silver medal winner, about to join the professional ranks. And looks like he has a, a very big future ahead of him. Two-time champion golfer of the year, Podrick Harrington closed out with a 71. Well, it was worth the wait in the end, wasn't it? A year late. It was worth waiting for. Fabulous. Fabulous win over a fabulous week. He rose to the occasion every time today. He built a big lead. He might have been in trouble on a hole, hold the key putts, but he, all, he never looked nervous. He never looked like he was, you know, out of his element. And I think that really says a lot about the young man. It just says he has so much self-belief as well as a big game. Thomas Bjorn, you must have been impressed with that. Yeah, certainly. I thought he's been amazing all week. I, I really thought today it was it was all about keeping the composure. He never got ahead of himself. He got on a nice run there over the, the back end of the front nine. And from there, he just never looked like he was in trouble. He looked like he was in control of what he's doing. OK, you can come at me if you want to, but I'm just going to keep playing. And you've got to do something special to get ahead of me. Great course, great champion. Fantastic to have the spectators back. It also seems to be getting back to some normalcy. Yeah, absolutely. And great weather. Probably the biggest surprise of the night. <laughs> oh, no, come on. The sun always shines in Kent. He took everything in his stride this week. 
Remember, he is a newcomer, really, to Lynx golf. Yes, he played up in Scotland last week on a Lynx style layout. But Colin Monka, Morikawa has come to Royal St George's and he goes home with the prize that everybody wants. The oldest prize in golf, the oldest championship, the original one. And he gets to take the claret jug home with him. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. That's about it from us, but we will see you next year at St Andrews for the 150th Open.